Kim Taehyung, commonly known as V, is a romantically impoverished individual. After breaking up with the girl he pursued for three years, in a moment of desperation, he acquired a miraculous system, holding an unlimited card in his hand. The catch was that the money could only be spent on female students. In a day, he became wealthy, buying the entire stock of a store just to show off to his ex-girlfriend and readily spending money on other female students. His ex-girlfriend cried and pleaded, but he didn't care, embraced five others, and began the money-spending journey to see how things would unfold. My name is Kim Taehyung, and today is the one-month anniversary of my relationship with my girlfriend. He dressed somewhat flamboyantly, holding a bouquet with a radiant smile. Park Shin Hai, I really like you. Where shall we go to celebrate later? The girl, his girlfriend, spoke up. Kim Taehyung. She crossed her arms, looking somewhat aloof. Let's break up. And just like that, he was dumped. Unable to accept the sudden turn of events, he reached out to grab the girl. Park Shin Hai, don't go. Before he could reach her, a car swerved in a graceful S shape, making him uncomfortable, still not understanding what was happening. He looked from afar at the man sitting in the car. He took off his sunglasses. Park Shin Hai, happy belated birthday. It seems this person is Park Shin Hai's new lover. Indeed, a money hungry woman. In the midst of society, the two clung to each other. Disgusting. Why did you just show up now? You got me entangled with him, causing me so much trouble. The man looked at Jisoo with adoring eyes. Let's go, we'll head to the National Jewelry Center, take a stroll, then go to a high-end restaurant and buy you a gift. This man was clearly showing off. He tightly embraced Jisoo, glancing at the guy. Hey, my friend, if you want to impress girls, you need money. Look at yourself. He grabbed Jisoo's waist, and the two walked boldly ahead of him. He couldn't understand why Jisoo acted this way, showing no regard for her ex-boyfriend. He stood there like a planted tree, clenching his hands, motionless, as the car's exhaust fumes filled the air. Watching the car drive away, people on the street commented, Look, isn't that Kim Taehyung, the famous star of our school, chasing after Kim Jisoo, working extra hours to save money for her gifts? It's hilarious, seeing Kim Taehyung try so hard, only to have a rich guy show up and snatch her away. Well, money talks. Feeling helpless, he knelt down on the ground, looking down with a pitiful expression. Why is it like this, just because I'm poor? Foolish enough to chase after a girl, and now my sincere heart is trampled like this. This was truly a deep wound to the self-esteem of a man. He looked at his hands, tears trying to be held back. Even his teeth clenched tightly, he struggled to suppress all the pain within, constantly blaming himself. What have I done in these years pursuing her? I will never be sincere like that again. So the world lost a sincere man. Seeing his pain, a system suddenly appeared, activating the billionaire counterattack system. The system bound the guy named Kim Taehyung, age 22, with billions reserved for counterattack, personal assets of 138 yuan, agile strength, physique, and intellect. Suddenly, a system fell from the sky, astonishing him. The billionaire counterattack system. In his hand appeared a card, containing billions of assets inviting the owner to spend as they pleased. No matter how much was spent, 1% could be converted into personal assets. Unbelievably, such a system existed in the world. He raised the card and stared at the billions, saying, I can spend as I please. Yes, but please note that the counterattack assets can only be used for counterattacks spent on female students. All personal expenses unrelated to this would be deducted from personal assets. He exclaimed in amazement, my personal assets are only 138 yuan. That's the money spent so far. The more I spend, the faster my personal assets increase. This system is truly incredible. Slowly rising from his kneeling position, he held the card in his hand, and the current counterattack began. It seems that the previous emotions no longer stir within him. This is most evident in his current expression as he wears humble at hire, entering the bustling commercial district, observing the girls and evaluating. But first, he needs to find a test subject. This bubble tea shop is really crowded. Suddenly, he notices a girl. Is he genuinely noticing her? Or is he focusing on her soul? Discovering the high attractiveness value of the female student, he begins the counterattack mission. This girl is incredibly beautiful, with fair skin, black hair, big round eyes, a high-bridged nose, 
plump red lips, and a well-defined V-line chin. Perhaps the most perfect of all is her figure, especially her bust. In general, she is a stunning beauty. That's her, Park Shin Hai, the roommate of Kim Jisoo. It seems even the heavens want to help him. He spends money on Shin Hai, which appears to be a counterattack, making Jisoo, his ex-girlfriend, regretful. Park Shin Hai, 21 years old, 167 centimeters tall, weighing 46 kilograms. When the target's favorability towards the owner exceeds 90%, 10% of the counterattack assets are returned to the owner for personal spending. When the target's favorability towards the owner reaches 100%, the identity is transformed, altering the relationship between the owner and the target. He approached Shin Hai, saying, Park Shin Hai, can I bother you for a moment? Shin Hai, upon hearing, looked up, saying, Kim Tae Young, why is it you? Shin Hai's current favorability towards him is at minus 20. It seems this is not an ordinary figure. It's more like dislike. Sitting on a chair, Shin Hai suspects why he came to find her. Coming to find me again, supporting you in pursuing Kim Jisoo. Stop thinking, I advise you to give up. She now has a rich boyfriend. Upon hearing this, he smiled and stared at Shin Hai, currently having no thoughts about Jisoo. Ha ha, you misunderstood. I just want to invite you for a bubble tea, testing her for the first time. Hearing his words, Shin Hai raised her eyebrows, showing extreme discomfort. Invite me for bubble tea? We're not close. Shin Hai calmed her hair and said with a hint of disdain, Moreover, this is not ordinary bubble tea, look carefully. He looked at the bubble tea menu, realizing it's from the same brand as Herm's. Limited to 200 cups daily, and priced at 199 yuan per cup. A cup of bubble tea costs as much as my food for 10 days. Can I afford the treat? People around, seeing his impoverished appearance, kept pointing at him. If you want to buy, hurry up. We've been waiting in line for a long time. Yes, I also want to take a photo for Webo. Don't delay. He glanced at those behind him. Everyone, stay calm and wait for me a bit. Then went to the front of the service counter, placing his hand on the table. Bubble tea seller, how many cups do you have left? The girl blushed upon seeing him, seemingly smitten with his appearance. There are still 180 cups. He took out his card and said loudly, I'll buy all 180 cups and anyone who comes can consider it a treat from Park Shin Hai. Hearing his words, the service girl, Shin Hai, and everyone around were astonished, directing their gaze toward him. Shin Hai was bewildered, unable to believe her eyes. What, the entire 180 cups of bubble tea cost tens of thousands of yuan? Kim Tae Young, think it through, don't mess around. He ignored Shin Hai's words, immediately presenting his card to the server. Miss, Swipe the card. After swiping the card, a notification popped up. You have successfully paid 18,900 yuan. The 180 cups of bubble tea were placed on the table, and he pointed to the cups below. Please pack them quickly for everyone. Don't keep them waiting. The server complied, saying, Yes, yes. The people who were pointing at him earlier now had a completely different attitude, expressing envy, admiration, fondness, and joy. This guy is too powerful. Unexpectedly, he really bought them so handsome. Could it be that he values Park Shin Hai? The world is still lacking good men like him. After Shin Hai saw his wealth, her favorability towards him continued to rise, and her face turned a rosy red, unable to utter a word. He approached Shin Hai with heartfelt words. Park Shin Hai, I have a small favor to ask for your help. Shin Hai looked at him in astonishment. What's the matter? helping me spend money. In a bustling shopping center, an ordinary-looking bag, yet the price tag read 18,900 yuan. This amount alone was enough to showcase its extravagance. They were just cuddling on the street a moment ago, and now they were inside shopping. Jisoo, I've been wanting to buy this bag for you. It's just that my mom used to say I spend recklessly. Besides, buying this today is enough. If not, let's have dinner first, and we can discuss the rest later. The words of this shameless guy are a clear indication of deception. It seems he's pretending to be wealthy without actually having any money. Jisoo looks at the bag with a sad expression. This girl truly lacks insight. Jisoo reluctantly lifts the bag, and the guy dares to put his hands on Jisoo's waist, saying, Jisoo, if you want to pass the future mother-in-law's test, you need to behave better now, understand?
With a regretful expression, Jizu replies, Then don't buy it. The total cost of the items purchased today is already quite a bit, and we can do without this bag. To bring him in in the family, I have to endure. It seems she's a girl who won't hesitate to use cunning tactics. At this moment, a voice rings out, Kim Taehyung. What about this bag? Jisoo, upon hearing the familiar voice and name, turns to look. It's her roommate, Park Shin Hai, holding up the bag that the fake rich guy refused to buy for Jisoo. However, the bag's color is different. Shin Hai asks him. This is a limited edition, and it's also the flagship product of this store, valued at 38 billion. I'll take this one. You don't mind, do you? He looks at the bag for a moment and thinks. Hmm. Let me see. Jisoo speaks up. Kim Taehyung. Park Shin Hai. Why are you two here? This Jisoo is still delusional, saying, I know you're following me again, unable to accept being rejected. You've begged Park Shin Hai to stage a drama to provoke me. Didn't I make it clear to you? We've broken up, so why are you so repulsive? Upon hearing these words, he feels his face darken. After a moment, he spoke up. Who's following her? I came here with someone to buy a handbag. Jisoo, furious, retorted. You came to Herms with someone else to buy a handbag. Can't you come up with a better excuse? Why didn't you say this to the fake rich guy next to her, pretending to be someone you're not? The system decided to initiate a counter-offensive mission. Kim Jisoo, 21 years old, 168 centimeters tall, weighing 45 kilograms. When the target's favorability towards the host exceeds 90%, 10% of the assets are returned for counterattacks to be spent as the host's personal property. When the target's favorability towards the host reaches 100%, the identity is transformed, altering the relationship between the host and the target. He smiled and glanced at Jisoo, saying, Kim Jisoo, if we've already broken up, there's no connection anymore. Where I want to go is none of your business. Don't wave your hands and feet like that. Do you think I'm still the same as before? His words at this moment were extremely sharp, logically precise, with no loopholes for others to exploit. Jisoo stood behind the fake rich guy and sneered, laughing to death. Just a few hours later, did you turn from a poor guy into a rich man? Jisoo's current level of favorability towards him is minus 25. The fake rich guy smirked, pointing his finger at the bag Shin Hai was holding. My friend, don't talk nonsense. If you have the courage, buy that bag. A triumphant smile appeared on his lips, firmly holding the victory in his hands. Let me think about it. See him contemplating, the rich guy quickly interjected. Ha ha, indeed, you can't afford it. Note your limits and step aside. He folded his arms, a bright expression on his face, addressing the staff. Buying just one bag is indeed not enough. Excuse me. At this moment, Bok Shin Hai and the staff were startled. He raised his hand, encompassing everything in the store. Package everything in this store for me. Although his words seemed like a bluff, it was indeed the undeniable truth right before their eyes. The staff was astonished. Uh, even Shin Hai couldn't escape the surprise. Jisoo was even more shocked, her mouth gaping open. What? Afraid that people might not hear clearly, he repeated. I'm buying everything. Shin Hai, witnessing his demeanor, felt a bit moved. The two people standing behind were extremely shocked. The store manager cheerfully came forward, bringing the card reader to him. Sir, the total is 1,120,000. The other rich guy on the opposing side, now terrified, still put on a scornful face. If you're capable, I'll grow bananas to eat tofu. Jisoo couldn't believe he had such capabilities. Kim Taehyung, you're crazy. He inserted the card into the reader. Card successfully swiped. Payment 1,120,000. The several staff members at the back were delighted. Thank you for shopping. He turned around to look at the two who had scorned him earlier. Unexpectedly, Jimin, the young master, had such skills. It turned out to be a strategic move to broaden my horizons, seemingly a clever tactic. Shin Hai covered her mouth, her eyes sparkling, feeling a hint of admiration. The fake rich guy was astonished, and his words now sounded like nonsense coming out of his mouth. He really bought it. Jisoo and those around couldn't help but be amazed. Shin Hai ran over and hugged him happily. My dear, you're so good. Unlike some people who appear affectionate to their girlfriends outside, but don't want to spend a bit of money inside. It was clear she was taunting the fake rich guy. 
At this point, the favorability of both Kim Jisoo and Park Shin Hai continued to rise. Park Shin Hai's current favorability was 42%. The fake rich guy's face changed. Where did he get the money? Jisoo turned around and grabbed the hand of this fake rich guy, Jimin, young master. Upon hearing this, the fake rich guy quickly rejected Jisoo. We don't associate with them. Only the rich stand out, going around boasting and showing off work like this is boring. Two women outside walked by. The chubby woman looked at him and added, A true rich guy like you is modest. Before she finished her sentence, a shout echoed, Part Jimin. The chubby woman had an extremely intimidating face, and when the fake rich guy turned back, he was terrified. Jung. Jung Hoseok. Why are you here? She slapped the fake rich guy in the face with a resounding sound, clear for all to hear. Shameless person, what are you doing here? I buy clothes, shoes, watches for you, and even lend you a car to drive. You still sneak around looking for a mistress behind my back. You're a deadbeat. The fake rich guy fell to the ground with a thud. It seemed that the strength of the chubby woman was not small. His shoes even flew off, looking somewhat pitiful, yet deserving of punishment. The fake rich guy quickly crawled up, kneeling in front of the chubby woman. He hugged her legs and then pointed at Jisoo, shifting all the blame onto Jisoo. Jung Hoseok, I was wrong. It's all because of this wretched person seducing me. In my heart, there is only you. You must trust me. It's clear he's lying. Jisoo was astonished, unable to believe her eyes. Jimin, young master. People around were buzzing with discussions. Eating melon, eating melon. Ha ha, this guy dresses so elegantly. Who would have thought he's a nobleman's son licking sugar mama? Oh my, this sibling has such a strong appetite. The chubby woman pointed straight at Jisoo. I bet you don't even dare give you a chance. Slap her twice in the face, and I'll forgive you. If not, from now on, our relationship is severed. Horrified, Jisoo stood there. What? The fake rich guy, surprisingly, obeyed the words of the chubby woman. He approached and slapped Jisoo's face, causing clear pain. Jisoo, after being slapped, lost her balance and lay on the ground, disgruntled. You! This scoundrel didn't leave after slapping her. He even reached for the necklace around Jisoo's neck. What you? You materialistic woman, seducing someone else's boyfriend. The necklace around your neck belongs to me. This scoundrel not only demanded the necklace, but also hit her. Truly a beast. Looking at Taehyung and Shin Hai, Jisoo turned her head and pleaded, but the two just stood there watching. Jisoo ran to push Shin Hai away and lean into Taehyung's arms. Kim Taehyung, I. At this point, all the old feelings and connections had vanished like smoke. Taehyung coldly pushed Jisoo away. Somehow, it seemed like a gentle push. Yet Jisoo, the green tea girl, ended up lying on the ground. Kim Taehyung, coldly walking away. Young, with no trace of the past sentiments, left. Jisoo, on the ground, looked at him and Shin Hai, her face pleading, but they just stood there. Unexpectedly, Jisoo's favorability towards Young increased despite his indifferent behavior. On the other side, the chubby woman was pinching the fake rich guy's ear, leading him out of the store. Let's go back. Shin Hai stood behind Young, consoling him. I never expected Jimin, the young master, to be like that. Jisoo is truly pitiful. If Jisoo is in such a miserable state, Taehyung won't soften. Taehyung turned his head and smiled. A money-hungry woman doesn't deserve sympathy. Pay no attention to her. Tell me if you still want to buy something. Shin Hai placed a finger on her lips, pretending to be coy. You've treated me so well. I don't know how to repay you. While saying that out loud, deep down she thought, ha ha, it seems that Kim Jisoo has completely lost hope. Taehyung turned around and said something cheeky. So, should you repay me with your body? Shin Hai, upon hearing that, hit his chest, making a pretend annoying face. Hateful. What nonsense are you talking about? Despite that, her favorability continued to increase. And now, Shin Hai's favorability towards Taehyung was 62%. Shin Hai held his hand. It's impolite not to watch. In return, let me spend a little money for you. Taehyung looked puzzled not knowing what this girl Shin Hai wanted to do. Shin Hai pushed him into a clothing store. I'll spend money for you. Inside the men's clothing store, he looked around in amazement. The noise here had a somewhat rustic feel. 
However, Shin Hai was unabashed, pushing him straight into the fitting room. Come on, try these clothes for me. The shop assistant outside felt helpless. This customer, Taehyung didn't care, letting Shin Hai change clothes for him. Shin Hai told him to look in the mirror. You really don't know how to dress up a bit. No wonder some people look down on you. After choosing the clothes, Shin Hai went to the cashier. Wrap all of these for me. The payment was successful, spending a total of 3,899 yuan. After changing clothes, he pulled back the curtain and stepped outside. Unexpectedly, with just a slight wardrobe change, the outside world seemed entirely different. Currently, he looked extremely handsome and charming, with a touch of allure that couldn't be ignored. The girls in the store gazed at him in awe, enchanted. He's so handsome. Shin Hai looked at him dreamily, unable to contain her smile, and quickly covered it with her hand. I never expected him to be this handsome. This guy is surely a treasure, adding another 10% to the favorability. Now it's 72%. If Kim Jisoo doesn't appreciate him, well, her loss. He looked at himself in the mirror, also surprised at how he had transformed. Moreover, he used to spend money solely on impressing girls. But now, Park Shin Hai had genuinely spent 7 to 8,000 for him. Later in the evening, at the female dormitory, after a joyful day with him, Shin Hai had returned to her room. Shin Hai's room was 504, and she was happily humming as she entered. Inside, Jisoo had just finished showering and was currently blow drying her hair. Seeing Shin Hai coming in, she quickly put on a surprised expression Jisoo, is your face okay? Jisoo smiled at that. Lifted her hair. I'm fine. Thanks to Kim Taehyung, I exposed the true face of Park Jimin. Otherwise, I would still be blindly led by others. Shin Hai held up the bag he bought for her. Exactly. Thank goodness for Kim Taehyung. From now on, you have to be extremely cautious and not encounter someone like Jimin again. About this bag. Jisoo turned her head away. If Kim Taehyung bought it for you, you should just take it. The two of them hummed displaying an affectionate sisterly bond. Then I won't be polite. I was worried you might go hungry. We're good sisters, after all. On the outside, your face beams with a smile, but internally, it's an entirely different story. Kim Taehyung and I have been in a relationship for three years. It's not something an outsider like her can interfere with. Who told her she's blind and couldn't recognize that he's a rich man? Now he's mine. Indeed, when it comes to winning a guy, there's no sisterhood involved. On the side of the male dormitory, after a tired day out with Shin Hai, he has returned to the dormitory. Walking down the hallway, his face shows a bit of fatigue. Strolling with my little sister, all day is exhausting. Every time I want to pick up a girl, I have to repeat it once. I still need to change my approach. While walking up the stairs, three people are coming down. He notices and politely greets. Hello, headmaster. This troublemaker is Min Yoonji. Seeing him wearing all branded clothes, he mocks him. Oh, Kim Taehyung's disciple seems to spend a lot of money on these clothes. The two behind him murmur to themselves. Buying some fake brands to wear, really thinking of themselves as tycoons. Poor, but still likes to stick gold on themselves. I've seen this type too often. Min Yoonji casually puts his arm around his shoulder. Kim Taehyung's disciple. I heard about today's events. It's eye-opening. He teases and invites him. In my opinion, chasing after Kim Jisoo costs you so much money and still gets neglected. It's better to go to the Lightstream room and give gifts. At least the female MC will obediently comply with you. Hearing this, the other two introduce. Give thousands of gifts as you wish, and the goddess will also be won over. But it's not an expense for ordinary people. Disciples like you can play with girls. Ha ha. The goddess Jenny is live broadcasting now. He was contemplating what to do with his money when these guys offered a suggestion. He looked at them and smiled. That's right, I can go to the live stream room and send gifts. He placed his hand on Min Yuji's shoulder, his face beaming. Thank you, senior. Seeing him like this, the other guy was extremely surprised. As he walked away, the three behind him couldn't understand. Clearly, he was mocked. But still, he thanked me. Truly a problem when it comes to chasing girls. Ridiculous. Maybe we should go watch Jenny's live stream. Now that Kim Sukjin has appeared, I'll go check it out. Inside the dormitory, it was a mess, with clothes scattered everywhere. In general, the second male dormitory was not Teddy at all. 
At this moment, a notification sound indicated the completion of the live stream app download. He said his ID is, so poor, I only have money to spend, to check where the female streamer was ranked. Why was there only one ranking list, and no one had started streaming yet? This was his first time watching a live stream. He recalled they mentioned a name, Jenny. So he quickly searched for her. When he entered the live stream, the girl Jenny was dancing, beautiful, and with a fiery body, swaying gracefully. Love you all. It's too fantastic. The screen is dirty now. Stop shaking. Don't shake anymore. I'm getting dizzy. Let me turn off the comment flood. Enjoy the beauty of Jenny. It's so fantastic. I love this mischievous expression. Today, I'll stay in this live stream room until I die. Let me protect Jenny's beautiful legs. Don't shake anymore. I'm getting dizzy. After watching, he couldn't help but drool. His eyes widened, indicating his obvious interest. So full of energy. I wonder if this screen's barrier state can be broken. Can the counterattack mission be unlocked? The system notification instructed that the appearance of the target for the counterattack mission must be above 80 points. Otherwise, there was no way to unlock the mission. The live stream, influenced by a specially crafted beauty filter, couldn't be accurately judged unless met offline. Hearing this, he felt it made sense. The system had a logical understanding. He felt that Jenny scored above 90 points. After turning off the filter, it probably wouldn't be bad either. No matter what, she was his golden girl, and he had so much gold that he couldn't spend it all. So, the hotness of the female streamer was ranked based on the amount of money fans gifted. Sikshin gave a generous gift, and this Sikshin was watching Jenny's libstream from home. Upon receiving the gift, Jenny quickly expressed her gratitude. Thank you for Sukjin's gift. The comments in the livestream kept increasing. Sukjin is truly powerful. The big brother Sukjin, throwing out a whole 10,000 Chinese yuan. Jenny, I love you. You're so beautiful. He lay down watching the livestream. Yungi seems to be senior Min Yungi. By the way, how should I present this gift? The showdown between Jenny and Sang Sang is about to begin. Are my fellow comrades ready? We're ready. We're ready. The opponent is sure to use some useless tactics, trying to bring some rhythm or something, as I told everyone. Siok Chin spoke up, and the others fell silent. First, we don't need to care about what tactics the opponent uses, nor do we need to hold back our strength. As soon as it starts, go all out for me. Jenny wants to top the rankings. How much money does she need? Should I buy gits first, or the billboard first? Damn, who are you interrupting? Siok Chin is talking here. This suction guy is both arrogant and dark-faced. Kick him out, Jenny. Jenny sat reading the comments. The PK still depends on suction to win. This whiteboard account is clearly a newcomer. Never gifted me anything and spewing large amounts of negativity. The room admin kicked him out. Helpless, he lay on the bed, realizing he was kicked out of the live stream room. How did I get kicked out of the room like this? He continued to casually browse through other female streamers. All right. Let's check out Lisa's live stream room. The PK battle between the two female streamers, Jenny and Lisa, officially began. Jenny taunted, My dear little sister, without a top-ranked big brother, I'm really worried for you. How about you surrender now, and I'll make the punishment a bit lighter for you. Lisa, not accepting, retorted, Huh, having a top-ranked big brother is so scary, huh? My comrades, we have strength in numbers. Don't be intimidated. Fight back while you can. And so, the two female streamers struck poses to captivate their audience. Jenny put on stockings, but the pose was quite revealing. Lisa held a baseball bat, winking at the viewers. Moreover, one had a bottle of milk, while the other had a water gun. In this battle, victory was gradually leaning towards Jenny. Brothers, keep it up. Send gifts to Lisa. Stop struggling. Accept the punishment. Jump. Lisa, get up. Jump, you self-righteous people. Lisa, don't worry. I'll loan you some money. Wait a bit. I'll help you come back. 3,000 years ago, I was invincible, giving all the points to Lisa. Hurry up and jump. Don't prolong the time. Lisa noticed the oppressive comments from everyone, so she prepared to jump, saying, All right. However, suddenly, a golden dragon appeared, astonishing Lisa. Even in his poverty, Silchin managed to give Lisa a golden dragon. Seal Chin, who was at ease moments ago, jumped up in shock. Who's that? At this moment, receiving the golden dragon worth 10 years worth of wealth. 
Lisa, delighted with the gift of a golden dragon, expressed her joy, and the person sending the charming hearts was captivating. Thanks for the golden dragon, big brother. I'm so poor. All I have left is money. Jenny, at this moment, was extremely surprised, her expression unbelieving. So poor that all that's left is this much money, not like a moment ago. Comfortably lying down, he looked at the screen, finally finding the most expensive gift in there. All he needed to do next was swipe this card, right? Unbelievably, this system card could remotely load money for the Livestream platform. He pressed on his phone. The money is here. Now it's time for me to show off. Now Lisa received another golden dragon, and Jenny was shocked. While Lisa was extremely joyful, who's the boss here? It's been so long since I've seen a golden dragon. During the day, there are so many that it multiplies by 20. Lisa, very happily, quickly grabbed her phone. Wait, wait a minute, poor little brother. It's just about the money now. In a moment of horror, she forgot. Now, swiping the golden dragon has a bit of a loss. It's better to wait a bit until the scheduled time. The success will double the points when swiping. This Sochin guy looked at his phone screen and cracked a sly smile. Upon reflection, he said, Weren't you the newbie that Jenny kicked out just a moment ago? Newcomers are still newcomers. If you don't understand the rules of PK clearly, you'll end up in a loss. Ha ha ha, is this too much concern? This student here is taking his parents' savings to gamble, liking to play but not being good at it, feeling regret now. Ha, huh, it's too late, my boy. While these people were still talking, he didn't care. He continuously swiped the golden dragon which had now multiplied by 320. Those who were teasing and mocking earlier were now terrified, and the golden dragons kept pouring in. The number of golden dragons had reached an astonishing 1600, and he felt extremely satisfied because those who were speaking ill of him had been silenced by him. Silchin was now in no mood. He shivered all over, gritting his teeth, glaring at the phone screen. Stop, finally stop. I watched Jenny's live stream. She earned over 300 million in the new year. He did all that, and he. Seeing the terrifying number of golden dragons, Jenny slumped in disappointment in her chair, her whole body in goosebumps. 1,600 golden dragons, a total of 2,400,000,001. On the other side, Jenny was in despair, while Lisa on this side was extremely happy. Thanks, John's brother. Thanks to John's brother's golden dragon. Love you. Love you. Love you. Just now, calling someone a little brother, and that person's little brother came over to our side. The opposite team is in deep trouble, right? Ha ha ha. Do they want to fight again? Although it's not useful anymore. Do they want to follow PK rules? Do they want to wait for success? Does using many skills have any effect? Our Chairman Jian only needs one move. Swiping money. Chairman Jian is formidable. Lisa regained her momentum. Jenny's little sister... Why are you still sitting there, wetting your pants? If you've wet them, stand up immediately and accept the punishment. Big swings, bending and spinning, horse stance. Jump all in one routine. Hearing that, Jenny smiled. Then, following the rules, she commented, This girl's dance looks truly seductive. Brother Jun, Chairman Jun, I was wrong. I shouldn't have kicked you out just now. Jump vigorously for me. Hey. The opposing team's leader still can't catch their breath. What did Suction lose? Ha ha ha. Worship Chairman Jun. Chairman Jun is amazing. Jenny's curves were extremely seductive. It's infuriating. If not for that Suction, those 1600 golden dragons would be mine. Just a few minutes have passed. Why continue to be lazy leaning on the table for me? Another two minutes. Um, too tired. At this point, he was the king in this PK battle. He had now reached the emperor level, and there were only four people at the emperor level, truly arrogant, worthy of being an emperor. It should be said that he is worthy of being Chairman Jian. System Information, Grade 24. Sukjin left the livestream room. Shocking. Sukjin left on his own. Chairman Jian is too amazing. Chairman Jian. A glorious PK battle concluded with Lisa's victory. After the results were announced, Everyone watching the live stream congratulated, congratulations, Lisa, we won. Lisa placed her hand on her chest and blinked to express gratitude. Thanks to Brother John. Thank you for helping me win this challenge. Thank you. You were lying down watching when a call came in. Ring. Ring. You were puzzled. What's this? 
Inside the Livestream account that you adore, fan comments announced that everything had reached a perfect score of 99. Indeed, a triumphant battle. Yunji messaged, Chairman Jun, I sincerely apologize to you. Just now, it was truly my blindness that led me to mock you. Can we be friends? Do you have a younger brother? Lisa also sent a message. Brother Jun, truly thank you. I don't know how to repay you properly. Can we exchange wet chat? My phone number is 152XXXX. Not only those two messages, even Jenny had one. Brother Jun, just now, I was ready to kick Sukchin out of the room, but unexpectedly, he took the first step. Can you forgive me, please? After finishing her jump, Jenny lay on the bed, sweating. Brother Jun, the documents show that you are in Seoul, which is a remarkable coincidence. In the next few days, I will coincidentally be in Seoul to take some photos. Can I invite you to dinner to make up for my mistake? The PK outcome is not important. Judging by appearance and physique, you look better than Lisa in every way. As long as I can connect offline with Chairman Jun, I'm not worried about him not spending money on himself in the future. Seeing this, you scratched your head and smiled. Sure. Feeling a bit down because the money mission completion wasn't enough. Thinking it's not like dozing off on a pillow, you replied, Okay, seeing your message. Jenny happily kissed the phone screen. Shin hi, I know Mao. So let's meet Brother John in the next few days. Looking forward to it. The morning had arrived, and you woke up after a long and serene night, stretching and yawning widely. It's been a while since I had such a comfortable sleep, you thought. At this moment, your phone received a message. Your roommate, who had also awakened, and everyone else in the room, we're all stretching and yawning. Your friend with glasses called out, Kim Taehyung, let's go have breakfast. You turned around, looked at everyone, and declined, you guys go ahead. A girl is bringing breakfast for me. Upon hearing this, unbelievably, someone remarked, I also want a girl to bring me breakfast. Hearing this, your three roommates were extremely shocked and couldn't believe their eyes. You got up to change your clothes, and your smile didn't seem to fade. The three friends huddled together and whispered, He's already talking nonsense, so early in the morning. They say Kim Jisoo left him yesterday, but looking at his relaxed expression, you'd think nothing happened. How can there be nothing? He pursued her for three years. Let's invite him for a drink tonight. After a few drinks, he can cry it out. That should be enough. It seems these three are not just malicious gossipers targeting you. Outside the female dormitory, a crowd of people in black was gathering. These men, in spite of their presence, were all there to deliver breakfast to Shin Hai and Jisoo, truly the goddesses of the school. But who would have known? These goddesses were now in your grasp. You guys came to bring breakfast too. That's right, give it to the goddess Kim Jisoo, and I'll give mine to Shin Hai. Coincidentally, everyone had seen Kim Jisoo's Weibo post from last night. Now that she's single, it's her most vulnerable time. If I can offer her a warm hug, Park Shin Hai must have sensed my silent presence, which is why she posted that. I'm the one who's correct now. These two girls consistently posted late-night updates, causing countless male hearts in the school to lose their peace of mind. Jisoo stated, Tomorrow marks a new life, bidding farewell to the past without any lingering attachments. Seo Yi Jai remarked, Suddenly looking back, it turns out the one you've always been searching for is right behind you. Both of these posts clearly allude to you. Min Yunji, the seemingly insignificant guy who still manages to bring meals. For years, they'd referred to him as Senior Min Yunji. This guy, even in his shabby state, dares to compare himself to you. Do you know the difference between regular folks and simps? Look at Kim Taehyung's actions. A simp has no future. This scoundrel is evidently trying to tarnish your reputation, and people start discussing it animatedly. Who is Kim Taehyung? He's the simp who pursued Kim Jisoo for three years. Even senior Min Yoonji, not just him, brings breakfast to Park Shin Hai. The scoundrel raised the food box high in his hand, showcasing himself as a wealthy individual to earn the admiration of those around him. This is breakfast bought from a French restaurant. Sweet macaron pastries cost 1,600 Chinese yuan per portion. People gasped. It's just breakfast. It's not that serious. This guy is lecturing on the theory of dating. You know nothing. To court a girl, you need money. Spend a few dollars every day. If you give her a year, she'll realize you're a good catch. Spend a few hundred dollars each day and within a week, I can have her. P. 
People seemed to agree with this guy's perspective, as if absorbing this wisdom. Someone spoke loudly, they're coming down there. The two beautiful girls descended together, laughing and joking, displaying an affectionate sisterly bond. This scene was truly picturesque. The group of male students below were captivated. Wow, so beautiful. Jisoo, I bought breakfast for you. Shin Hai, mine is for you too. You look even more beautiful today. This is a breakfast I bought, with sweet macaron pastries from a French restaurant. On the other side, Jisoo declined the food offered by the male students. Thank you. I've already ordered my food. Shin Hai accepted it, saying, thank you. While taking the food from this scoundrel, Shin Hai's gaze shifted elsewhere. Min Yuji acted like, here I am, and two guys behind him admired. He can really deliver. Truly a senior. Praised for his actions, this scoundrel had a nose eight inches long. At this moment, the four guys, along with Min Yuji's roommate, walked by, and this scoundrel noticed Yuji. He shouted, is Kim Taehyung's little brother here? Yuji turned his head with a puzzled expression. Just woke up early in the morning, and this scoundrel is already itching for a fight. Was he planning to buy breakfast for Kim Jisoo too? Didn't he get dumped yesterday? His bespectacled friend was furious. It's Min Yuji again. Yuji's face remained unchanged. He added sarcastically, But with your persistence over the past three years, a little setback like this is nothing, right? His junior standing behind him chimed in. Jisoo said she already ordered food. Ignoring this, he continued, right? Looks like it won't work out today. Kim Taehyung, come early tomorrow. Shin Hai walked away. She approached Yuji, handed him the lunchbox that the scoundrel had just given her, and asked, Kim Taehyung, haven't you had breakfast yet? Yuji replied, no, didn't you message me this morning inviting me for breakfast? It seemed like he was intentionally provoking that scoundrel. The three roommates behind thought they were still dreaming, hastily rubbing their eyes. Is it true that a girl is bringing breakfast for this old man? And it's Park Shin Hai. Moreover, Park Shin Hai. The scoundrel Min Yuji and his cronies, upon witnessing this scene, were struck like lightning. Jisoo turned her head to look at the two, gritting her teeth. Park Shin Hai. At this moment, the enthusiastic shipper brought the food. Are you Kim Jisoo? Is this your breakfast? Shin Hai, on the other hand, was trying to win Tae Yang's favor. Fantastic. Breakfast from that famous French restaurant. Try it, this is a sweet maker in pastry. Tae Yang, upon hearing this, responded with a smirk. Pastry, glancing at an inappropriate area. She handed him breakfast, and the goodwill seemed to increase. Now Jisoo also approached to give breakfast to Tae Yang. She pushed Shin Hai away, and said affectionately, Kim Tae Yang. This is a breakfast item costing 368 RMB, specially bought for you. I was wrong yesterday. Let me make it up to you. Shin Hai, feeling uncomfortable, looked at Tae Young's face and hearing Jisoo's words. She just went along. Despite her actions, Jisoo shamelessly nestled into Tae Young's heart. I understand that you've paid a lot in these three years, bringing breakfast for me every day. I am truly moved. It's just that I was too naive before and got deceived. Will you forgive me? Taehyung, sweating, felt as if Jisoo's words were forcing him to forgive her. His face remained calm. He was no longer immersed in love as before. It's the same strategy as the past three years. Every time he felt disappointed, he tried to let her go, and she lured him back with such gestures. Whenever he resumed pursuing her, serving her, she immediately distanced herself. Does she think she can manipulate my emotions as before? This Jisoo is truly cunning. He turned and walked away, saying, If you get too close to me and your pursuers see, it won't be good. Jisoo stood behind, bewildered. With just one action and Taehyung's words, he completely captivated the two girls. He doesn't mind being bad at the game, and he even cares about his image. Jisoo was daydreaming, thinking, He still likes me. Shin Hai, happy inside, was pushed away by Kim Taehyung. The trick she always used successfully before seemed to have no effect this time, probably because of him. It seems these two girls are both daydreaming, truly admirable. Seeing the increasing favor from the two girls, Taehyung was completely puzzled. Why are their feelings increasing at the same time? Am I not mistaken? The guy's mind couldn't comprehend. The boys who had been standing behind eating dog food shouted in vain. What's going on? Kim Jisoo and Park 
Shin Hai, are fighting over Kim Tae Young. Aren't they best friends? Truly knave straight guys, the two girls got closer and closer. Kim Tae Young, eat my breakfast. Kim Tae Young, eat mine. It got to the point where Tae Young had to sit down. Jisoo climbed one leg onto the chair, holding a piece to feed him. Come on, open up. He sat on the chair, completely relaxed. Shin Hai, annoyed, said, Kim Jisoo, you. Min Yoonji held his head tightly, eyes wide. Even the whites were about to pop out. Impossible. Why is Shin Hai competing with Kim Jisoo for a man? And it's Kim Taegyoni that. What does he rely on? What else does he rely on? Except that he has money. He turned to Min Yoonji, raised his middle finger with a mocking smile, and continuously lied last night. I pressed the phone button 1,600 times, and my finger got cramps. Fortunately, someone else fed me. Hearing this, the two girls immediately approached to express concern, taking care of his middle finger. Is your hand hurting? Let me see. Shin Hai held a box of macarons in her hand, sat down on the street, and wanted to feed him, saying Kim Taeyong. This is delicious. Taeyong looked at Shin Hai in a daze, and the boys screamed. He took out his phone and recorded Kim Jisoo and Park Shin Hai, feeding Kim Taeyong together especially Park Shin Hai wearing such a short skirt and sitting squatting at Kim tae angle. You can see, eyes on the steamed buns, mouth on the macaron. I'm so jealous. Min Yuji was furious. Shin Hai smiled and asked him, What's wrong? You chew the food while looking down, which is fine, but I don't like red. Hearing this, Shin Hai was confused. But this macaron is pink. Oh, I see. Ha ha. You guys understand, right? Shin Hai now understood what he meant, so she took the opportunity to touch his thigh. Annoying thing. Jisoo, seeing this, got angry. Kim Taegyung is having breakfast. Don't disturb him. Seeing these girls so happy, he smiled contentedly. Shin Hai leaned close to his ear and whispered, I'll change to a different color later. He blushed, feeling a bit fluttered. Unexpectedly, Shin Hai had been trying to speak quietly, but still got overheard by the boys. Min Yuji was so angry that blood spurted from his mouth. The boys behind were stunned. Seeing Min Yuji spitting blood, they immediately shouted, Senior Min Yuji is spitting blood. Call the school nurse quickly. The name Min Yuji has been carried by two doctors. He casually sits, enjoying the cakes handed to him by two girls. Currently, news about him dominates the attention of two goddesses, causing a tremendous stir. The language beauty shock and her close friend served breakfast to Kim Taekyung. Among a series of comments, My goddess Kim Jisoo, what's going on? Is the photo photoshopped? I don't believe it. Isn't Kim Taekyung a simp lord? How can Park Shin Hai be like that? She's just an anti-fan. Kim Taekyung isn't wealthy, right? Only the rich become famous, huh? I was at the scene, and he said that last night he pressed the phone button over 1600 times, causing his hand to cramp so he needed someone to feed him. What a ridiculous excuse. Who would believe that? The image of a golden dragon also made headlines last night. His three roommates, holding their phones, shouted, Hey, dude, check the school's website. Hey, someone from the journalism department will come to interview you soon. He was chewing gum and upon hearing this, startled, not to that extent. Being fed by two girls, he hastily ran away. Come here, come here. The two girls raised their hands, calling his name, Kim Taehyung. These two girls no longer hide their intentions, but openly show that they want to win him over. Kim Taehyung is originally a wealthy guy who likes modesty and dislikes ostentation. It's all because she created such big news that upset him. Jisoo, upon hearing this, does not relent and rebuts. If it weren't for her, Min Yoonji would be furious and cause a big scene. He ran took cover behind a wall, and peeked out. The journalism department people surely couldn't catch up. At this moment, Jenny sent a message. Take a picture of me licking an ice cream at 7.30 tonight, Mr. John. We'll be landing at Seoul City Airport, and you'll come to pick us up? Right. He read the message with joy, displaying the face of someone earning extra money, hoping to meet her. In the airport lobby, people were coming and going, and he searched for Jenny. She said she's landed at the airport. Why haven't I seen her? Not like those streamers with heavy filters. Even her real mom wouldn't recognize her. Now fans behind Jenny had spotted her. 
He continuously held Jenny's hand and pulled her close. Jenny, where do you want to go? I'll take you. I'll drive you. Jenny quickly pulled her hand away and refused. Really, it's not necessary. Don't be overly polite with me. He also saw Jenny, who looked just like in the live stream. Now she had escaped from the grasp of that creepy fan, and he approached to shield Jenny. Jenny's expression was puzzled, and her brother should get his glasses checked. The fan, feeling awkward and unsure of how to retreat, spoke up. Who are you? I've given a lot of gifts to Jenny. Jenny raised her phone and showed the chat between him and her. Jenny happily asked, Little brother, is this you? Your clothes match what you said on wet chat. He looked at the messages and confirmed, Oh, that's me. The fan now knew who he was and had a frightened expression. Your Chairman Jun. He quickly bowed and apologized. Sorry, Chairman Jun, for bothering you. The two of them paid no attention to him and turned away. Jenny held his hand, saying, Luckily, Brother Jun arrived in time. The guy over there claimed to be my fan, but as soon as he approached, he grabbed me. I basically don't know him. This Jenny was also a money-oriented woman, no different from other girls. She only gave me a few hundred yuan worth of gifts, drove a shabby car, and still wanted to take me out. Jenny was getting closer to him. I always thought you were a successful businessman, around 40 years old. I didn't expect you to be so young and handsome. Hearing such compliments, he responded cheerfully. Just call me Kim Taehyung. I also didn't expect you to be more beautiful than when you were live streaming. Jenny exclaimed. Brother Kim Taehyung, you really know how to talk. The system prompted a counterattack mission. This Jenny was truly beautiful, flawless in every aspect. Her name was Kim Jenny, height 170 centimeters, weight 48 kilograms, and the current favorability level was 30%. In the distance, a man was waving and calling Jenny, Jenny. He and Jenny walked up to the man. Why is Chairman Ho Dong here? Little brother here is Chairman Jian. He has given me many gifts during the live stream. The man, as soon as Jenny spoke, replied, Of course, I came to pick you up. How could I let you take a taxi? This gentleman is. Jenny happily introduced. This is the only poor Jun. He felt embarrassed by her statement. Leaving the airport, Chairman Ho Dong invited them onto his car, saying, Chairman John, a battle-hardened veteran, I didn't expect him to be so young. If I had known Chairman John was picking up Jenny, I wouldn't have driven my half-million-dollar car to embarrass myself. I wonder what Chairman John drives. Honest in his response, I drove a small electric car here. Hearing this, Jenny was startled. Chairman Ho Dong suggested, Well, let me give you a ride for a stretch. He agreed. Sure. Thank you. So about my little electric donkey. On top of the luxurious car, there was a small electric donkey running on the road, causing everyone around to be shocked. Chairman Ho Dong looked at him through the car mirror. This male student looks about 20 years old at first glance, and his clothes are all tens of yuan. Can he really give gifts worth more than 24 million? Chairman Jun's humility truly surprises me. Is this the avenue to the restaurant? He turned to look outside. Jenny confirms she doesn't mind riding Chairman Jun's electric donkey. However, with so much luggage, it's more convenient for her to ride in my car. Chairman Jian, is that correct? He agreed. Chairman Ho Dong has a point. Looking at the scenery outside, he couldn't help but marvel. The night in Seoul is quite beautiful. Jenny looked at him suspiciously. Is this person really Chairman Jian? They had now arrived at the entrance of the restaurant. Jenny opened the door and walked in with a happy expression. Hello, everyone. He and Chairman Ho Dong followed behind. The uncles sitting at the banquet table were cheerful, and the main character had finally arrived. This is the one who defeated Sook Chen last night in the PK and had to leave. Jenny looks even more beautiful than the last time we met, a penalty of three glasses for being late, right? These uncles saw him and put on joyful expressions. Is this really Chairman Jian, or is it a fake? I've admired for a long time. One of them was even quite surprised. Isn't he too young? He had figured out the intentions of this group. It turned out that they pretended to invite him for a meal as an apology. But in reality, it was a convenient way to set up meetings with some big bosses or reward Jenny heavily on the live stream. This Jenny was truly a cunning woman. This was a dinner to invite Jenny's bosses. Indeed, a famous streamer for the newspaper, not lacking a bit of sophistication. 
everyone sat down at the table, engaging in lively conversations, but in reality, all the words were directed towards him, twisted to attract him. Chairman Hogong said Chairman Jilam drove a small electric donkey to pick up Jenny. Ha ha ha. Isn't it ridiculous? This is Chairman Jun's joke for Jenny, giving more than 20 million in gifts on the live stream. Why wouldn't he have money to buy a car? A sinister-faced man, with a sarcastic tone, said, No, if 20 million is pocket change, Chairman Jun's net worth is undoubtedly no less than a billion. He moved forward to pat his shoulder. I know quite a few people in Seoul, but Chairman Jun says he's from the Lin family. It seems like this guy is doubting your identity. He's making a fuss, claiming, among the wealthy in Seoul, there is no Lin family. He didn't care, regardless of what the man said. His expression remained unchanged. The other three were alarmed upon hearing this. These uncles started cursing at him together. What? Chairman Min Sik says it's true. Damn, indeed it's a forgery. And I even had to carry his small electric donkey. Don't let the fire catch Jenny. Has Jenny ever seen a picture of Chairman Jun before? Jenny was chewing on her chopsticks, casting a glance at Sang without saying anything. But deep down, her favorability had dropped by 10%. Recalling the time they were in the car on the way here, she had confirmed on his mobile phone that he was indeed so broke that he only had change left. Perhaps he was still upset with her. Indeed, the temperament of some wealthy individuals could be a bit peculiar and eccentric. But no matter, regardless of the type of man, they were all just money dispensers for her. The only concern was whether he had enough money for her to spend. Jenny moved closer to him, her hand resting on his thigh. Thank you, Chairman Min Sik, for your concern. But regardless of how the three major families in Gangnam are, Kim Taehyung, you are from the Taehyung family in Gangnam, right? He smiled, recognizing the intentions of this Jenny. It seemed like she was helping him with the conversation, but in reality, she was verifying his identity. Holding a glass of water in his hand, he looked at the people at the table calmly and said, The Taehyung family in Gangnam, I don't know, but in any case, their wealth is not as much as mine. As soon as you finish speaking, those uncles immediately mock you. Ha ha ha, little friend, you're acting too much. Be careful not to get struck by lightning. I guess Chairman Jian didn't win over 20 million in the lottery. He probably spent it all on Lisa. After that, not being able to make an appointment with Lisa, he could only run to deceive Jenny. That's right, anyway, you can still use this reputation to deceive someone for a one-night stand, right? Chairman John, you say your money is more than the Tagane family in Gangnam, so I want to ask a little. What kind of car do you normally drive? How many supercars do you have in your garage? Upon hearing that, you pulled Jenny close to you. I don't have any cars. You looked at Jenny affectionately. Jenny, what type of car do you like? I can buy it for you right now. Jenny looked at you with a bit of confusion. Seeing this scene, those uncles lost their appetite, hurriedly slammed the table. Hey, where are you putting your hand? Trying to pretend to pee to escape? Newly rich, indeed newly rich. Chairman Min's six words have exposed you. Now go shopping. Ha 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 ha. Do you think buying food from the market is enough? Little friend, pretending to be wealthy is not like this. Jenny, upon hearing that, also smiled. Really, thanks Kim Taehyung. I like the Ferrari Fago. If you give it to me, I'll reward you with an equivalent grand ceremony, okay? Although she said that verbally, the favorability in her heart decreased by 15%. You looked at Jenny with a sigh, impressive, appearing enthusiastic and cheerful on the outside, but in reality, the favorability has dropped. With this acting skill, if not an acting, it's a waste. Indeed, a real waste. You stood up and walked towards the door. So let's call it a day. Jenny waved happily, bidding you farewell. It was already dark outside. After half an hour, everyone in the audience came out to wait for you. That Taehyung guy indeed escaped. Just a jester after all. Jenny, let's go to karaoke. Jenny, not finding you, agreed. All right. Her face showed a bit of disappointment. Kim Taehyung is truly a scammer. Originally clinging to a glimmer of hope, suddenly a beam of light shone, dazzling those standing there. They were bewildered. What's happening? You stepped out, looking extremely handsome. Next to you was a limited edition Ferrari. Indeed, wealth could make a person handsome. On the road now filled with luxury cars, people around swarmed to take pictures to post on Weibo. 
Those who were criticizing you earlier were now extremely astonished. You smiled and spoke sarcastically. Oh, the CEOs are really embarrassing. I've blocked your way. Chairman Sukgu was so enthusiastic. I said I wanted to buy a sports car, and he insisted on driving the entire fleet here for me to choose from. The neighboring salesman flattered you. A wise choice, the convenient services of our store are well known for their meticulousness. Not to mention that Young's assets are verified with the Black Diamond card. The men who had mocked you earlier now stared with their mouths wide open. What Black Diamond card? The assets have to be over a billion, not fake. Can you just rent these cars for show? No, I'm acquainted with Chairman Suk Gu. The only reason he would treat you so respectfully must be because Kim Taegyung is truly a super tycoon. You walked up to Jenny. You arrived at the perfect time. Now I know the Ferrari Fago you chose is only a little over 10 million. Too cheap for me not to gift it. Jenny, hearing your words, was bewildered. Too, too cheap. You glanced at the group around Sang. Chairman Dong Hui said those who liked the Ferrari Fago would also like the Ferrari LF, so I decided to upgrade it for you and gift you the Ferrari LF. You swiped the card on the machine, the sound signaling a consumption of 32 million yuan. The men in front of you all had to show respect. Jenny, seeing you make the purchase, was ecstatic. It's really bought, the Ferrari LF, over 30 million. The men who had taunted you earlier were now terrified of revealing secrets. 30 million and still not his entire fortune. In less than two days, he spent over 50 million just on trivial things. His financial situation is incredible. Just now, we were still mocking him. Chairman Min Sik, please reflect on yourself. If you lack knowledge, don't pretend to speak nonsense and cause misunderstandings. We've been severely missled by you. The elderly salesman bent down and asked, Young man, are you buying a gift for your girlfriend? Would you like to buy one? You quickly declined. No, the most expensive car I have is this one, and I want to buy something more expensive. Hearing this, the owner apologized, I'm truly sorry have disappointed you. Jenny stood beside the car, still admiring it. She turned around, her face blushing. Kim Tae Young, thank you. This Ferrari LF is truly my dream car. I've never thought. You nonchalantly responded, It's okay, I just have too much money and don't know where to spend it. Hearing your words, Jenny was moved. Her favorability towards you skyrocketed to 50%. Surprisingly, you didn't get angry at their demands. Instead, you even offered a solution. The men who had approached you earlier now expressed sincere apologies. Chairman John, we misunderstood you earlier. I indeed have eyes like a blind man to doubt you. Please forgive my lack of understanding. If it's true that you plan to buy a more expensive car, we have the top luxury car dealership in Seoul. There are many Hang Seng supercars worth much more than Chairman Min Six car. Although we don't know if they will catch your eye, if you can visit, I am willing to offer you the biggest discount to show my sincerity in apologizing. You just grunted in response. Jenny ran to hug your arm, kicking away the interfering old man, Kim Tae Young. Can you try the car with me? You, puzzled, asked, can't you drive it yourself? Jenny whispered something sinister in your ear. People have thought about it. Of course, the appreciation gift has to be returned. It's just that your gift is too big. I can't repay it all at once. Can we do it on an installment plan? This first time, let's pay when it's just the two of us. Hearing that, you felt your emotions boil, your face turning red. True to your fame as a famous streamer, you always managed to ignite your curiosity. The supercar roared to life leaving the old men behind in a cloud of smoke, making them cough, cough, cough. The two on the car sped away like a rocket. Driving the car, Jenny handed you a green pen. Kim Taehyung, can you sign on my leg? You were puzzled by her request. Then, she lifted her skirt. You blushed utterly astonished and couldn't believe your eyes. Underneath the skirt was a line of text. John bro, sorry. Jenny's face became even more alluring. These are the installment payments. Each time I pay, I'll note down each amount. Are you satisfied, Kim Taehyung? You couldn't be more satisfied. I also wanted this position. It should have been mine. You responded, Mum, quite satisfied. If you weren't satisfied at this point, there must be something wrong with you. At the luxurious Carton Hotel, Jenny sat in front of the Livestream camera. Hello, everyone. I've arrived in Seoul. Surprisingly, 
Chairman Jian didn't say a word, just gave me a car. Truly touching. Everyone, the car is beyond belief. Is it real or fake? Is this not a Ferrari? It seems like more than 2 million, and I know this isn't just any Ferrari. It's the Ferrari LF, at least 30 million. Is Chairman John planning to sponsor Jenny? I can't believe it. The goddess Jenny can't be maintained for a mere tens of millions. At least it has to be a billion. Jenny on the other side is busy live streaming. You stand on this side with an uncle who is flattering. Chairman Jian is like this. In Seoul, there is a group of tycoons. All of them are top-notch. They all hope to get to know Chairman Jian. Hearing that, you agree. All right, add me to the group. This uncle is extremely pleased to hear you say that, thanking you profusely. Thank you, Chairman Jian. Truly, I'm extremely grateful. At this moment, your phone rings, and you answer, Hello, Sung Ta, Kim Tae Young, I just received news. Our high school class is organizing a reunion tomorrow. Since you're currently in Seoul, and aren't you also attending university in Seoul, will you be able to attend? Hearing this, you agree, I'll come, why not? Besides, I don't have anything else to do. I heard that Song Hai Kyo is studying literature at Seoul University. She'll also be attending the reunion. Upon hearing that, you smirk. Recalling the image of this goddess-like girl, Song Hai Kyo is truly incredibly beautiful. Although we were in the same high school class, we basically didn't talk. I just knew her family was very wealthy. Upon hearing that, you agree and promptly end the call. All right, I will definitely attend the reunion. The next day, you took the electric motorcycle to a five-star hotel. Seeing the hotel, you couldn't help but exclaim, This is the Milan Five-Star Hotel. Truly luxurious. While riding, a voice of a guy called out to you, Kim Young is here. Upon hearing this, you asked, Hey Sung Ta, where did Ah Sung park the car? But the two of them didn't know because they only took the high-speed train. I don't know either. I took the high-speed train here. Suddenly, your motorcycle emitted smoke. Alarmed, you hurriedly jumped off the bike. Why is it broken? This is just my luck. Recalling the events from last night, the uncle lifted your bike onto his car again. Can transport Chairman Jun's bike for a part of the journey, luckily in life. I didn't expect Chairman John to still be a university student. He's truly humble. I hope to have the opportunity to cooperate in business with Chairman Jian. Seeing the situation, you quickly express gratitude. Oh, thank you. Jenny also drove away, not forgetting to give you a playful air kiss. Kim Tae Young. Tomorrow, I'm busy with a photo shoot. If you're free, come find me. You were most upset about what happened last night when Chairman Ho Dong unloaded the bike without paying attention, causing damage. You must make him compensate. The guy behind you looked puzzled. Chairman Ho Dong is probably a worker carrying the Kang family's last name Ho Dong. At this moment, another wealthy show-off arrived in his supercar, saying, Hey, it's been a while. Everyone. You turned to look and it was Park Young Woo, a name that sounded a bit cheesy. He took off his sunglasses, revealing a smirk, and to make things worse, he had a cocky attitude, truly unappealing. People greeted him with excitement. Young Woo, long time no see. Seeing your broken car, he teased. Kim Tae Young, car trouble? You replied, yeah, probably last night. Before you could finish your sentence, Park Young Woo covered his face and laughed. My bad, my fault. As if it wasn't your fault but his. Is he insane? He continued to mock you. I forgot, the Milan Hotel doesn't have charging stations for electric cars. When choosing the location, I didn't consider that one of our classmates would come on an electric bike. I'll be more careful next time. Not sure if he heard this line before. Living means giving, but giving too much can be harmful. At that moment, Siro turned into sorry. Park Young Woo got off and tossed the keys to the valet saying, Welcome here. Park is indeed innocent. People approached him, praising. Impressive. Is this pouch worth millions? Ah, Sung, you're out of touch. My Lin Hotel belongs to Mr. Young Woo. What's this? I knew Young Woo was wealthy, but I didn't expect him to be this rich. People continued to discuss the hotel, saying, The construction cost of Midland alone was over $3 billion. Clearly, with that kind of money, he remains so modest when it comes to admiration. I only admire Young Wu. You, on the other hand, paid no attention to their conversation, looking for a parking spot for your broken bike. Go ahead, I'll find a parking spot, you said. 
While you were struggling with the bike, your phone rang, and on the other end was Shin Hai. Despite being in a nail salon, she was quite insistent. Kim Taehyung, where are you? It's Saturday. Do you want to have dinner with me? You declined. Not today. I have a class reunion with high school friends. How about tomorrow? I only have a bit over 2,000 yuan on me now. Just enough for a meal. Hearing this, Shin Hai agreed. Tomorrow works. I haven't been very convenient these past two days. You pondered. Not convenient, but she's still caring. Drinking warm water and all. Straight as an arrow. Shin Hai happily responded, Sure. Because of your concern, her favorability increased by an additional 2%. Park Shin Hai's favorability reached 91%, completing the first phase of the counterattack. Spending 1,988,000 yuan on Park, Shin Hai was transferred to the master's personal account. Hearing that, you smiled and responded to yourself. Who says drinking plenty of hot water is useless? Isn't it quite effective? But spending just 113 million yuan is too little. I need to spend more for a successful counterattack. Opening the personal attribute interface. Current information displayed. Name. Kim Taehyung. Age. 22. Strength. Level 2. Agility. Level 2. Physique. Level 2. Intelligence. Level 2. With a reward of one additional level for all attributes. You decided to try your luck and draw a prize. Currently, your strength has leveled up to 2, agility to 2, physique to 2, and intelligence to 2. This body seems flawless, like a warm stream spreading throughout very comfortable. You press the draw prize button. Then came the draw. The expected miracle seems to be approaching. Randomly drawing 3 skills, requiring the host to choose one of the 3 skills within the limited time. Countdown. 7 hours, 5 minutes, 9 seconds. Skill level A. Literary Appreciation Skill Level C Electro Sleep Meditation Whip Skill Level D Rap Jump Seeing these skills, you were extremely astonished. Your face even turned pale. What kind of demonic skills are these, practically useless in daily life? Looking at these skills, you couldn't make a choice. So you left it for later, muttering, Forget it, I'll attend the class reunion first. Want to buy a car? but the counterattack funds can't be spent on personal indulgences. Entering the class reunion, the room buzzed with lively chatter. You approached your seat, asking the friend next to you, has Song Hai Kyo arrived yet? Hearing your question, Park Young Woo sneered. Whether she's here or not has nothing to do with you. Kim tae Young, Song Hai Kyo is the beauty of the literature department, and her family background is far from simple. As for you, you turned to the male student beside you, inquiring, is Song Hai Kyo's family wealthy? It's not strange if you don't know. Her family is from a prestigious literary lineage, so she's always modest. People whispered in disgust. I recently found out that the museum in the city is owned by her family. Doesn't that mean they're quite wealthy? So Kim Taehyung and Song Hai Kyo are basically not from the same social class. Honestly, in Seoul, I only see Park Young Woo with the status to pursue Song Hai Kyo. I'm the same. Park Young Woo. Heard this and smiled, holding a glass of wine, pretending to be nonchalant. The door opened, and a beautiful girl walked in, saying sorry, got stuck in traffic. Looking like Elsa, everyone stared in awe. Truly a beauty. Even without makeup, she looks this stunning. G1, this girl, was rated 94 points for her appearance by the system. The system was ruthless in giving high scores. Park Yongwoo quickly stood up. Kim G1, sick here. However, both sides of his seat were already occupied. He made a wink and gestured, Make room for me. But the two girls sitting there were too engrossed in their conversation, paying little attention. Kim Ji Won is truly beautiful. You waved and called out, Song Hai Kyo, there's a Sikh here. The male student next to you seemed a bit uneasy. J Won sat down next to you, not forgetting to greet, Kim Tae Young, long time no see. You happily responded, I thought you forgot my name, haha. Ha. Despite her appearance, this girl was different inside. I still remember everyone's names in the class. The system woke up, displaying the revenge mission. Song Hai Kyo, 22 years old, 168 centimeters tall, weighing 50 kilograms, current favorability rating is 0%. You felt delighted seeing the current favorability rating, first step to success. The other male students were astonished. 
Kim Tae-young dares to have the beauty sitting next to him. Song Hai-kyo sitting next to Kim Tae-young. Furious, Park yong woos face darkened, grinding his teeth. Kim Tae-young is truly audacious. Just then, there was a call. Kim Tae-young, you turned back upon hearing your name. This guy Park yong woo was utterly insufferable, so he jeered. Heard you're in college and had a girlfriend for three years. Why not bring her along? We're all quite curious. Hearing that, you candidly admitted, we just broke up recently. He added more mockery. Breaking up after three years of pursuit, is that it? I think you want to pursue Song Hai Kyo, hence the story, right? A few girls chimed in teasingly. This kind of lie can only deceive children. Your image is getting quite unpleasant. Kim tae Young. we used to think of you as an honest person, but now that you're in college, you become shameless. You couldn't comprehend why these girls thought that way, saying, I'm just telling the truth. Because of their remarks, G1's favorability rating for you decreased by 1%. Feeling awkward, you didn't know what to say. This cunning Park Young Woo guy smirked evilly. Then, he went on to provoke, suddenly remembered Kim Ji Won. Seems like you're quite interested in art and literature. I recently bought David's painting Maria for my collection. Hearing that, Jai Won also showed a bit of interest. He asked, Would you like to appreciate it a bit? Ji Won approached the painting, and he, in turn, moved closer, glancing at you. Then he whispered in your ear, Knowing your humble background, you dare to attract Song Haikyo's attention. I can ensure you won't find a job in Seoul even after graduation. Be afraid, very afraid. Park Yong Woo approached the painting, standing next to Ju Won, saying, Kim Ju Won, you might not know how much I adore this painting. In two days, there will be an auction in the city featuring an angelic blessing painting by the same artist. Moreover, it was obvious that he was buying the painting to impress a girl, and my friend felt embarrassed. Ji Won, somewhat surprised, turned to Park Young Woo. I didn't expect you to be interested in Renaissance artists. Can I get a closer look? He agreed. Politeness is unnecessary. Let me take it down for you. He secretly rejoiced, thinking. Success. To learn about her interests, I've prepared a lot. Even though these things were truly boring, this person clearly had no interest whatsoever. Stepping into their conversation, my friend stood up and joined in Mr. Park. I'm also interested in David's works. Hearing that, Park Young Woo got angry, but he forced a smile. We can appreciate them together. Currently, my friend was choosing the skill of appreciating literature. It seemed like the system was providing some assistance. Park Young Woo turned to him with a scornful expression. Of course we can. Despite his outward appearance, he couldn't stop cursing my friend inwardly. Hemph. What a fool willingly embarrassing himself. He stepped forward, holding the painting and examining it closely. Ji Won, observing him, noted that he also liked David. Park Young Woo, still wanting to play tricks on him. Tease. Why don't you share your unique insights into this painting with us? At this point, he spoke up, initiating the literary appreciation skill. He analyzed the inaccuracies in the painting, saying, David's later works often use the glaze method, with finely ground pigments mixed with a substantial amount of linseed oil. Each stroke creates a soft, blurred effect. However, this painting deviates as it contains too many hues. Furthermore, David prefers to conceal lines around the corners of the character's mouth and eyes to achieve a delicate and soft feeling. Although these words seemed a bit exaggerated, they were all true. But the lines in this painting seem a bit stiff. Ji Won was somewhat surprised by his analysis, and he glanced at Park Yong Woo, saying, Mr. Park, it's a pity that this Maria is a fake. You've bought a high quality imitation, and the fake painting is being sold cheaply. Hearing this, Park Yong Woo felt like lightning struck him, swaying profusely as he denied. An amateur might fall for your deception, but I've seen enough to know you've learned some unorthodox tricks. Trying to prove yourself. Others chimed in, exactly. Kim Tae-young, don't pretend to be as professional as Mr. Young-woo. That advice is right. Kim Tae-young, stop talking. Ji-won's hair cascaded elegantly near him. She stepped forward to take the painting, saying, Wait, I've studied David's works. Kim Tae-young is not wrong. This is a high-quality imitation. Hearing Ji-won's words, everyone exclaimed, What? At this point, the faces of the two were close together. Ji-won took a few steps back, asking, how do you know such specialized knowledge? Tae Young quickly came up with an excuse. 
Since I was young, I felt uncomfortable when foreign countries looted many cultural treasures of our nation. Therefore, I've learned a lot about literary and artistic appreciation. My goal is to buy back all these artifacts and return them to the country. The other guy laughed loudly. You almost fooled everyone with your act. Can those artifacts be bought with money? Taehyung smiled and dropped a profound statement. As long as you have enough money to a certain extent, there's nothing you can't buy. Everyone burst into laughter, holding their stomachs. Having money to a certain extent, ha ha ha. Are you an elementary school student? Jai Won spoke up. As a child, I also had unrealistic dreams. Ji Won's current favorability towards him increased by 5%. Hearing this, everyone fell silent, not daring to speak. He smiled, saying, Calling it a dream seems too distant. This is a goal that I am confident I will achieve. Seeing Ji Won return to her original seat, the other guy gritted his teeth in anger, his eyes bulging with frustration. Kim Ji Won sat back next to Kim Taehyung. He glared at him with intense fury. At present, he harbored nothing but hatred for him. Thinking, Kim Taehyung dares to show off in front of me and even wants to compete for Song Hai Kyo. I will embarrass you to make you understand the gap between us. At this point, the food was served. People were amazed when they saw the dishes on the table. Wow, it smells amazing. I've never had such a luxurious meal before. Why don't our dishes look the same? He continued to flaunt his wealth. I don't understand. This is a non-fixed menu, and what is served depends on the chef's decision. This chef used to work at a three-star Michelin restaurant. His cooking style is quite unique, depending on his mood. It seems Kim Taehyung's luck isn't that great. In front of him was a steamed bun with a few strands of vegetables. It seemed Park Yongwu was clearly seeking revenge. People were puzzled. Oh, this is a steamed bun. What happened? Is it molecular gastronomy? Michelin chefs online like making these kinds of dishes, such as this salt-crusted grilled beef or something. He picked up a piece with his chopsticks, put it in his mouth, and said, Indeed, it's just a regular steamed bun with vegetables. Not surprising at all. He had anticipated that Park Yong Wu would cause trouble. This guy picked up a piece of meat intending to eat it. But before doing so, he didn't forget to taunt others. Kim Tae Young, how does it taste? Is the Michelin chef's steamed bun good? If it doesn't suit your taste, I'll ask someone to remove the dish, and the chef will prepare something else for you. But the chef's culinary creations are quite sophisticated. It can't be cooked in just one or two hours. The girl next to him teased. If you can eat a Michelin chef's dish, waiting for two hours is worth it. After all, going to karaoke on an empty stomach isn't great. We'll go to karaoke in a while. Sounds good. But he didn't care. He and G1 sat, laughing and chatting happily. Park Yong Woo was surprised to see them. The two of them conversed so harmoniously, but was all a facade. The patterns on both sides of the gold mask are not only beautiful, but also serve to eliminate the creases of the mask. The wisdom of ancient people always amazes me. Jai Won exclaimed, I feel like your specialized knowledge is almost catching up to my teachers. Next time there's an opportunity, I'll invite you to join us for an appreciation outing. At present, this guy seemed like a jester, tossing a flying disc eight meters away, muttering, ridiculous. A message appeared on his phone. Chairman Min Sik invites you to join the Seoul Prince Charming Group. He silently thought to himself, thinking about it, it's quite good. Chairman Min Sik invited me to join the Seoul Tycoons Group. He is the leader of the Seoul Prince Charming Chat Group, consisting of 23 members, so poor that the only money left is for joining the chat group. Chairman John, Chairman Min Sik, indeed added Chairman John to the chat group. Is it really Chairman John? Has the identity been verified? Real money, real wealth. Make sure it's genuine. Last night, Chairman John gave Jenny a supercar as a gift. He quickly skimmed through the messages. Is the gift meeting good? He looked closely at the screen. The counterattack funds cannot be used for men. Just find a random girl. This one seems okay. It's her. In the chat, it appeared. So poor that I only have money to transfer a smile to Bao. People were surprised. Can't send a big red envelope. So I transferred money to a random person. This is for everyone to have tea. Ah, thank you, Chairman Jian. This is equivalent to half of my spending money for the next six months. Yet, it's only for inviting everyone for tea. Chairman Jian is genuine and generous. Who dares to doubt Chairman Jian's inquiry? I was wrong. I was wrong. 
How dare I doubt Chairman Jun's integrity? Thank you, Chairman Jun. Thank you, Chairman Jun. Chairman Jun is so generous. Where is Chairman Jun now? Want to come to my land? I'm in my land. Coincidentally, I'm also near this my land. It's the right time, and I'm free. Want to see Chairman Jun's demeanor? Wait for me. I'm also coming. The more people, the more lively, so I'm coming, I'm coming. The guy looked at his phone, smiled, and said, Chairman Jun, I am Park Yongwu, the young master of Myland. I'll cover all the expenses for Chairman Jun at Myland today. Whatever Chairman Jun wants, feel free to take it. Upon hearing this, he responded cheerfully, Oh, that's not necessary. This is not too coincidental. It's not like a prince showing off. Chairman Jun doesn't need to be polite. I have nothing but gratitude. After sending this message, he looked at him with a sly smile, saying, You're in trouble, Kim Tae-young. I've befriended a powerful tycoon. The network is getting broader. You just wait until the members of the tycoon group arrive. I just need to complain a bit. This guy imagined the scenario, saying, Come on, everyone, let's have a drink. It seems like young Master Park is not in a good mood. It's nothing. I just have a friend from high school belonging to the lower class without eyes and brains, showing up here. He envisioned that everyone would scold him for offending Park Yongwu. Which lower class guy is so bold, daring to offend young Master Park? Is this guy Kim Taehyung? I won't let him stay in Seoul anymore. Right, we can help. This is a strict order from our HR department. Full-scale expulsion of the guy named Kim Taehyung. Forming an alliance with Chairman Jiang, Kim Taehyung confidently strides forward, creating ripples in their relationship. Each arrow hitting three targets, he proves his wit. Rising to his feet, he asks, It looks like everyone is almost done with their meal. Let me escort you to the karaoke rooms on the top floor. I've arranged a meeting with some of the top socialites in Seoul, so you can mingle with the upper class. Hearing this, everyone praises him. Yang Wu, you're so cool. In the splendid golden hall, people gather excitedly. At that moment, a few individuals approach him shaking hands and inquiring. Nice to meet young Master Park. How's Shuri's business doing? Clearly, they are flaunting their status, and everyone is astonished. Yang Wu looks handsome. It feels like Yang Wu is from a different world. Yet, he's introducing us to the tycoons. I'll follow Yang Wu in the future. He introduces these people to Ji Won, and vice versa. Kim Ji Won, meet Chairman Dong Yoon Duty, the number one real estate magnate in Seoul. Chairman Dong Yoon, this is Song Hai Kyo, the jewel of the Song family. Upon hearing this, Chairman Dong Yoon happily says, The Song family, Song Nisio, my niece is acquainted with her father. Ji Wan steps forward to greet him with a polite smile, creating admiration in countless hearts. He remarks, I've heard early on that Miss Song is extremely beautiful, and indeed. At this point, a server approaches to inform him discreetly, Mr. Park, there's a request for you. Puzzled, he points at himself, and the server nods. One of your classmates wants to order a bottle of olive oil cherry white. I'm not sure if I should bring it to him. Hearing this, he speaks loudly. Kim Tae-young, do you want to order a logo white series? Upon hearing this, everyone is astonished, then quickly scolds him. Is Kim Tae-young crazy? This type of wine costs thousands of dollars. Yong Wu considers us old classmates, inviting everyone for a meal and karaoke. You shouldn't take advantage of the opportunity to order such expensive wine. Probably just a one-time thing. Kim Tae-young probably doesn't know that this wine is so expensive. Sitting in his chair, playfully asserting once again, Right, right, that a logo series or whatever it is. No problem. Someone invited me. He smirks. Really? So Kim Tae-young also knows the rich and famous. Seizing the opportunity, it turns out he doesn't know whom he's harming indeed causing harm to himself. The wine bottle is opened, and he remarks, Even Kim Taehyung knows a big shot. I have no idea how much this wine costs. This guy presents the wine in front of him, teasingly sticking out his tongue. Kim Taehyung, a bottle of a Logo Series White is priced at 250000 It's already opened. It's too late for regrets now. If your rich friend can't pay this amount, you might have to mine coal on Jeju Island to settle the debt. However, my associate is a coal mining tycoon and can help you arrange a position. Scratching his head, he responds, 250,000. I truly know nothing about wine. He seems somewhat disappointed. 
I thought the longer the name, the more expensive it would be. This guy cheekily comments, When you show off, you indeed look handsome. I hope that when you pay, it won't be too embarrassing. He walks over to where everyone is gathering. Is everyone here yet? Isn't Chu Tik Jun supposed to be at my land? Why haven't we seen him yet? People in the group say Chu Tik Jun mentioned being in the luxurious gold lobby. Surprised, he exclaims, Is he here? At that moment, the door opens, and an older gentleman walks in. Oh, everyone's here. It seems I'm the latest arrival. People cheer. Chairman Min Sik. Chairman Min Sik is here too, so only Chairman Jun is missing. He attempts to shake hands with the older gentleman, but the gentleman happily quickly moves past him and goes to his side, taking his hand warmly. Chairman Jun, I'm late. Apologies. Turns out you've been here for a while, making Chairman Jun wait. I'll truly punish myself with three glasses. Today, I've mastered the art of flattery. Witnessing this scene, everyone is dumbfounded. Money. Then the crowd erupts. Chairman Jun, you are Chairman Jun. Kim Tae-young is Chairman Jun. Ju Won, perplexed, doesn't understand what's happening as she doesn't follow gossip news. This guy, his mouth agape, now understands what fear is. What? This can't be. He calmly confirms, yeah, it's me. People around him grab his hands, cheering. Chairman Jun is so young, handsome, and elegant. Does Chairman Jun have a girlfriend? I'll introduce my younger sister to you. These people are clearly trying to establish connections. His high school friends are extremely surprised. Is Kim Tae-young really that rich? He's surrounded by socialites flattering him. His attitude towards Yong Woo earlier was completely different. The other guy still can't believe it. Impossible, I don't know what tricks Kim Tae-young played. You've all been deceived. I know Kim Tae-young's parents are just laborers. He's just a poor guy. Absolutely impossible to be Chairman Jun. Clearly, he's embarrassed and wants to deny it. Upon hearing him daring to defame him, the uncle immediately shouted, That guy named Park, shut your mouth immediately for me. You are the most trashy one in the Seoul Prince group. All the flaws of this guy are exposed. Lowest academic performance. Bottom tier capabilities. Every month, apart from spending a few hundred thousand yuan from your parents, you don't know how to do anything. Investments have never been successful even once. Listening to this, the guy looks stunned as if he was about to fall to the ground. At this point, everyone is no longer on his side. Stocks are all losing money, not making a penny, really disgracing our group. The uncle becomes more eager as he speaks, yet he still dares to curse Chairman Jun. Chairman Jun is someone you can't afford to offend. Standing behind, he reveals a cold and indifferent expression while watching the drama unfold. Kick him out of the Soul Prince group. Hearing this, the guy trembles as if he's about to wet his pants. No, please. I... To ease the atmosphere, he raises his glass. It's okay, isn't it, Park? Covering all my expenses today, bartender, bring out the most expensive drinks for everyone in the hall. Drink until satisfied. Hearing his words, everyone happily and quickly thanks him. Thank you, Chairman John. Thank you, Kim Taeyong. Chairman John is truly generous. This one lies on the ground, tears streaming down, only able to lament and blame the heavens, criticizing the land and cursing their own blindness. After a satisfying meal, everyone steps out of the hotel. Each one expresses gratitude. Thank you, Kim Tae-young. Thank you, Mr. Yong Woo. Thank you, Boss John. Let's meet again next time. At this moment, a driver has arrived to take G1 back. Miss, G1 bids farewell to everyone. Goodbye, everyone. I'm leaving early. Indeed, a beautiful person with a beautiful personality. The men, seeing the car that came to pick up G1, are astonished. A long version of Rolls Royce. I envy being so rich yet so modest. If it were me, I would definitely flop my wealth everywhere. He looks at G1, unable to help but marvel internally. Truly a young lady accustomed to the upper class from a young age. For her own wealth status, there is no surprise, not even a slight increase in favorability. Dealing with someone tricky like this, he has thought a lot clearly. G1 is someone who doesn't crave drama. He smiles contentedly within. Truly an excellent money-making target. The uncle from earlier rushes over and calls out to him. Boss John, didn't you say you wouldn't look twice at cars worth 30 to 40 million dollars? I found one worth 80 million, only 10 in the world. 
not even in the country. I wonder if you. He looked at the car, cracking a smile. Doesn't look bad. Take it. Upon hearing this, the uncle immediately flew away. No wonder your boss Jun, swift and efficient. I'll get to work, and I'll be back in a few days. People looked at him and whispered, admiration overload. Boss says speed is truly fast. Immediately struck a big deal with boss Jun. He glanced at the balance in his account, 113,770, a sad expression on his face. Gotta grind some more. In the evening, he walked on the way back to the school campus. While walking, he encountered Jisoo sitting, hugging her knees with her face down. Kim Jisoo. Jisoo sat pale on the ground, looking at him. Kim Taehyung, you're finally back. Sitting like that, not afraid of looking weird, Jisoo ran to hug him, presenting a pitiful appearance, shedding tears. Dad's heart disease suddenly recurred, now lying in the hospital, undergoing surgery needs 800,000. But my family doesn't have that much money. Can you lend it to me in advance? He felt extremely uncomfortable at this point. It's been three years. Do you think I don't understand you? The excuse of a family member being sick has been used many times. Now you're borrowing 800000 to buy branded stuff online. I won't lend you a single penny. Hearing these words, Jisoo stood frozen, unable to believe her eyes. You. Jisoo stepped forward to confront him. She couldn't comprehend. Kim Taehyung. You spent over 10 million on Park Shin Hai, but you're not willing to lend me 800,000. He was angry because this woman seemed utterly illogical. My money, how I want to spend it, on whom I want to spend it, is none of your business. Am I clear enough? Do you still expect me to be generous? He turned away. We haven't been broken up for a week yet, thanks to your blessing. I finally lived a few good days. Tomorrow, I have a dinner appointment with someone else. I won't talk to you anymore. Goodbye. Jisoo put on a pitiful appearance. Kim Taehyung, you can't treat me like this. Sympathy level dropped by 20% at this point. He didn't turn around, no matter what she said, feeling sad. After going through Jimin's affairs, I thought she had changed. It seems I thought too much. The favorability level dropped, and I don't need to make money off her anymore. The next morning, the university campus was crowded. He walked while holding the phone with Park Shin Hai's location sent inviting him to have a meal there. No way, girls can't block his path to wealth. At this moment, there was a notification on the phone. The person you are following, Jenny, is live streaming and greeting you. I am a small assistant from the newspaper. I can arrange exclusive gifts for you. He silently repeated these three words in his mind. Exclusive gift. The corners of his mouth couldn't hide the smile. He entered the live stream room and Jenny, upon seeing him, was delighted. Mr. John, you're here. Then this girl, doing yoga, oh my, her body is just amazing. Everyone in the live stream room greeted him. Welcome, Mr. Jun. Jenny suggested. Can I dance for you? You can also show some moves. Don't think you can't give me a supercar like Mr. Jun. I envy you. I envy you to death. So poor that all he could afford was to gift the streamer, a god of wealth is here. A unique gift, specially made for someone so poor. The God of Wealth is here cost 808,000 yuan each. People in the live stream were bewildered. 880,000 yuan each. Oh my, this exclusive gift is for the top streamers, straightforwardly priced at only 500,000 each. Jenny was extremely surprised when she saw this gift and quickly covered her mouth. Thank you, Mr. Jun. He continued to send them from 1 to 20, and at this point, the number had reached 200. Jenny couldn't believe her eyes. So poor that all he could afford was to give the streamer 341 God of Wealth is here. Seeing this amount, Jenny was startled, sweating nervously. 341 God of Wealth is here. 300 million yuan, a 20% increase in likability. This person's appearance is just too impressive. Jenny breathed heavily. Mr. Jun, you can choose any talent, and I'll perform right away. System message. Supreme Emperor Level 30 so poor that only enough money to leave the live stream room. Just as this was said, Jenny was astonished, not understanding what was happening. He was now extremely cheerful, spending 300 million, then getting a refund of 30 million, fantastic. Money coming in, money coming in, I love money, I love money. Jenny quickly slapped her face. He just gave a supercar, and now a gift of 300 million. 
If buying a supercar is to show off in front of those old bosses, I can understand. But now, I haven't asked him for a gift, and I'm not a fish tank to be broken. Why is he giving me such an expensive gift? Is he planning for me to perform anything? Could it be? Could it be? Could it be that he likes me? If it were him, it wouldn't be impossible. A series of thoughts kept rushing in. Jenny hurriedly slapped her face, trying to figure out if she was dreaming or awake. At this point, she became more determined. Stay alert. Refuse him. Men are not trustworthy. Remember, he's just my money dispenser. I absolutely won't fall for him. Jenny looked at the candid photo, blushing involuntarily. Kim Taehyung, the guy on this side, was following the address to the school gate, and the name was. Suddenly, a loud shout echoed. Wearing a mask, and think I won't recognize you. A group of men surrounded Jisoo, pulling down her face mask. Where do you think you're going? At this point, the eyes of the two had already met. He turned away, leaving Jisoo feeling sad. He won't come to help me anymore. The men still wouldn't let go, and Jisoo promised. Now, I don't have money for another three days. They refused to believe. Three days and another three days. Do you think I believe you? Now I'm going to borrow money. One of the men sneered. Yesterday, didn't you say your boyfriend would lend you money? Where is your boyfriend? Hearing this, Jisoo's face darkened. He, my boyfriend, broke his heart. The man laughed mockingly. Ha 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 ha. Let me translate a bit. You can't borrow money, right? This group of people cursed at her, including him, calling them names. Someone who refuses to lend money must be a scum and a coward. Why haven't you called him here? Jisoo lowered her head. I didn't. These men grabbed Jisoo's hands, saying, Stop wasting words. Jisoo resisted. What do you want to take me? The three men forced her into the car, saying, Where are we going? Of course we're using you to pay the debt. Jisoo struggled and refused. No. A passerby witnessed the scene but did not intervene. Just turned and ran away. Jisoo, helpless, begged in vain. Help me. But her mouth was covered and her voice couldn't escape. Still want to call for help. Let me tell you, we've kidnapped people many times. And no one has dared to show up. Jisoo was now enveloped in darkness. It was then that she remembered him. Tears streamed down her face. Kim Taehyung, I don't blame you. All of this is my redemption. If it weren't for my greed, my vanity, it wouldn't have ended up like this today. I deeply regret hurting you back then. I'm sorry, Kim Taehyung. It seems that by now, Jisoo has realized who truly cared for her. Dragged into the car by these people, she pleaded, Driver. Suddenly, the car's windows shattered. A punch directly hit the driver's face. He swung the door open and the remaining men were bewildered. What's happening? He ordered them, get out of the car. Jisoo felt like she had found her savior when she saw him, cheerful. Kim Taehyung. The favorability level increased by 40%. The group attacked. This brat wants to die. He didn't care, took out the money and hit them. One got smacked on the chin, the other on the head, and the money scattered on the ground. The two were astonished. Indeed, one could use money to crush someone to death. He coldly looked at them. Take this 800,000 and get lost. They hurriedly collected the money. You're her boyfriend. Hearing that, he shook his head, quickly declining. I'm not. You're talking nonsense. Take the money and leave. The driver knocked Jisoo down onto the road. You're wicked, kid. Don't think having money settles everything. You'll pay for messing with my brothers. Jisoo was heartlessly knocked down. They gathered the money and left, saying, Go. He'd scratched his head. Yeah. Jisoo sat on the ground. By now, she realized her mistake. Kim Taehyung, I'm sorry. He turned away. If you really know you're wrong, then don't cling to me next time. Jisoo shed tears. Looking at him, the favorability level increased by an additional 10%. Jisoo now knew her place. Kim Taehyung, I understand that I am not worthy of you right now, but I will use my actions to compensate for the harm I caused you. On the main road, several cars rushed by. He sat in the car watching the lit stream. Thanks for your gift, Jun. I'll shake it for you. The taxi driver uncle was curious. Which platform do you guys like to watch live streams on? He responded, M Live Platform. Though it's frugal with gifts after watching, I usually watch on Q Clive. Even in the depths of poverty with almost no money left, 
that mysterious benefactor still gives three million for the stream. He replied with that to keep up the conversation. Yeah, I watched that too. He continuously pressed the screen with his finger. Does Judd like it like this? At this moment, the announcement in the car sounded, the mysterious benefactor has just shown generosity again. In extreme poverty with almost no money, a gift of 100 million is given to a streamer on the bunny platform. The taxi driver uncle, upon hearing that, was amazed. Extreme poverty with almost no money, and they still switched to Bunny Live. Then his phone rang again. Want to have fun? Go to TikTok. The taxi driver uncle was puzzled. Just watched Bunny Live, now switching to TikTok. Must be logging in every day, earning money, little gifts for free, and giving gifts to the streamer. Clearly just a poor person doing missions to give gifts. I'm not that knave. I've never spent a dime watching live streams, never given a gift to anyone. The old man smirked, offering unsolicited advice with a smile. Young man, don't burden yourself with unnecessary concerns. Watch live streams for joy, but never fall prey to the streamers. The young man just grunted in response. Soon, another notification echoed. The mysterious benefactor strikes again, in extreme poverty with almost no money, now gifting 100 million on the TikTok Livestream platform. Witnessing this, the old man was even more shocked than before, exclaiming, Oh! Once again, the phone chimed, capturing life's beautiful moments. Another notification followed. The mysterious benefactor strikes again, in extreme poverty with almost no money, now gifting 100 million on the Twitch Livestream platform. Now, the old man was in sheer disbelief, causing the car to become unstable. The young man spoke up. Driver, please stabilize the car a bit. He stepped out of the car. The old man, still amazed, asked, Young man, he can't be Mr. John, can he? He ran his fingers through his hair. Spending another 300 million as promised to each person is too troublesome. Anyway, I can't spend all this money. I'm scattering it everywhere, casting a wide net in various directions. The main goal is to bait everyone in. He looked ahead. Um, this isn't the place. On the street, the crowd was bustling. Nam Damon Village next to Seoul University, where many students rented rooms. Moreover, these students were the main consumers for the shop tier, so the prices were quite affordable. Park Shin Hai arranged for us to eat here, right? At that moment, Shin Hai opened the door and stepped out. Kim Tae Young is here. Oh my, is this the outfit you can let others see? He looked over in surprise, blushing. Shin Hai grabbed his hand and pulled him inside. Hurry in. He looked inside in confusion. Blushing, Shin Hai asked, Do you like it or rather, what do you like? It turned out that Shin Hai was subtly referring to the room. His nose started bleeding. He covered it with his hand. While raising his thumb, I like it a lot. He clearly only talked about clothes, but the perverted always had demons following them. Shin Hai prepared a rich and nutritious meal. This is the food I cooked. Try it. After taking a bite, he praised, Delicious, I didn't expect you to be good at cooking this sweet and sour dish. Shin Hai, upon hearing this, was extremely pleased, with a bright and radiant smile. Great, I've been renting this room for a long time. On Saturdays and Sundays, when I'm not going to school, I'll live here. You're the first male student to come to my rented room. As he finished hearing this, while still eating, he also realized, also the first male student to eat the food I cooked. Just as he placed the bowl down, Shin Hai bloomed a bright smile. Really? I'm honored. Are the flowers on the balcony lavender? Blushing, Shin Hai placed a finger on her lips, appearing cute and charming. Yes, because you like the scent of lavender, I bought a pot, as Kim Jisoo suggested. He became vigilant at this moment. What's going on here? Park Shin Hai doesn't seem right today. She's not a money-hungry girl, so I thought she would coax me into buying it. Cooking rice and buying flowers, is this the gentle and virtuous girl? He was too suspicious, hastily reaching out to touch Shin Hai's forehead. Are you okay? Do you have a fever? Shin Hai held his hand. I'm someone who doesn't feel safe. When I was very young, my parents divorced. Shin Hai gently held his hand, leaning her face against it. So, since I was little, I've seen the world and people move very fast too fast for me to keep up. Only money can give me the most basic sense of security. However, unexpectedly, from you, I feel the safety I long for. 
Shin Hai embraced him, leaving him puzzled. I feel safe. Pursuing Kim Jisoo for three years proves that you are a very loyal person. Moreover, spending so much money on me without asking for anything in return is completely different from those other guys with ulterior motives. Looking at him, Shin Hai continued. Although I've had a few relationships, I've kept myself. So, ah, so that's it. The two of them leaned in, preparing to share a kiss. Suddenly he realized I remember now. Park Shin Hai's favorable impression of me is already 91%. It's practically love. No wonder it can easily turn into something else. I only thought of it as a complete task, a prank to get extra points, and forgot about this. Indeed, typical man, completely oblivious to the atmosphere. He gazed into her soul, raising his hand to squeeze her, leaning in close. Surely she wouldn't refuse. A man, but still scared of reality. Shin Hai, delighted by what he did, was in ecstasy, her whole body twisting in pleasure, unable to escape that sensation. The atmosphere became increasingly sultry, and viewers could easily understand what these two were doing. He looked at her and hastily apologized. Sorry, did I use too much force? Shin Hai quickly reassured, No, it's okay. Do whatever you like. Before she could finish, he pounced on her like a hungry tiger, wanting to nibble and devour every piece of flesh on her. He pulled away, saying, The clothes are a bit restricting. Shin Hai didn't mind, and the two were immersed in ecstasy. Do you guys like it? Suddenly, a shout echoed. Nana, I was wrong. Don't go, Nana. Hearing this call, he abruptly snapped out of it. Jin Gu's voice. Looking outside, his roommate was pulling a girl, saying, Nana, don't go, I'm really sorry. But the girl refused to turn around. It really is Jin Gu. Despite this, she heartlessly slapped Jin Gu, sending his thick glasses flying. The girl shouted loudly, You're yelling so loudly, what's not embarrassing enough? The surrounding aunties gathered around, enjoying the scene. The girl left, and Jin Gu continued to shout. By tomorrow, the whole school will know. The glasses lay on the cracked ground, and people gossiped. He deserved to be slapped. His shouting was too much. Since Jin Gu couldn't find his way, he knelt down and fumbled on the ground to retrieve his glasses. He hurriedly ran down in front of Jin Gu, picked up the glasses, and handed them to him, asking, Jin Gu, what's going on, involving Kim Taeyong? Jin Gu put his glasses back on and said, you also know that Na Na and I have been dating for six months. While he was speaking, Shin Hai rushed out. Jin Gu was shocked and couldn't believe his eyes, yelling loudly, Park Shin Hai. The outfit Shin Hai was wearing made Jin Gu even more astonished. She quickly hit behind him, and he scratched his head, saying, She invited me to have dinner. He continued, and Jin Gu, still in disbelief, adjusted his glasses. Originally, we planned to watch a movie. I came to pick her up. After the movie, she wanted to go to the channel store to buy an anti-aging set. I thought it would cost more than 8,000 yuan, so I said I didn't have the money right now. Unexpectedly, she got angry and refused to watch the movie. We've always been good before. I don't know why she suddenly got so angry. Shin Hai peeked out, saying, Are you Li Nama's boyfriend? I heard she recently got close to a wealthy boyfriend. Both were shocked, and he exclaimed, What's impossible? Jin Gu was even more surprised. Nana can't betray me. Shin Hai confidently said, Believe it or not, it's up to you. Anyway, the information in our sisterhood group has never been wrong. Jin Gu shouted, It can't be, I can't believe it. He placed his hand on the guy's shoulder to comfort him. Come on, Jin Gu, call Li Nana. Tell her you're buying her makeup. Park Shin Hai, text your sisterhood group, see if they have spotted that man. He seems quite thorough. He smirked. Let's see her true face. Smoke billowed upwards as Park Young Woo solemnly smoked, his face filled with melancholy. Seeing this, the girl with purple hair rushed over and embraced Park Young Woo, asking, Young Woo, what's wrong? Frowning, Park Young Woo replied, You don't know. Life may not be able to turn around for me anymore. Recalling the past, Park Young Woo remained bewildered. I almost got kicked out back then. Luckily, Kim Tae Young spoke up for me and I stayed in the prince and princess group. But now, no one in our group pays any attention to what I say. At this moment, Park Young Woo's mood seemed to fall from the clouds to hell. This was clearly hell. His phone rang, capturing his attention. 
After checking it, he was extremely surprised, almost unable to believe his eyes. This was a transition from the depths of despair to sudden excitement, and he jumped up, laughing. Ha ha ha, this is the opportunity to turn things around for me. The girl with purple hair sat below, puzzled. In the Prince Kim Vien River chat group, everyone seemed eager for him to visit the newly opened store. It was evident they wanted him to spend money. Upon hearing Park Yong Woo's invitation, he agreed without hesitation. The remaining people in the chat group were full of admiration. The next day, Park Yong Woo drove a luxury car with the purple haired girl sitting beside him. Park Yong Woo boasted to the girl. Now I'm going to pick up Director Jun to discuss today's plan, convenient for you to recognize. The girl, astonished, exclaimed, Can we really meet Director Jun? The most crucial purpose of bringing her along was to make it clear to Kim Taeyong that he dared not entertain thoughts about Song Haikyo anymore. Seemingly everything was planned, and things were going well today. They arrived at their destination, and Park Yong Woo announced, We're here. Director Jun sent the location and he should be around. The supercar parked at a street-side eatery seemed somewhat out of place. The girl, excited, pressed close to Park Yong-woo and looked around the food stall, asking, Where is the legendary director Jun? Park Yong-woo glanced in one direction and smiled. Ah, there he is, by the street-side eatery. At the moment, he was eating food from a plate, appearing to enjoy banbua. Dressed in casual clothes and wearing flip-flops, he seemed quite unconventional. Seeing his outstanding appearance, the girl opened her mouth wide in surprise. Is that Director Jun? Park Yong-woo, noting his bright eyes and jubilant expression, lied to himself, very handsome. Despite the humble surroundings, he shines like a firefly in the dark, truly outstanding. Hearing Park Yong-woo's words, the girl became even more horrified, outstanding. Park Yong-woo led the girl in front of him and remarked, Taehyung spent over a hundred million. Yet he chose to eat at such an ordinary place. How miraculous. Upon seeing Park Yongwu, Young exclaimed, You're here. The innards at this place are both quick and delicious. Highly recommended. Let's go. We'll talk details about Gapyong Square on the way. Yes, Young. It seemed that Park Yongwu had become more obedient and less arrogant. The city itself was beautiful, bathed in sunlight, illuminating the entire metropolis. At Gapyong Square, people moved about, creating a lively atmosphere. Jin Gu hid behind a wall, observing his ex-girlfriend, following Young's plan to catch her in the act. Young explained, I'll arrange for Li Nana to wait in front of the main entrance. Then, Park Shin Hai will position her, deceiving that man to come here. After that, we wait for them to meet and see if it's really a romantic relationship. At that moment, where Nana was standing, a chubby man approached. Surprisingly, they started kissing under the broad daylight. It was unbelievable to Jin Gu, and he thought, No, this can't be real. Angry and furious, Jin Gu approached the two lovers, saying, This shameless couple, Li Nana dares to betray me, and even pairs up with an older man like this. Hearing Jin Gu's call, the two turned back. The chubby guy approached, mocking Jin Gu, saying, You're the poor boyfriend Nana mentioned. Truly, you're both chubby and bad-tempered, not to mention lacking any charisma. Jin Gu, enraged, shouted, Get out! This is between Nana and me. The chubby guy sneered, Ha ha ha! What can you use to make me leave? But I can make you leave! Believe it or not! The chubby guy turned and called, Security! A security guard came out, asking, What's going on, sir? True to the chubby guy's nature, he commanded, there's someone causing trouble here, affecting my shopping experience. Jin Gu, hearing this, was startled, saying, What? The security guard, following orders, stood in front of Jin Gu with a serious expression, saying, Please leave, sir. Jin Gu, intimidated by the large stature and stern face, felt a chill and broke into a cold sweat. I didn't cause any trouble. This person is involved with my girlfriend. Hearing Jin Gu's words, Nana reacted fiercely, running to hug the chubby guy, saying, Hey, don't say that. Ryo here is my boyfriend. The chubby guy, pleased with Nana's words, had a smug expression. Jin Gu, confused and full of questions, thought, Why is Nana doing this? My six-month relationship can't compare to an older man. Where did this come from? These three individuals were clearly bullying Jin Gu, 
without justification. Seeing the security personnel, he couldn't understand. Rio is a VIP customer of the shopping center. That's why he gets special treatment. Why should his girlfriend suffer? Everyone thinks about their own future, and I'm sure you can understand that. The chubby guy, feeling superior due to his age, offered advice to Jin Gu. Young man, at your age, don't think about love. Focus on making money first. Find a 20-year-old girlfriend when you're 40. That's when you'll be wealthy and able to have a girlfriend. Have you all absorbed this knowledge yet? You only get a girlfriend at 40. Jin Gu, surrounded by three towering figures, was now extremely frightened, so much so that he almost wet his pants. No, it can't be like this. At this moment, Park Young Woo arrived in his sports car, finding Jin Gu being harassed by the three. The chubby guy and Nana, upon seeing Park Young Woo, said, the person in that sports car is young Master Park, the heir to the Myland Hotel, and the owner of Gapyong Square. He has collaborated a lot with him. Hearing this, Nana, astonished, covered her mouth with her hand. Wow, Ryo, you're really amazing. It seems that this girl has a plan to seduce Park Young Woo. Park Young Woo approached, and Nana happily said, Young Master Park is coming over to greet you. The chubby guy was overjoyed. He ran over intending to shake hands, and greeted Park Young Woo, Young Master Park. Unexpectedly, the situation turned out differently. Park Young Woo ran over and hugged Jin Gu, still very cheerful, saying, Director O, Director O is here for an inspection. How's the operation of the shopping center? Jin Gu, at this moment, still didn't understand what was going on. Park Young Woo gestured dramatically, saying, This investment, I hope you can consider it. In the future, Two more large shopping centers are set to open. Do you know how much I hope to collaborate with you? Jin Gu, bewildered, didn't grasp the situation, and the chubby guy found it even more unbelievable. He widened his eyes, feeling like the sky was falling. The two of them gasped. Director O was investing for young Master Park. At this moment, the girl with purple hair walked over, dressed provocatively. Indeed, she was quite stunning, but she still couldn't match Jin Gu's harem. Director Park, how annoying, making us wait like this. Hearing this, Nana turned her head, her face in constant shock. The girl approached, still provocatively dressed, truly stunning. However, she was no match for Jin Gu's harem. Director Park, how annoying, making us wait like this. The girl walked over and hugged Jin Gu's hand, pressing against him. You agreed with me before, that in the world of handbags, there are three style archetypes. The world of three archetypes just released its spring collection. Did you buy it for me? Jin Gu had never experienced this scene, so he was constantly bewildered. It was strange, yet he quite liked it. Nan angrily retorted, How can Jin Gu have so much money? He can't even afford a few thousand yuan for cosmetics. Clearly, Nana was mocking Jin Gu for being poor. The girl, upon hearing this, glanced over and said, Ha ha, with just her face. Director O should spend money. Hearing that, Nana became even more furious. Jin Gu, by now, had noticed the situation, and Kim Taeyong stood in a corner sipping milk, observing the scene. Later on, he winked, so Jin Gu understood. These two were called by Kim Taeyong to help him. Now Jin Gu also realized and spoke up. Originally, I was inspecting the operation of the shopping center, but it seems like this man here, with a face resembling a pig, is affecting my inspection experience. He even claimed to be a VIP customer or something. Upon hearing this, the chubby guy tightened his grip, his face darkened, and he seemed frightened. Park Young Woo approached, raising his voice to scold. You fool, claiming to be a VIP customer of my shopping center is truly demeaning. Call the manager here, revoke his VIP membership, compensate him two million for canceling the contract, and tell him to leave. Hearing Park Young Woo's words, the security guard stepped forward and nodded. Yes, young Master Park. The chubby guy was bewildered. What? He accidentally bumped into Nana, causing her to stumble. He quickly approached to apologize to Jin Gu, realizing that offending young Master Park for the sake of this woman would harm his business relationship with him in the construction material field. Director O, young Master Park misunderstood. Misunderstood. I truly didn't know. Director O, I apologize. Please consider my words as if they were nonsense. Jin Gu and Park Young Woo shared a sinister, triumphant smile. They told me to smell something foul, huh? 
Jin Gu remarked. All right, director, I'll remember their faces. Put them on the blacklist, permanently banned from entering Gapinong Square. These two were currently like insignificant ants facing authority. Nana clasped her hands, tearfully pleading, Jin Gu, please. The chubby guy also trembled, his whole body shivering. Jin Gu looked down. Take care of your health, sir. At your age, a fall might be hard to recover from. Nana panicked. What should we do now? Ryo. Hearing this, the chubby guy turned away. In the construction material industry, my name carries some weight even in Seoul. Just one Park Yong Wu won't make or break my business. Suddenly, dozens of luxury cars arrived at the square. People disembarked, laughing and joking. Not bad, Dong Yoon. You're not inferior to Miss Yang. Don't compete with me. Seeing this scene, the two frightened individuals might have wet their pants. These people are all from the top wealthy families in Seoul. Why have they all come here? Everyone rushed to greet Jin Gu, and the girl behind asked, Is this Mr. O, the young master? I've already heard about Mr. Park. How could you occupy such a good place on your own? Next time, you must give the opportunity to me. Helping Director Jun is an honor for me. Today's events are mainly because of these people, and he dared to defy them. The gaze of these people on the chubby guy was incredibly terrifying. With a touch of coldness, clearly the demeanor of the wealthy, the chubby guy, seeing this scene, was like being struck by lightning, terrified. Tears, snot and saliva all gushed out, looking a bit messy. It's over, I'm completely finished, he muttered to himself. Jin Gu and his friend gathered after the stage drama, clasping hands. Jin Gu sincerely expressed his gratitude. Thank you. His friend, with a nonchalant demeanor, replied, Why thank each other? The most important thing is this bit of accumulated anger. At this point, Jin Gu was perplexed. How do you know so many wealthy friends? Hearing this, his friend quickly justified, Oh, those people are hired hands. Their scope of work is extensive, including being extras in films. Jin Gu just uttered two O oh sounds, unexpectedly believing this person's seemingly simple nature. The two bid farewell, and Jin Gu walked away. So I'll head back to the university first. Do you need me to bring you some packed lunch from the canteen in the evening? Okay, okay, just remember. No duck neck added. The wealthy onlookers were astonished by this scene. This is Director John, truly modest and enigmatic. What is Director John up to? Managing so much, there must be a hidden agenda. At this moment, another beautiful girl appeared. She looked stunning and her soul was equally round and wealthy. Many girls looked at him. Who is this? Approaching the group, he cheerfully invited everyone. Thank you all for intervening and helping out. I invite you to enjoy some spicy hot pot. Hearing this, the others were surprised but still agreed. Thank you, Director Jun. Spicy hot pot sounds great. Park Young Woo approached and draped his arm over him, laughing. Ha ha ha. Director Jun knows how to joke. Let's go to my bar. It's on the seventh floor of the shopping center. Hearing this, the group became cheerful. That settles it. We must let Director Jun treat us. Right, Director Jun. He reluctantly agreed, certainly, but inside, he couldn't help feeling the pinch. I'd never been to a high end bar. Hope it won't be too expensive. At the Gapyong Square, everyone gathered in a VIP bar. Someone spoke up. Last night, Director Jun, within a day, the registration numbers on various streamer platforms surpassed the total for the first quarter. Compared to Director Jun, I feel like I'm just a poor soul. This person was clearly joking. And everyone laughed. I suspect Director Jun is the heir to some hidden mega fortune in the capital. In any case, we're hitching a ride on this gravy train. The boss turned to the girl and asked, Yang Yang, why aren't you saying anything and just sipping your wine? Glancing at the girl, the boss continued, it's not that I don't want to help you, but your project is burning money excessively. No, it's not just burning money. It's causing chaos. It's a difficult problem. Even the domestic tech giant Qs can't solve it. Relying on your small company, which has been established for less than a year, how can it possibly handle this? In my opinion, you don't need to struggle to start your own business. None of us are short of money. Either bow down to your father or roll with Director Jun. Join the big leagues and that's where the real money is. Later on, you can just lie down and live comfortably. Travel more, buy more handbags if you like. 
Hearing this, Yang Yang slammed her glass onto the table with a sharp sound. In Yang Pyongyun's dictionary, there are no two words. Give up. She stood up and walked towards him. Fine. My longtime friends are all afraid of my father, unwilling to lend me money. So, I can only turn to Director Jun. Yang Yang's personality is resilient like that. But even for Director Jun, when he finds out about the imaginative venture she's involved in, he won't be willing to invest. Isn't that right? She's bound to be disappointed. People now surrounded him, raising their glasses. Director Jun, the big hot nightclub is mine. Every night features spectacular performances, especially in the VIP section. It's an experience you'll surely never forget. Sincerely invite you to come and enjoy it. The nightclub is too noisy. My private yacht hosts luxurious parties, which are the ultimate indulgence. Can I send the car to pick you up tomorrow? Director John, are you interested in gambling? I have an extremely thrilling casino. The atmosphere around him was lively, energetic, and bustling. But he paid no attention to any of it. He felt heartbroken. It all sounds very interesting, but I still prefer spending money. Players are real spenders. Yang Yang approached him. Director Jin likes spending money. Well, that's perfect. He looked up at her voice, and Yang Yang came even closer, placing her hand on him. Could you invest in me? People behind were puzzled. Yang Pion Yun is starting mischief again. Didn't Director Jun give her more than a hundred million in the previous group? How did she spend it so quickly? Director Jun, don't listen to this girl. She's involved in something beyond imagination. Whoever gets involved will suffer losses. Hearing this, Yang Yang got angry, punched the guy who said, suffer losses out. Shut up, you. The others saw this and immediately kept silent, not daring to say anything. He asked now, are you Yang Yun from the group? What do you need me to spend money on? The system then chimed in. Upon inspection, the girl is of high beauty value, initiating a mischievous task. The girl's name is Yang Pion Yun. Yang Yun smiled, age 25, height 172 centimeters, weight 49 kilograms, affinity with the host is 10%. Seeing the initial high affinity, he was delighted. Wow, a beautiful girl and a chance to make money come knocking. Can't miss this opportunity. Yang Yang now began to outline her plan. I'm in the semiconductor industry. People immediately intervened. Delusion, pure delusion. Director Jun, did you hear that? She's clearly dreaming. He didn't know what to say at this point. People were causing a commotion. But Yang Yang continued, I affirm my position. There's nothing delusional about it. In academic theory, this is grounded. My company has been researching for over a year. Currently, the project only lacks a small unresolved technical issue. The guy who was punched earlier still managed to speak. What small technical issue? If you can solve this technical problem, you might as well have won the Nobel Prize. Do you find it reasonable? You burned a few billion, right? Yang Yang angrily tied the guy's hands and feet and didn't spare his mouth. She then kicked him, sending him rolling like a soccer ball, saying, Get lost. Approaching him, Yang Yang intentionally seduced him, saying, So, does Director John want to invest, or does he want to join the others in ridiculing me? He couldn't find a reason to reject a money-making opportunity, so he happily responded, The semiconductor industry is promising, and the United States always puts pressure on our country in terms of science and technology. If this chip project can be successfully researched, our country will have more capital to compete with the United States. I'll invest in this project. Hearing his decision, everyone was extremely puzzled. Investing? Everyone is acting crazy. Even Yang Yang, proposing the project, was skeptical. You agree just like that. Don't you want to investigate my company? There's a possibility that this startup project, with the investment amount, might turn out to be an unrecoverable investment. He took out his phone, looked at Yang Yang, and expressed his trust. No need to investigate. I'll transfer the money to you first, and when you're done spending the initial 500 million, come find me. Even if the research doesn't pan out, it's okay. We're not here to support startups, and for some reason. I feel that Yang Yang is someone worth trusting. Despite many people here, she's the only one discussing business with me. That's why. Hearing this, Yang Yang was extremely moved, not knowing what to exclaim. She looked at her phone, which had received 500 million. He really did it. Blushing, Yang Yang turned back to look at him. He truly believes I can do it. 
his favorability increased by another 20%, and he comfortably sat, sipping his drink. People were shocked and exclaimed, My goodness, no wonder he's Director Jun. A wealthy person indeed dares to spend money whimsically. This is 500 million, and it could all be gone in an instant. Could it be that Director Jun looked at Yang Yang and used a fortune to buy her smile? With everything settled, he hurriedly excused himself to avoid paying. Not forgetting to bid everyone farewell, he said, I suddenly remembered there's another important matter. We'll continue the conversation next time. Despite that, he encouraged Yang Yang. Keep it up, Yang Yang. Someone among them was bewildered. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Director John, please go ahead. Yang Yang, having received the money, still couldn't believe her eyes. Her heart pounded, and it seemed there was a bit of a tension. As the waiter came over, she said, Tonight's bill is 330000 Who's paying? Isn't Director Jun treating us? Director Jun left. Before finishing the sentence, he was already swarmed by the others. Hitting him playfully, pay attention to your words. Kid. Director Jun casually throws out a few hundred million. How could he escape without paying? Just because a few hundred thousand is too little, Director Jun forgot about it. That's right. That's right. But the truth is not as everyone thinks. He's really running away to avoid paying, because this 330000 is indeed too expensive. His running posture is also truly ugly. It's so expensive. I don't have money. Whoever invited guests is the one who should pay, like a dog. Today seems to be a bit of a bad day. In front of a seemingly nice house, suddenly, a plump buttock appears, bouncing lively. Yang Yang, who is cycling on her machine, has a very alluring figure and an overly plump buttock. While exercising, she's also talking on the phone. On the other end, the conversation goes, so you really pulled off the investment just based on one sentence. Well, until now, I still can't believe it. How could he believe he has a system that can redo things? The person Yang Yang is calling is G1, the girl rated by the system as having the highest facial value. He really is a very different person. G1, on the other end, is sitting and reading a book. Whatever it is, congratulations. The biggest issue in your career has been solved, the initial investment. Yang Yang agrees. Yes, that's right. But deep in her eyes, there's still a hint of something called sorrow. She recalls the argument with her father. Dad didn't even let me finish speaking. How could he deny it? Her father is adamant. I basically don't need you to start a business. Moreover, doing something beyond imagination like this, the family's intellectual industry is so great. Why can't you just take over the family business? Your dad's car will be closed for a while, preventing you from doing miscellaneous things. Yang Yang still remembers that she had begged everyone she knew, but no one agreed. Uncles, aunts, and everyone. Yang Yang, your dad has explained it to everyone. Tell them what you need to do like this. Be obedient at home is enough. You're just a girl. It's better to marry someone early. These people are really too conservative. What era is this? It's the 21st century, and there are still people with such thoughts. It's truly unfair to women with ambition and determination. Yang Yang clenches her fists tightly. In my heart, I am determined to succeed. Ji Wan also believes in her, saying, I believe in you. Yang Yang continues, While I'm busy talking about myself, Ji Wan, how was your high school reunion? Ji Wan, still reading while responding, has a smile on her face. Originally, it was just a normal class reunion. But unexpectedly, there was someone who surprised me. His knowledge is on par with our teacher. Hearing this, Yang Yang imagines the man G1 was interested in G1, and yet you are interested in a man. The sun has risen in the west. That young man must look extraordinary. Jai Wan teasingly turns the conversation back to Yang Yang. Isn't it that you're also interested in a man? The one who trusted you unconditionally and spent a lot of money on you. Yang Yang denies. Who said I'm interested? That's ridiculous. While she's on the phone, a woman enters the room, saying, Kim Ji Won, it's time to go. Hearing this, Jai Won just responds with an indifferent hymn. The woman is Ji Won's mother, who reminds her once again, Kim Ji Won, mom wants to remind you that Mr. Jong represents the Jong family, a future shareholder in our museum. So you should be a bit friendly with him, understand? Ji Won, with a resigned expression, replies, yes, the sky today is truly beautiful, and the city appears dreamlike.
you open the dormitory door and step inside. A voice calling out, Kim Taehyung. Jae Suk is lying on the bed with a high fever of 40 degrees. It seems like he's on the verge of death with such a temperature. Concerned, you ask, Jae Suk, what's wrong with you? Exhausted, Jae Suk replies, I have a fever. Can you cover for me at work for a day? I'll pay you for the day's salary. You encourage him and head to the wardrobe to get dressed, saying, No problem. You rest, and the work uniform is in here, right? Jae Suk agrees, Yes. While changing, you refuse the money, saying, It's okay. You keep the money for yourself. I'm just helping out. Consider it a favor from your big brother. Dressed in the work uniform, you can't help but feel it looks good on you. Despite being work clothes, they seem particularly attractive on your figure. Thoughts run through your mind. Jae Suk takes on extra shifts at the Yongsan Museum, working three nights a week. When Jin Gu and Ta He, the two kids, are scared of the dark, Jae Suk will ask me to cover for him when he can't make it to work. What the heck? Why are boys scared of the dark? The dark is solid. It looks healthy. Can someone explain to me why boys are afraid of the dark? As you leave for work, you can't resist teasing your sick friend lying in bed. I'm off to work. You stay here. Don't go anywhere. Jay Suk, in frustration, retorts, Just go. At the Youngsen Museum, you sit at the cashiered counter. Working, fingers busy on the phone, eyes focused on the screen. It's a leisurely afternoon, and the museum isn't crowded today, probably due to maintaining the school. However, it's an opportunity to send some money to female streamers. While scrolling through your phone, a voice from the device rings, Director Jun is here again. Thanks for the gift. Director Jun, I love you. Outside the museum entrance, a car pulls up, and an older man steps out, accompanied by a secretary. He seems like a director or president of some company. The museum manager greets him enthusiastically. Hello, Mr. Jung. Director Song and the others have been waiting upstairs for a long time. What's with that face, calling him Mr. when he looks like an old man? The man smiles. Lead the way. Apparently, he's quite influential, not letting anyone go unnoticed. Just wait. There will always be someone more prominent to deal with him. The two of them enter the museum. You sit at the cash register, uninterested, still pressing on the phone. Suddenly, the man raises his voice. Hey! The manager startles, not understanding what's happening. Seemingly, the man has noticed you. You guys hired a blind person to work? Doesn't even know how to stand up and greet when someone arrives. Indeed, a man who loves attention. You hear the loud shout and turn to see what's going on. Your face shows a bit of surprise. You quickly stand up, flustered, scratching your head. Sorry, sorry. Welcome. The manager is a bit clumsy, too shy. Mr. Jung, he's a part-time student worker. The secretary sneered condescendingly. Look at that pitiful appearance, student. I'm afraid his lifelong career is nothing more than being a security guard, just a lowly secretary daring to speak up like this. It's true that people are a reflection of their bosses. The old man chuckled. Hey, sorry, no offense. Did your school not teach you to bow 90 degrees? Truly an arrogant person. Just by looking at him, you can tell he's a parasite. Wealthy only because of his family. Just a leech. How can someone with such a character build a successful career? Refusing to yield, the student closed his eyes and resisted the pressure. My school taught me not to look down on others, sir. Ha ha ha, I like that a lot. Enraged, the man pointed straight at him, incessantly cursing. You dare to lecture me. A poor guy whose barking mouth can't even spew out an elephant's tusks. Starting from tomorrow, I don't want to see him anymore. The manager beside him, panicked, hurriedly advised, you should shut up, but young Master Jung still needs personnel. Ignoring the advice, he insisted on following the decisions of those with money, thinking his arrogance was justified. He was so furious that his eyes turned red, wanting to pop out, shut up. Principal Song has to listen to me. What is he? Immediately fire him for me. After he finished speaking, he left. The manager invited him to climb the stairs. You were right, Master Jung. Please come this way. Principal Song is still waiting for you. He looked along, unable to believe his eyes, mouth agape. I won't let Jay Suck lose his part-time job. Wait a minute, Principal Song. The museum won't be opened by Song Haikyuu, will it? You should quickly go find her and talk. 
in the exhibition room filled with various ancient artifacts. He marveled at their antiquity. Ji Wan's parents happily approached the unfortunate man. Welcome, Master Zhang. He shook hands with Ji Wan's father, Uncle Guy. Master Zhang has agreed to contribute to the cultural relics. The Song family is very impressed. Ji Wan's father called her over. Ji Wan, take Master Zhang to tour the museum. Ji Wan, upon hearing her father's request, agreed. Yes. Her father glanced at her, not forgetting to advise. Master Zhang's investment is crucial. This time, you must pay attention. Jai Wan walked ahead to guide him, her face expressionless. Master Zhang, please come this way. Let me introduce you to the treasures of the museum. He looked around sure. Approaching the calligraphy painting, Jai Wan explained, This is the only surviving calligraphy painting from the Tang Dynasty, with over 200 characters. It depicts the heartbreaking emotions of parting with a friend. When it comes to ancient art, Jai Wan couldn't help but smile. She looked exceptionally beautiful at this moment, a beauty that words struggled to describe. Carefully appreciate this calligraphy painting. You can even feel the poet's emotions as he wrote this poem, from within the strokes of the calligraphy of the literary master. As Jie Wan was speaking, this master Zhang seemed to be stirred up inside, placing his hand on her shoulder as if wanting to embrace her. So beautiful. Jie Wan, repulsed, quickly brushed his hand away. What are you doing? Truly a lascivious person, both ugly and old, and still lustful, absolutely soulless. This guy is putting on a facade like this. I apologize. Kim Ji Won, your beauty just now was too overwhelming. I couldn't control my emotions. Jai Won angrily shouted, I noticed earlier that you had no interest in these cultural relics at all. Why do you still want to invest in the museum? The despicable man smirked sinisterly. Ha ha ha, as long as I can make money, that's enough. Why bother having an interest? Jai Won scolded. Just a little understanding would reveal that these cultural relics cannot be measured by money alone. My father, despite being wealthy, wouldn't invest in someone like you. The wretched man put on a lecherous expression, as if he wanted to devour G1 alive. Looking at his face, one might just want to punch him a few times. Ha ha ha, Miss Song, do you live in a fairy tale world? But it's because of that, you have a kind of aura that other girls don't have. I really like it. At this moment, Ji Wan's father arrived. The despicable man turned around, pretending to be sophisticated. All right, let me show Miss Song what the real world is like. Uncle Jia here is a bit dissatisfied with this museum, but I'll use 600 million to buy it, on the condition that Song Haikyo has to marry me. This vile man clearly was a toad wanting to eat swan meat, a jasmine stuck in a buffalo dung field with painted lips. Ji Wan's parents were surprised to hear this. Master Zhang, this matter. G1, standing behind him, furious, dream on. There's no way I'll marry you. G1 looked at her parents. Mom, Dad, call security. G1's father stood as if rooted to the ground. But 600 million? G1's mother called her husband. Uncle Jai, is this old man trying to sell our daughter for money? If that's the case, then, despite his education, he's just a contemptible person. G1's father looked at her. J1, the situation has come to this today, and I can only tell you the truth. With two consecutive years of losses, the Yongsen Museum can no longer continue its operations, standing on the brink of bankruptcy. This time, Master Zhang is not here to invest, but to buy. Hearing this, J1 was shocked. What? The vile man stood behind G1, interjecting, I know you've been looking for many investors and buyers. I am the last hope, right? Don't worry, young lady. Marry me, and her future days will be better. Jai Wan approached her mother. Mom, are you really going to sell your daughter like this? Ji Wan's mother tightly held her hands, apologetic and pained. Ji Wan, I'm a useless mother, but I'll leave the decision to you. Ji Wan's father bowed. Ji Wan, I don't want to casually marry you off either. But if we don't sell the museum to Master Zhang, we will go bankrupt. Most of these cultural relics will be in the hands of merchants and buyers will force the price down, or they will end up in the black market. Most importantly, you and us will suffer. Jai Wan stood amidst the thousands of cultural relics being sold, screaming in her heart, No, I don't want this. Recalling her childhood, Ji Wan's father carried her to see cultural relics. Oh, daddy, these relics are so beautiful. 
Our Jai Wan is truly talented. Even at a young age, she appreciates them. Each relic embodies the blood, sweat, and soul of the artisans. Though these artifacts are categorized, they should be priceless. Young Ji Wan, gazing at the artifacts, could imagine the images of the artisans crafting them. I can see the artist who created these relics. Last month, I bought an impressive style artwork, resold it, and made 600,000. Last year, I bought a jade bracelet for a few thousand in the black market. Its price has now inflated to several hundred thousand. Hearing this, Jai Wan felt extreme disgust. These wealthy people have no respect for cultural relics at all. Their mouths are filled with nothing but making money. As Jia Wan grew older, men pursuing her were always fixated on money. Kim Ji Wan, this Chanel perfume costs $5,000. I think only it can match your aura. Kim Ji Wan, do you sit in a luxury car worth $200,000? Jai Wan was repulsed, but didn't show it. They believed that with money, they could obtain everything. However, there were many things in the world that money couldn't buy. Ji Wan's face darkened. I've always believed that. When faced with money, people are always very small. Ji Wan too. But all of this becomes insignificant when confronted with reality. The despicable man stood in front of the painting, arms wide open. Rest assured, Kim Ji Wan. After we get married, I will definitely treat you well. Just give me a son, and I'll buy another museum for you. All right? Who would want to have a child with someone like him? Ji Wan looked at the artifacts. For it. For everything in the museum. Her face darkened, unwillingly agreeing, I understand. Hearing Ji Wan's firm words, her father was delighted. Ji Wan, my good daughter, now go sign the contract. Her mother, crying while covering her face, worried about her daughter's future. Everyone gathered to sign the contract, the manager acting as a witness. After both parties sign this contract, it will immediately take effect in the eyes of the law and cannot be changed at will. Ji Wan's father spoke up. Master Zhang is very generous, having no objections to the terms of this contract. Ji Wan, marrying him, will surely be very happy. Ji Wan's parents, one pushing, one pulling, clearly couldn't bear a difficult life, wanting to sell their daughter for a comfortable old age. Come on, good daughter, quickly sign. This wretched man had an extremely lecherous expression, licking his lips while looking at the girl, giving off a creepy vibe. Jai Wan held the pen in her hand, her small hands trembling incessantly. Looking at the pen, tears welled up in Ji Wan's eyes. She truly wanted to cry. Suddenly, at this moment, the door opened, and a charming and debonair figure walked in. Heard someone wants to buy a museum. He swaggered in. Heard someone wants to buy the museum. Upon hearing this, Master Zhang was astonished. Ji Wan looked at him with disdain. Kim Taehyung. Master Zhang, furious, pointed straight at him. It's you again, the pathetic poor guy. Security, where is security? Drive this poor wretch out for me. The manager spoke up, Master Zhang. He is the security guard, the night shift staff of the museum, and he is the only one on duty. Hearing this, Master Zhang was startled. Indeed, he was out of his depth. Now, he was the one in hot water. Master Zhang raised his leg, intending to kick him. But who did this guy think he was? Did he think he was an easy target? Just like that, a slap from him landed on Master Zhang's face. The force was so strong that blood sprayed from his mouth, and two teeth were dislodged from his jaw, probably quite infuriated but unable to do anything. The result afterward, he slumped his head down onto the floor. Was he trying to play dead in this position? Right, everyone. After being beaten, Master Zhang still wouldn't shut up, but he liked to say, You insolent brat, dare to hit me. I have to kill you. I'll sue you, and you'll go to jail. He walked past Ji Wan's mother, going straight to her. Ji Wan looked at him, tears still falling. You. He approached and gently touched Ji Wan's face, wiping away the tears. Looking at him now, he was incredibly gentle. Ji Wan was startled, only now reacting and blushing with embarrassment. Ji Wan's parents were puzzled. Ji Wan, do you know this person? Upon hearing that, Ji Wan introduced. His name is Kim Taehyung, my high school friend. Ji Wan's father wondered, a high school friend? At his age, he should focus on studying, not drop out to become a security guard. Understand? It's also because you don't understand the situation that I won't hold you accountable. 
Go and apologize to Master Zhong and compensate him. Hearing his words, he didn't bother to care, just flipping through the contract. What right does someone selling their daughter have to lecture you? Suddenly, he tore the contract in his hand. The three were shocked, gaping, the contract. Jay Wan's father rushed over, looking at the papers on the ground, tears in his eyes, blaming him. What have you done? He looked down, and the old man spoke up. I'll pay a billion to buy this museum. Hearing this, he was astonished, unable to believe his eyes. Master Zhong mocked him. Stop dreaming, how can a poor security guard come up with a billion? If you can, I'll eat shit right here. Keep your word. He uncomfortably waved his hand. Okay, okay, you won the bet. No need to eat shit. I won't believe you guys anymore. Ji Wan's mother asked her daughter quietly, Ji Wan, is this classmate of yours very wealthy? Jai Wan didn't know how to answer, I'm not sure. Angry, Master Zhang took out his phone and called, Su Hyun, there's a troublemaker causing a scene in the Yongzhen Museum. Bring some people here. Immediately, Jai Wan looked at him with confusion. Kim Tae Young, what are you trying to do? You shouldn't have come here. Jai Wan's father was startled upon hearing Master Zhang's words. He grabbed Tae Young. Let's make it clear. It's obvious that Tae Young is here because of G1. I won't beat around the bush. If you can ensure you can come up with a billion, the initial amount not less than 500 million, then both Yong's Museum and G1 will be yours. Upon hearing this, Master Zhang angrily shouted, Song Chong Wook. This despicable old man hadn't finished speaking yet, but if Tae Young can't come up with a billion, then I'll follow the original plan. Master Zhang only needs to provide 600 million the initial amount not less than a hundred million, and everything will belong to him. Hearing this, Jai Wan sadly lowered her head. It seemed that her father's words had truly deeply hurt her. Consider it as if he still has some sense. This old man evidently just wanted to sell his daughter to secure a comfortable life. The manager handed the contract to Ta Young, saying, Master Ta Young, this is the new contract. Apart from changing the names and the amount, the content is no different from the previous one. Tae Young accepted it and carefully examined the contract. Although the document was meticulously written, in reality, it boiled down to three words, sell his daughter. Master Zhang angrily shouted a threat, let me make it clear to you. Don't think that just by speaking a few words, you can leave without the money. My people are coming. And when they arrive, unless you want a few broken bones, you better not resist. Reading this part, I noticed the broken teeth of this guy. Ha ha ha, it's true that karma arrives early. Tae held the contract, read it thoroughly, and his eyebrows furrowed, appearing quite uncomfortable, feeling uneasy. It's strangely bothersome. What's wrong with me? Could it be that you really like someone else's daughter? Looking at the ancient painting hanging on the wall, the gloomy atmosphere, the artistic vitality frozen, he turned to Ji Wan, who was still standing silently behind, not saying a word. In formal attire, he approached and touched the calligraphy painting, saying, This is the charm of literary works. The four people witnessing this were all astonished. He tossed the contract forcefully, exclaiming, I want to amend the contract. He walked up to the man with glasses, saying, I'll speak, and you write. The manager waved his hand, Young, this matter, the contract cannot be amended just because you say so. Jewan's father spoke up. Don't even think about amending the price, not a single penny less. He pointed with his finger at the literary works behind him. A billion is only the price for buying the museum, not including these literary works. His words truly shocked everyone. They all shouted, what? He explained, this calligraphy painting and the literary works in the museum are invaluable. You cannot measure them with money. Therefore, these literary works still belong to the Song family. Hearing this, Jai Wan couldn't believe her eyes. Her heart seemed to miss a beat. He approached Ji Wan as if wanting to protect her. Song Hai Kyo respects and loves these literary works. So the right to use and manage the literary works of the museum is entrusted to Song Hai Kyo. As for me, I am the majority owner with absolute decision-making power. Song Hai Kyo is the owner of the Yongzhen Museum and the contract is signed in her name. The two of them faced each other. He looked at G1 and said, In the future, if the museum needs money, just call me. Whatever problems you encounter, you can always find me. Hearing this, Jai Wan blushed involuntarily. 
His words sounded like a confession. Her favorability towards him increased by an additional 20%, and he swiped the card without hesitation. This elegant style was truly not something everyone could achieve. Transaction completed. One billion. The three people, upon hearing the notification from the machine, held their heads, unable to believe their eyes. Paid. Paid in full. Only now did young Master Zhang feel bewildered, trembling all over. To be able to withdraw a billion in an instant. How terrifying is his wealth? It seemed that he only now understood the fear. Indeed, using money was the only way to deal with those who had money. Jai Wan looked at him puzzled, as if probing. Why did you do that? The manager still couldn't believe his eyes. One. 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 One billion. He turned around, smiling at Ji Wan. Ji Wan, do you remember? I once said I would collect all the literary works scattered outside the country. These literary works belong to the people of the nation, not commodities for traders to buy and sell at will. Young Master Zhang slammed the table. You just bought the Yongzhen Museum. Don't act in front of me. All the items stored in this museum, combined, aren't worth 500 million. Yet you dare to boast about wanting to collect all literary works in the world. If you have the guts, participate in the auction in the neighboring country next month. It seems that young Master Zhang is clearly trying to challenge his wealth. Countless lost treasures of the Hua Nation, sculptures of the Avala Kechvera, all appear there, each worth more than a billion. If you really have the money, then go there, don't just show off here. He smirked, glancing at him. Sure, just wait there. Whoever doesn't go is the loser. Young Master Zhang and his secretary hurriedly left, like dogs with their tails between their legs. Let's go. Young Master Zhang and the secretary stepped out of the gate. The secretary asked, Young Master Zhang, do we need to deal with him anymore? At this point, the gang he called had already rushed to the gate. Hearing the secretary's question, he felt the urge to pee. Deal with what? No need to bother. Just retreat. You can casually take out a billion, and I, Zhang An, admit defeat. But before he could finish his thoughts, his phone rang. He picked up the phone. Zhang He. Has the purchase of the museum through our intermediary been successfully completed? This is the first step in Kameda Conglomerate's plan to gather East Asian artifacts. It cannot afford to fail. Upon hearing this, young Master Zhang hastily apologized. Mr. Kameda, I'm truly sorry. Everything was going smoothly. Just when success was imminent, a brat from this Hua nation suddenly appeared and snatched the purchase of the museum. On the other end, a man as fat as a pig was on the line. But rest assured, I've successfully arranged for him to participate in the upcoming auction. By then, you will have the chance to make him submit and apologize. Hearing this, the plump man was delighted. Ha ha ha, quite interesting. Your Hua Nation has a saying, a true dragon is not afraid of fire. What belongs to oneself will remain so until the end. In his room, despite the hundreds of artifacts, young Master Zhang clenched his fist. When the time comes, I'll also be on the scene to witness Mr. Kamita's demeanor. But as the saying goes, a true dragon is not afraid of fire. Speaking too soon can be quite amusing. At this moment, the contract signing in the museum had been completed. Now, Young, as the sole and largest shareholder of the Yongzhen Museum, held the power. Ji Wan's parents, one speaking, the other acting, even pushed Ji Wan forward. Thank you, Young for saving our Song family from this disaster. Thank you, thank you. Taeyong, our family invites you to a dinner at the Grand Hotel. Ji Wan will personally treat you to a few drinks. He looked at their faces with great disgust and turned away. No need for that. I still have a night shift. You all go ahead and enjoy your meal. Jai Wan's parents were in shock, unable to believe their eyes. Taeyong. Jai Wan cheerfully smiled, her favorability rising by 10%. Buying a smile like hers with money worked like a charm. Following behind, she said, Kim Tae Young, do you really want to go to the neighboring country next month? He turned around to answer, Of course, I'm the type who enjoys joking around. G1, incredibly happy and beautiful, said, Can I go with you when the time comes? He laughed and replied, Of course, you're welcome. No need to ask. The sky was clear, the sun gently radiating warmth. He'd had just woken up in class but couldn't resist a few yawns. Last night, he had worked the night shift at the museum and talked with Song Haikyo until midnight, feeling good, yet still complaining. 
People want what they can't have, he mused to himself. Recalling the previous night, after chatting for a while, Jai Wan unintentionally fell asleep on the chair. She looked quite blurry when sleeping. He could see this and couldn't help but laugh. Ji Wan, not paying attention, overslept, making him sit awkwardly for another two hours. Despite being dead tired, his eyes now carried dark circles, and the occasional yawns persisted. As he entered the classroom, two girls hurriedly approached. Shin Hai, with a concerned expression, asked, Kim Taehyung, what happened? Did you lose sleep last night? Jisoo, also worried, but not forgetting to flaunt her assets, said, Kim Taehyung, drawing the attention of the boys outside who were snacking on melon seeds. What's going on that you've come prepared to eat melon seeds? Shin Hai came over to touch his face, nestled within his embrace. Lack of sleep is not good. Or would you rather skip class and rest at my place for a while? His gaze at Shin Hai was affectionate, and Jisoo quickly approached, stealing one of his arms. Park Shin Hai, don't make such useless suggestions, can you? Of course, attending class is more important. Kim Taehyung, a little later in class, I'll sit next to you. He glanced at her with a bit of disdain. Jisoo appeared to be acting cute, her cheeks blushing. You can rest your head on my lap. This way, you can both study and relax. He frowned in discomfort. Why are you here? Didn't I say? Before he could finish, Jisoo hastily cut in. I remember, I remember every word you said. Jisoo teared up, but I can't control my feelings. I've fallen completely in love with you. It's not because you have money. I just hope. Mid-sentence, Jisoo pulled out a yellow paper crane and handed it to him. We can start over from the beginning. Looking at the paper crane, this time, I will cherish you to make up for past mistakes. I don't know if these words are truly sincere. If Jisoo loved him before, things wouldn't be like this. Or is it because he has money now that Jisoo loves him, giving her heart to him, causing the crowd to cheer wildly, public confession, accepted. Shin Hai, seeing the crowd like this, was angry. I don't know if this crowd was bought by Jisoo. Looking at Jisoo, her current favorability rating was only 86%, and in her heart, she kept thinking. Before, he made 999 paper cranes for her, only to be thrown away by her. He must have been very sad and concerned about this. Now that she personally makes a paper crane, she can definitely move him. He saw Jisoo's favorability rating, couldn't help but smile. I believe you, you little monkey. Clearly, your favorability rating is 86%, yet you dare say to me that you completely love me. He didn't say a word and turned away. Kim Hin Jisoo definitely wasn't the type of person who would be moved if treated well. If not, she would control many people. Now, wanting to keep me is probably just because she's not willing to accept it. He left Jisoo behind. Jisoo watched him go, saying, Kim Taehyung. Shin Hai, standing beside her, sneered. Two girls who were once close friends were now filled with enmity because of a man. The professor walked in, saying, class is starting. Find your seats, everyone. After class, Students streamed out. As he walked away, two girls clung to him. Shin Hai linked arms with him, her face continually cheerful. Kim Taehyung, my place is very quiet. You can sleep without any disturbance. Jisoo, on the other side, had a sad expression, then pretended to say to Shin Hai, Shin Hai, you're really something. Not mentioning whether Kim Taehyung is your boyfriend or not, but you casually bring a man to your place to sleep. It's not very appropriate. Shin Hai didn't care about this sarcastic remark, turning to lace her fingers, Jisoo, you don't know yet, because my relationship with Kim Tae-yum is not normal, that's why I invited him. Now that he's single and doesn't have a girlfriend, right, you're his ex-girlfriend, aren't you? So relax and entrust Kim Tae-yum to me, I will take good care of him. Right, Kim Tae-yum? He stood in the middle, sweating, watching the two girls argue. The two girls pressed their faces close to each other continuously fighting over him and separating the intimate sisterhood. We're just having a little argument, right? Last time, Kim Taehyung even helped me. He's such a kind person. Even a small wounded cat on the roadside, he will help. But Jisoo, a good horse doesn't eat the grass it has passed. If the ex-girlfriend manages too much, it's not good, right? Thank you, Shin Hai, for your concern. I've also heard a saying, a rabbit doesn't eat the grass near its burrow. If it's all grass, of course, whoever smells the best, it will eat that person. Right. 
That's how the two girls stood in the middle of the road, arguing with each other. People passing by looked at the three of them, constantly gossiping. He stood in the middle, embarrassed and unsure of what to say. He helplessly said, If you two are arguing, don't involve me. I don't want to become famous all over the school because of this. It's really exhausting with so many girls. Suddenly, from a distance, there was a loud noise. A red Ferrari raced towards them like lightning, driving straight through everyone while continuously honking the horn. People quickly stepped aside, and some even fell onto the road. Suddenly, at this moment, he found himself lying on his sister's lap in the car, his face showing confusion about what was happening. It turned out that the driver was Jenny. Jenny looked down and asked him, Kim Taehyung, are you hurt? He looked up, his face puzzled, both cheeks blushing Jenny. He lay there suggesting, Now I'll sit up right away. It turns out that there's enjoyment in misfortune. Jenny quickly restrained him. No need to hurry, just lie down for a while. Hearing these words, he happily pressed his face into Jenny's lap, both smooth and soft. I also want to lie in this position. Thank you for coming just in time, he said. Jenny happily looked down. Can I finally repay the favor this time? He raised three fingers. Of course, so please remember to help me when the time comes. The Ferrari sped away quickly. Jisoo looked after the car. Who is that girl, daring to take Kim Taehyung on the way in front of everyone? The group of male students around discussed animatedly. It seemed that there were both admirers and detractors among them. The car just now looks like the Ferrari LF worth three billion. Who is that girl? Too fast couldn't see clearly. Wasn't Kim Taehyung a single guy before? Why is he back with a sugar mommy now? So jealous, probably a sugar mommy or a rich girl. Jisoo, who normally didn't respond to Shin Hai, now had another person to despise, fueling her resentment. Another one added to the mix. These girls, once they find out Kim Taehyung has money, they all rush over here to snatch him away, despicable. If we go by these words, Jisoo seems to still be after his money. Shin Hai satisfiedly smiled. Before, you didn't care about Kim Taehyung. And now that he's out of reach, any regrets? Too bad, the opportunity is gone. Hearing this, Jisoo was startled, then crossed her arms and questioned Shin Hai. Park Shin Hai, don't be so pleased with yourself. The person who picked up Kim Taehyung is an heiress, much wealthier than both of us combined. If Kim Taehyung finds new happiness, it's hers too. Don't think it's your turn. Shin Hai, hearing these words, didn't care either. Gently smiled while stroking her hair, blushing as she looked at Jisoo. Her hands were placed on her lips. Ha, Kim Taehyung, and I are actually making progress. Those hookers can't compare. Upon hearing this, Jisoo was completely astonished, eyes wide open, with an expression that couldn't believe what she was hearing. You, what are you saying? Jisoo stepped forward grabbing Shin Hai's arm, continuously yelling. What despicable tricks have you used? How far have you developed with Kim Taehyung? Shin Hai smiled. If you want to know, I won't say. Then, Shin Hai turned away, her mouth still laughing sarcastically. Ha ha ha. Jisoo, trailing behind, couldn't stop cursing in her thoughts. This vile person must be talking about me. I don't believe it, but Kim Taehyung is so straightforward. Under such an attack, I don't know how long he can resist. This Jisoo thinks too simplistically. After all, you have to call her Han Haian. Jisoo's high heels trampled on the origami crane. She folded herself. No, I can't be slow like this anymore. Jisoo silently made up her mind, still licking her finger. I am Kim Taehyung's ex-girlfriend, who understands his preferences very well. Kim Taehyung, you can only belong to me. Another 4% added to her favorability and Kim Hin Jisoo's favorability reached 90%. Completing the first phase of the challenge, deducting 800,000 for the challenge to Kim Hin Jisoo. Returning 10%, 800,001 has been transferred to the account. Hearing the system announce this, he sat up in disbelief. What's going on? Kim Hin Jisoo gained favorability through her own efforts? The rewards increased all attributes. Currently, the third level attributes enhance strength, flexibility, and mental acuity. In his heart, he exclaimed, this feeling is truly comfortable. For the reward, choose one of the three skills within the specified time. A level B skill proficient in long distance running, a level B skill proficient in swimming, or a level B skill proficient in machine jumping. The level of this skill is surprisingly low.
Could it be related to the amount of the challenge money? As the overall attributes increase, a powerful and extraordinary feeling can be sensed. Running doesn't need to be chosen this time. Without any hesitation, he immediately selected the skill proficient in swimming. He looked back at his body and noticed a significant transformation. A large amount of knowledge related to swimming instantly appeared in his mind. Moreover, he could feel that the muscles in the abdominal, back, and arm areas had been greatly strengthened. From a certain angle, looking down inside the Ferrari through the lens of a periscope, a man stood on top of a tall building, holding a periscope to observe two people below. But clearly, in reality, he was observing him. A girl approached and called out to the man. The president is about to start the meeting. Just a simple call for a meeting. However, her cheeks kept blushing, apparently harboring feelings for the man. Inside the conference room, there was a lot of buzz. There's big news again. The main characters are still the same three people, Kim Taehyung, Kim Hin Jisoo, and Park Shin Hai, creating another battlefield. This time, a white knight suddenly appeared to rescue the male lead. What an extraordinary turn of events. Too bad, I'm not on the scene. The president gritted his teeth, harboring constant resentment. It's this Kim Taehyung again. It seems he has succeeded, gaining a new opponent without even realizing it. The meeting began. Yonsei University has always been known for its excellent academic atmosphere and good campus life. However, just now, a male student and two female students caused chaos in the school, complicating the relationships. Moreover, they are acquainted with people outside the social circle, driving at high speed within the school, making everyone in the school aware. The president spoke up, Student Gu, it seems these people are from your liberal arts department, right? Hearing this, the bespectacled boy sitting froze in shock. Yes, yes, that's right. The young man's name is Kim Taehyung, and the girl's name is... The president grinned slyly. The previous president always prays you in front of me, saying that Gu is very serious and responsible in the liberal arts department, trustworthy in handling tasks. So I have very high expectations for you. Hearing that, the young man immediately stood up, bowing repeatedly. Thank you, Mr. President. For your praise. Kim Taehyung's behavior is indeed out of line, and I will discipline him immediately. The president smirked, his eyes continuously mocking. There's no need to go that far. Our student council serves the entire student body. As long as he sincerely reforms and doesn't repeat the offense, our purpose is achieved, isn't it? The young man shouted loudly, You're absolutely right. I'll get to work right away. The next afternoon at the swimming pool, People were bustling around, swimming, applause resounding, laughter filling the air, loud cheers have come on. He and Yi Jin walked to the pool, holding a floor cleaning brush in his hand. Yi Jin complained, the student council is too much. Not only did they give you a warning, but they also made you clean the pool for an entire semester. He turned and smiled at the girls behind him. It's okay, my friend drove too fast in the school, indeed violating the school rules. But as he looked inside the pool, this punishment wasn't bad at all. The pool was full of beautiful girls, laughing and playing, all of them soaking wet, really quite a sight. This punishment wasn't too bad after all. Yi Jin exclaimed, Wow, there are so many beautiful girls in swimsuits. Amidst the scorching summer weather, many girls headed to the school pool to swim and cool off. As for the young men at the pool, it's safe to say they were mostly there to admire the girls. A girl with pink hair was wearing the school swimsuit for easy movement, radiating youthfulness. The girl behind her admired her voluptuous figure and couldn't help but exclaim, Jin, your physique is truly beautiful. However, she couldn't resist touching Jin Gu's body and feeling annoyed. Jin Gu sighed, don't touch randomly. The girl pulled Jin Gu aside and whispered in her ear, there's a guy over there looking at Jin Gu with deep affection captivated by M. Jin. Look at Song Kang. He keeps staring at you. He has been pursuing you for a long time, hasn't he? Jin Gu had an innocent expression, not understanding what the girl was talking about. So what? She asked. Hearing that, the girl exclaimed, Jin, your gaze is high. Finally understanding what kind of guy you are only by looking at you. Hearing this, Jin Gu replied sincerely with a typical boy's attitude. Swim faster than me. Any of you brothers who can swim faster than Jin Gu, step up and claim your prize or else Kim Taehyung might snatch her away. The girl couldn't help but exclaim, What? How is that possible? You're a national-level athlete 
competing at the provincial level. In our school, who can swim faster than you? You're not trying to find an excuse, are you? At this point, any challengers out there? Is there anyone confident enough to swim faster than Jin Gu? He's diligently scrubbing the floor with a brush, while two girls under the pool gossip, saying, that's Kim Taehyung. The other girl who didn't know Kim Taehyung asked, and her friend explained, a very famous guy lately, many beautiful girls are chasing after him. Jin Gu paid no attention to the words of the girls and swam to the center of the pool. In its mind, he couldn't help but evaluate himself. Another boring guy. While swimming, suddenly his leg cramped. Jin Gu turned his head to look at his leg, feeling alarmed. Leg cramp? How is that possible? I warmed up properly. Underwater, she continuously gasped for air. But in this underwater environment, how loud could the cries be? Moreover, being in the middle of the pool, there was surely no one around. Jin Gu grabbed her leg under the water, but the girls thought Jin Gu was diving. Not considering the situation that she was having a cramp and might drown, look, M. Jin is diving deep again. Her technique is really good. Jin Gu was gradually sinking deeper, her face expressing resignation. Could I really drown? A swimmer drowning, that's probably an unimaginable thing. Looking down at the pool from above, he was shocked. No, that girl is in danger. Without caring about the surroundings, he immediately jumped into the pool. Salm Kang looked around and shouted, M. Jin. He moved underwater like a fish, swift as a darting bird, resembling a sparrow calling a falcon. He swam quickly towards Jin Gu, then pulled her up, lifting Jin Gu's face above the water so she could breathe, as she had been submerged for quite a while. He hugged Jin Gu, and she struggled, placing her face right under his chest. Let me go, don't touch me randomly. He quickly reassured, stay quiet and breathe. The way he comforted and rescued her was indeed like a domineering CEO. He turned around, placing Jin Gu on his back, and swam back to the poolside slowly. Stop struggling, I'll get you to the shore. Jin Gu felt his speed and couldn't help but marvel. Too fast, he even used one hand to support me. Jin Gu pressed against his back, her face close to his shoulder, both cheeks blushing incessantly. I'd never been so close to a guy like this. After reaching the shore, Jin Gu quickly regained her breath. He stood up, wiped his face with his shirt, and didn't forget to remind her, be more careful next time. Was he wiping his face like this to attract Jin Gu's sister, or was he trying to lure in the beautiful girls watching the scene? Oh my! This body, these abs are just too tempting. Jin Gu's friend came over to help her. Jin Gu, are you okay? Song Kang teased the girl he pursued a bit. Jin Gu, you almost scared us to death. Looking at his departing figure, people couldn't stop gossiping. That guy swims so fast. Broke the record, hasn't he? Swift as an arrow. I recorded a video of him saving someone, and I'll upload it online. He's handsome, isn't he? His name is Kim Taehyung. Right. The girl smiled, looking down at Jin Gu. That's right. He's the notorious Kim Taehyung's son. But he seems quite impressive. Saved your life and swims really fast. Isn't he a suitable boyfriend candidate for you? Jin Gu blushed, looking like a girl who just discovered love for the first time. The girl exclaimed, Jin Gu, why is your face so red? Song Kang, seeing Jin Gu's embarrassed expression, gritted his teeth, his face darkening in anger. Jin Gu, seriously? The news of Kim Taehyung saving Jin Gu became the hot topic at school with the headline Chivalrous Boy Rescues Drowning Girl and comments flooding in. Isn't that Kim Taehyung? He's so handsome. I was there, and he swam so fast. I timed it, and he broke the record. Maybe the adrenaline rush from saving someone brought out his potential. The student council president, who already disliked him, now harbored even more resentment. It seemed like a personal feud had escalated. He gritted his teeth in frustration, muttering, Kim Taehyung. The student council president held a vial, his gaze dark. Could it be poison? I have to make you disappear completely. Hearing these words, Kim Taehyung probably felt quite scared, excessively scared. In the days following the school ball, the university continued to organize such luxurious parties, truly opulent. People inside chatted incessantly. Tonight's school ball, organized by the student council, is lively. Rumor has it there's a mysterious reward. 
the student council really went all out this time. Everyone was elegantly dressed, inviting each other to dance. I want to invite Park Shin Hai. Dream on, she's probably hiding somewhere. Don't think too much. Park Shin Hai recently seems enchanted by Kim Taehyung. And there's also Kim Hin Jisoo. Look, here they come. Two heavily made up girls, adorned in glamorous evening gowns, confidently entered together. A guy exclaimed, Aren't they supposed to be rivals? Why are they so friendly? This is the mysterious friendship of our daughters that we don't understand. Shin Hai chuckled. Ha ha, Hai Jisoo, you look stunning today. But unfortunately, Kim Taehyung's heart isn't where you are. Dressing up beautifully might be in vain. Hearing this, Jisoo licked her lips sensually, looking incredibly alluring. Shin Hai, thank you for your concern. Enjoy the night. After tonight, everything will be different. Her words carried hidden meanings, and after saying that, Jisoo turned away. Shin Hai watched her leave, wondering, what is she up to again? But thinking about it, Shin Hai couldn't care less. Turning around to grab some food, who cares I'm going to cut the steak for Kim Taehyung first. I can eat when he arrives. What a considerate girl. Tonight, I have to dance with him. So, there's a plan. Jisoo left, but not without turning back to give Shin Hai a sly smile as if plotting something. Following the gentle and kind path, Park Shin Hai, with her little secrets, doesn't even know. Jisoo walked in a swaying manner, as if trying to attract the seductive gaze of men. She thought that by doing so, she could capture a man's heart, not realizing that a man's instinct is primitive. Jin Gu has also arrived by now, innocently stepping inside, holding the Coca-Cola glass while looking around. After seeing many charming girls, suddenly, a cute girl appeared making people want to protect her for themselves. Why hasn't Kim Taehyung arrived yet? I just want to say thank you to him. You won't misunderstand me, right? Conveniently, may I have his contact information? Jisoo came from behind, but before that, there was still an obstacle that needed to be cleared. If he wasn't there at that time, I would have been early. Jin Gu was embarrassed by his own thoughts, holding the Coca-Cola glass in hand and pursing his lips. Jisoo, sneaky as a fox, stood behind her face resembling a demon. Isn't this just Kim Taehyung casually rescuing a shrimp? Now she even wants to climb up. Jisoo used her chest to touch Jin Gu. Pleased to meet you. Jin Gu was bewildered. Ha! Huh. Why does this scene feel like Cinderella being discovered by the evil stepmother at the ball? Jisoo, being taller than Jin Gu, leaned down inexplicably close. Who are you? Hearing this, Jisoo immediately cut in. I'm Kim Taehyung's girlfriend, Kim Hin Jisoo. Where did you pop up, claiming to be an ex-girlfriend? Haven't you heard my name before? Jin Gu, innocently unaware of those who have seduced many rich men, couldn't compete. Jisoo smiled triumphantly. Kim Taehyung from my family is very enthusiastic and kind, always ready to help others. Jisoo looked down on Jin Gu as the victorious one. Before, he pursued me for three years, and I reluctantly agreed to be with him. Haha, what am I even saying? Anyway, now we love each other. So, anyone unaware might think that what Jisoo said was the truth. Jisoo moved closer to Jin Gu, swaying her chest as if flaunting her assets. Generally, if you want to thank Kim Taehyung, there's no need for it. Jisoo pressed her chest against Jin Gu's smaller chest, a battle between two missiled souls. Because tonight, he has a date with me. Jin Gu was astonished by Jisoo's actions. Next, Jisoo chased him with the face of a devilish woman. Do you understand? Innocently, Jin Gu hurriedly left the party, feeling awkward. I, I understand. A few guys intended to intervene, but they froze. Jisoo watched Jin Gu's fleeing figure, triumphantly self-satisfied, challenge me, and add one point to the favorability. Clearly, Jisoo is using you for her self-promotion. You over here are playing a game, and when you see the system pop up, the current favorability of Kim Hin Jisoo is 91%. Seeing that, you couldn't help but be confused. Why did it increase again? Why? Lazy to play the game. Yet the favorability can still increase. Jin Gu's roommate, dressed lazily, held a cup of water. Kim Tae Young, the party is about to start. Why aren't you getting ready? Hearing this, he didn't want to go lazily. What's there to prepare? Am I not in charge of picking up trash? The student union is so annoying, always assigning our class to do things. 
and then the class president sends me. Your friend nudged you. About this, it could be that you've offended someone. Hearing that, your expression became serious. Oh, tell me more. The night had fallen, and you were dressed extremely handsome, truly impeccable. Rich on the outside, cold and unpleasant on the inside towards the world. Only gentle with a few girls. You walked into the party. So the student union president is Yun Han Newell. He seems to have started liking to borrow positions, targeting those he doesn't like. It seems Taggy was also manipulated like this before. Interesting. Then I'll go meet him. Looking at the text message on your phone. Kim Tae Young, come to the party now. Because of the incident where you saved someone, the student union president said he wants to have a small award ceremony for you. Hurry up. Everyone is waiting for you, Oak. This was clearly a plot to set you up. You cracked a wicked smile that mesmerized the people. Award ceremony? I think trap is a more fitting word. Touch me, and I'll touch you back. Tonight, Yun Hanul, I'll have some fun with you. He strode boldly into the hall, precisely in a deserted area with no one in sight. Salm Kang hid behind the bushes, holding a brick in his hand, his face full of anger, staring at him with pure resentment. Found you, Kim Tae Young. That day, I clearly saved M. Jin. Fame and beauty should belong to me. Indeed, being overshadowed by a girl can cloud one's judgment. Psalm Kang tightly gripped the brick, and the veins on his forehead became prominent. You suddenly appeared on the road and took credit, taking M. Jin from me. First, I'll knock you out. Then, chop off one of your legs. Psalm Kang emerged from behind, his face looking demonic, raising the brick high, intending to smash it onto his head. Watch how you steal my girl. He continued to walk unperturbed, and Psalm Kang swung the brick down. He exerted all his strength, but in the end, it only hit the residual image of him. It seemed like he already knew Psalm Kang was hiding behind the bushes, so he relied on his nimbleness to evade the attack. With his long arm, he reached over Psalm Kang's armpit, looped it around his head, and placed his hand on the top of his head. Psalm Kang, feeling this, was bewildered. Ha! Huh. He used only one move to defeat Song Kang, and he looked quite dashing doing it. Song Kang was knocked down, and now his whole body lay flat on the ground, his face acting as a support, realizing that it hurt just by looking at it, not to mention experiencing it. After finishing the fight, he finally learned the identity of the person. You are, I remember now. You're that girl's classmate. He crossed his arms and looked down at Song Kang, questioning, Why did you sneak attack me? Salm Kang lying on the ground still hadn't realized how strong he was. Unable to retreat, he kept babbling. You, how dare you injure my face and steal my credit and my girl. He was confused. Your girl? This guy was clearly making things up and falling madly in love. Salm Kang's face swelled on one side, his eyes wide open, with red streaks continuously growling loudly as if he wanted the whole world to hear. It's that jerk M. Jin. I've been pursuing her for so long, and she still doesn't like me. His face was hateful at first sight. Who could stand him? Not to mention he had no talent. Meanwhile, the girl he pursued was the top swimmer in the country, attracting attention wherever she went. Don't climb too high and fall painfully. He continued, You don't even know her name, yet she blushes because of you. Laughing at how people choose their partners is their business. Getting angry about someone else's status is unnecessary. This jerk usually acts so high and mighty, I should have just pushed him into the water. This was the type of person who couldn't handle criticism. As soon as he finished speaking, he couldn't tolerate the disgusting words pouring out of his mouth, so he used his foot to kick him in the face. Fortunately, the rock was in the middle of his face, likely wearing glasses, and he kicked him until he fainted, then tossed him into the roadside garbage dump. Looking at him now, it seemed like this was truly his rightful place. After finishing, he walked away, his index finger constantly picking at his ear. Garbage should be thrown in the trash. School dance, and suddenly a few girls appear a bit surprised, especially Shin Hai, whose happiness is evident on her face. It turns out you came here. Shin Hai approaches you, asking, Kim Tae Young, why are you here? Hearing that, you only state your purpose for coming, because I heard there would be a great performance. Hearing this, Shin Hai is curious waiting for you for so long. I thought you wanted to dance with me. Hearing that, you comply with Shin Hai's suggestion, pulling her close to you. Sure. Your action makes Shin Hai feel a bit embarrassed. 
The two of you dance together. Truly a handsome couple. Kim tae Yum. Turns out you're good at dancing. You silently think to yourself, after increasing all attributes, there are many advantages. The author is quite favorable to you. The two dancing together looks very appealing to the audience. People standing outside, even those who are dancing, can't help but turn their gaze towards the two. Wow, so handsome. And the dance is beautiful. After finishing the dance, a girl in a charming pink dress steps forward, capturing the attention of both of you. The girl initiates a conversation with you. Handsome guy, I'd like to invite you for a dance. Hearing this, Shin Hai immediately intervenes. It's a bit inconvenient. I still want to continue dancing with Kim Taehyun. You can wait for a while. Ignoring Shin Hai's words, the girl disagrees. Sister, you've been dancing for so long. It's better to take a break. Two girls were arguing over you, and you were being pulled away by other girls who wanted to dance with you incessantly. Kim Taehyun, the student president, your dancing skills are amazing. Can you? Kim Taehyun, the student president, dance with me. On the other side, Shin Hai saw her Kim Taehyun being snatched away by those girls, making her furious. She wanted to run up and tear those girls apart. Some boys witnessing this couldn't help but feel jealous. Hated, so jealous. Isn't this about saving someone? And the good deed falls on him. Disgusting. What is this kid Kim Taehyun doing? Isn't he famous as a playboy? Why are those girls surrounding him? The jealous boys kept speaking ill of you. The president even said he would reward him. Is he worthy? Right, the president is too good. The student president, holding two beer cans, approached. Don't say that Kim Taehyun really saved someone. Right. This student president was truly good at buttering people up. He approached you, handed you a beer can, which seemed to have been tampered with by him. Kim Taehyung, the school needs excellent students like you is set an example for us. I am Yun Ha Newell, the student president representing the student council and all students. Cheers to you. You looked at the beer can in his hand, suspicion in your eyes, even though you knew he had played some tricks. You remained silent. The student president noticed that you hesitated to take the beer can for a while. So he asked, Why? The guy behind you smirked, lips curling, president, offering a toast. He doesn't want him to show off. People behind you couldn't stop gossiping and continuously commented, indeed, lacking a bit of courtesy. You took the beer can with a smile, saying, The president personally offers a toast. How could I refuse? Then, you drank the beer in one go. The president was extremely pleased. Well done. Shin Hai, seeing you like that, got worried. Are you okay? Some girls watching were enchanted. Great drinking capacity. As for the jealous boys, they were irritated. Ha, huh, acting like it's something. A moment ago, someone said not drinking is impolite. And now they say drinking is showing off. Truly excessive. Don't know how to please these people. The student president wore a sly smile. After you finished drinking, he immediately invited you to the rest area, Kim Taehyung. I actually have something to discuss with you related to the student council. Please come this way. You satisfied him by following, curious about what scheme he had in mind. I'll socialize with the president for a bit. In the conference room, you and the student president entered. As soon as you stepped in, you were taken aback. The president, with a cunning smile, revealed the situation. On the sofa lay Jin Gu seemingly drugged and brought here by the president to execute his plan. It turned out to be the innocent girl from the swimming pool. Her face looked flushed. You approached, using your hand to support your head. It seems she has a fever, and I'm feeling a bit dizzy too. The student president behind you, with a solemn gaze, advanced. Suddenly, you collapsed next to Jin Gu. Could it be that he had managed to knock you out? Despite this, the student president had already arranged the cameras in advance a satisfied expression on his face. Well done, the cameras are functioning normally, everything is ready. He left the room, remembering to lock the door, Kim Taehyung. This time, you can enjoy it slowly. At this moment, outside the auditorium, people below looked up at the platform, gossiping and buzzing. Wasn't the award ceremony supposed to start? Why hasn't it begun yet? The student president had already stepped onto the platform. Everyone, please take your seats. Kim Taehyung. Our fellow student will be here shortly. It's almost time. In his heart, he was endlessly satisfied. The drug must be taking effect. Everyone can't resist that kind of medication, not to mention you. As if knowing, 
he raised his hand and declared, Because our fellow student Kim Taehyung wants to express his thoughts through the screen. So please look at the screen, and now, let's welcome Kim Taehyung. People sitting below were full of anticipation, their eyes and expressions eagerly awaiting. Suddenly, Shin Hai and everyone were shocked. Up there, those two, a guy and a girl, are embracing each other in the room with constant heavy breathing. The girl is Jin Gu, but who is the boy? It's a pity for an innocent girl to fall victim to someone else's scheming. It truly goes beyond decency. This incident could shatter a lifetime and the self-esteem of a young girl. A boy below pointed to the screen, President, take a look quickly. Hearing that, the president hurriedly turned around to watch. He even put on a shocked face, as if he had no connection to the situation at all. Oh my God, Kim Tae-young, what are you doing? The president on the upper floor shouted, This is live, I know you're comfortable, but can't you restrain yourself a bit? Clearly, this person was adding fuel to the fire, and people below were disgusted with you. This guy is too disgusting. Quickly go to the conference room and arrest him. It's truly maddening. People kept blaming you. I knew Kim Tae-young was this kind of person. This Kim Tae-young, growing up poor and inexperienced, saved the classmate by chance, gained fame, and immediately turned immoral. This is the beginning of becoming rich and engaging in unethical behavior. Just by looking at his appearance, I knew he wasn't a good person. These people were obviously biased. Isn't he still ambiguous with a female student? Disgusting. In our school, we can't tolerate people like Kim Tae-young. These male students cursed excessively, and the president pretended, covering his mouth with his hand. Kim Tae-young, you disappointed me. The crowd below reacted. That's right. Quickly expel Kim Tae-young from the school. Make him drop out. This president was truly cunning. He had a satisfied smile. This smile seemed as if it had never been laughed before. Indeed, he was savoring this feeling. This was the ultimate enjoyment. This president might have some madness in him. Suddenly, you appeared, smiling. It seems like I missed the good performance. A foot stepped down, and the president, who was joyful, also became astonished. He was now confused. His eyes clearly showed the veins popping. It seemed that things were not going according to his plan. You casually stepped onto the platform. I just went to the restroom. Why is it so lively here? You asked, knowing exactly what was happening. Seems like everyone wants someone to drop out of school. You stepped out in front of everyone, in a very relaxed state. What's going on? Why does the president look terrified when he sees me? The president stood in front of you like encountering a ghost. People below were curious, confused about what was happening. What's going on? What's the situation? The president was sweating profusely, with a pale face, anxiously and nervously asking you, you're here, so who is in there? You smirked, confidently acting, as if it had nothing to do with you. How would I know? This is not the performance the president arranged. You wanted to pressure this president to reveal the truth. Looking back at the screen, the camera had shifted to the video inside, and it was Song Kang. He was hugging a dummy resembling Jin Gu, pressing his body against it, and speaking passionately. People below pointed at the screen. Look, that person is the one. Isn't that Kim Tae-young? Song Kang was getting closer to the dummy. He wanted to embrace the dummy he imagined as Jin Gu, wanting to kiss it. Are you comfortable, M. Jin? Is it true that you won't leave me anymore? Has the last woman finally become sincere? People around below screamed, not knowing who Song Kang was. Who is this guy? I recognize him. His name is Song Kang. He has been pursuing M. Jin for a long time. Why is he here? You looked at the screen involuntarily smiling, recalling what happened 10 minutes ago after you were drugged by the president. But no one knew that you had a golden hand system capable of detecting poisons, activating high school level passive physical skills and antidote synthesis. The effect of the poison had worn off and the cooldown time for this passive skill was 12 hours. After being detoxified, you stood up confidently in the room filled with cameras, looking around. The girl was unconscious, the cameras were in place and there was a locked room. It was clear that they wanted to harm you. Presenting the situation like this was quite blatant. However, being a mature young man, you carried Jin Gu. Then, you effortlessly opened the door with a bang, using almost no strength. Yet with the strength of this high school level body, the door felt like glue. Entering the bathroom, you gently sat Jin Gu on the tub. 
Jin Gu was still unconscious, unaware of what was happening. It seemed she had been given a substantial amount of sleeping pills and couldn't wake up in a short time. Placing her in the women's restroom, you ensured Yilin Han Newell and his gang wouldn't easily find her. Afterwards, you went back to the trash area where Song Kang was still hugging the trash can, his face showing signs of distress, muttering, M. Jin, M. Jin. Seeing him like that, you crossed your arms in satisfaction. Well done. This is the actor's self-discipline. Acting skillfully while unconscious is quite impressive. You placed Song Kang on the sofa as before. He remained oblivious, unconscious, having no idea what was happening. The actor was in position. You even brought out the beer can that had been spiked. The president has put in a lot of effort, arranging a grand performance for himself. How can we let him waste this effort? And just like that, you had him finish the entire beer. Then, you placed a fake wig resembling Jin Bu's hair on him. With everything set, you dusted off your hands. The fake wig had transitioned from the dressing room. Even having a similar hairstyle, you casually commented, Now, all we have to do is wait for the fun to unfold. The great performance is about to begin. You and the president both looked up at the screen. You even casually draped your arm over the president's shoulder. This guy's taste is really something. Daring to fight a mannequin, the president was bewildered, stammering, No, no, no. From the screen, Song Kang's voice echoed, Fearless, aren't I, am Jin. Witness my prowess. People below continued to chatter incessantly. He even stripped off all his clothes. This has nothing to do with me. The enraged president turned foolishly angry, his eyes red as if about to bleed. He blurted out in frustration. Impossible, impossible. Clearly, I saw you fall on M. Jin. This level of stupidity, even the author, is bowing to you in a match. Hearing that, you smiled and gazed at the student president intently. Oh, so you won't fight, but you'll confess voluntarily? The student president, realizing he had spoken too soon, hurriedly covered his mouth. People below eagerly anticipated the drama. Their eyes wide open in amazement, mouths agape. You gradually approached the student president, wanting to corner him completely. Come on, spill the details. How did you see me fall on M. Jin? The student president, increasingly pressured by you, lost the handsome demeanor from earlier. Now his face only displayed horror. You flashed a sinister smile, your eyes dark, as if intending to punch him to death. Weren't you just babbling away earlier? Why so silent now? The student president had no idea how to respond. At that moment, the hall door swung open, and Mr. J, the head teacher, entered. He strode in with an air of authority, paying no attention to anyone else. Such chaos. I'm Mr. J, the head of the literature department, the strictest and longest-serving teacher in the school. Mr. J was oblivious to the details of the situation, but directed his anger toward you, scolding, you shouldn't interfere with student affairs, let alone interrogate the student council president. Students like you, lacking the ambition to progress, shouldn't be part of the student union. Did the student president mistake a strange person? This Mr. J was really going too far, clearly wanting to defend the student president and sink you, without understanding the full story. You crossed your arms, smiling paying no attention to his words. Boldly, you retorted, mistaken identity. So if he claims to have seen me fall on M. Jin, how is the teacher planning to justify that? Your sharp words and clear evidence didn't sway him, as he still held on to his self-righteous stance, pointing directly at you. President Newell works diligently, carefully following every detail. Commendation is reserved for students like you, instead of adhering to the program's arrangements and easily participating in the conference room. You performed this disgusting and disgraceful act, tarnishing the school's reputation and disrupting the educational environment. You must be disciplined to be able to face the teachers and students throughout the school. This Mr. J was quite skilled in sophistry, truly capable of justifying anything. Below, two lackeys of the student president signal each other with their eyes, continuously speaking ill of you to those around them, trying to rally public opinion against you, committing such a serious mistake and only receiving discipline. We can't accept it. We think the president is undeserving. Kim Tavian must quit school immediately. He must stop attending to vent our anger for everyone. Up above, you crossed your arms, looking down at the people below, unaware of the continuous chant, quit school, quit school. This group shouted louder and grew more fervent. Quit school, quit school. Shin Hai, 
witnessing this inexplicable situation, was incredibly astonished and worried for you. What happened to you all? Clearly, the president harmed Kim Taehyung. The student president smirked, placing his hand on your shoulder and smiling. I bribed the head teacher already. Those students below are also part of the student council. They all belong to me. How will you confront me now? You indifferent to his words, observed the two villains colluding, as if they were providing a backdrop for your charisma. The president pointed at you, giving orders. Kim Taehyung wants to escape. The disciplinary team, catch him quickly. Upon hearing this, the two members of the disciplinary team approached. They tried to grab you, but you stood your ground, unmoving. The president, with an evil smile, rushed to punch you in the face. This is what Kim Taehyung is really like. A little resistance gives me a reason to beat you up. As he attempted to strike you, your hand intercepted his punch, leaving him in disbelief. The president was lifted up by your hand, struggling in pain. The disciplinary members kept pulling you, but you remained unfazed, smiling. What's the rush? The important part of the drama is just beginning. Head teacher Jay shouted loudly. This villain has started a fight. Security guards, quickly hold him down. Hearing this, the guards rushed in, wielding their batons, eager to strike you. You looked coldly at them, and suddenly, a loud voice interrupted. Stop. The scream made everyone freeze. Three figures approached, with the leading person using a cane being the principal of the school. Principal. Head teacher Jay, with a bald head, stepped forward. Principal, why are you here? You released the student president upon seeing the principal, expressing your anger. I arrived late and now an unresolved issue has occurred. Head teacher Jay pointed at you, and both he and the student president smirked maliciously. Exactly, exactly. This student has caused a significant incident, affecting the school's reputation. We've decided to expel him, but due to the severe impact of his actions, we still need to take him into custody. This person could indeed say anything, even the most foolish things. The principal, losing his composure, swung his cane at head teacher Jay's face. The student president, witnessing this, was incredibly surprised. He could hardly believe his eyes. This is terrible. The principal, holding the cane, pointed at head teacher Jay's face, whose actions are terrible. It's because there's a teacher like you, who takes bribes. That's what tarnishes the school's reputation. Head teacher Jay, now with a swollen face from the beating, was at a loss for words. The student president quickly knelt on the ground, grabbing the principal's hand. Principal. Principal, there's a mistake. The troublemaker is Kim Taehyung. Head teacher Jay is just helping him. Despite the situation, this person continued to be unrepentant, still able to mumble nonsense. Next to the principal was a member of the wealthy chat group. He vented his anger by kicking the student president in the face, declaring, There's no place for you to talk here. The student president was kicked backward, and head teacher Jay knelt on the ground, continuously pleading with the principal. Principal, he is the heir of the Newell family. The Yun Seo building in our school is Yun Seo. His father contributed to its construction. Hearing these inaccuracies from an educator, the principal became furious, jabbing his cane into head teacher Jay, making him tumble on the ground like a pig. Shut your mouth. Seeing head teacher Jay in this state, Park Yong Woo, standing beside you, both looked down at him, questioning, Is this a grand ceremony? Head teacher Jay. Head teacher Jay looked up, tears streaming down. You, you're Park Young Woo, from the Park family, one of the major shareholders of Yonsei University. So, you and Kim Taehyung are like this, like this. The principal placed his hand on your shoulder, proudly declaring, Now I announce, the act of bribing head teacher Jay of Yun Han Newell has severely damaged the reputation of Yonsei University. The school council unanimously decides to dismiss and expel both individuals as a punishment. Hearing this announcement from the principal, everyone was stunned into silence. The principal looked at you and smiled. Fortunately, our Yonsei University has outstanding students like Kim Taehyung, who can rid the school of pests and restore its purity. He is the light of our school. This principal was indeed eloquent, but he was also trying to strengthen ties with you. At this moment, head teacher Jay and the student president were overshadowed by your significant influence. The crowd below was in disarray. Why is it like this? We've been deceived. The president and Jay, the head, are the real villains. What's going on? Forty minutes ago, 
The installed cameras recorded close-up footage of everything he had done. Currently, it was being projected on the hall screen. He pointed to the screen, saying, Just watch this, and you'll understand. Inside, the president held Jin Gu on the sofa. The girl drank a drugged glass of water without any suspicion. Then, the president approached the camera to adjust for a close-up. He even didn't forget to mockingly say, Kim tae wouldn't have thought someone would harm him, even if he died. Who said I'm perfect? The student council and this whole school can only be like ants looking up at me. This person is truly foolish to the point that no one can tolerate. If you've done it, why not keep quiet? Why boast like this? The people below, upon seeing this video, were furious. So, he's that kind of person. It's truly disgusting. This two-faced creature dares to deceive us. People kept throwing things at him, wanting him to leave. I've always suspected he's a malicious scoundrel. Indeed he is. I've also been victimized by him, but without evidence I endured. Enjoyed pretending, huh? Teared his face apart, expel him from school, no forgiveness. Let him sit in jail. A beating is inevitable. The student president was being pelted with garbage at this moment. He knelt down on the ground, and the whole world seemed to have collapsed for him. He had no words left to deny or defend himself. It's over. I've lost everything. All because of Kim Tae-young's betrayal. It's not like he hadn't caused harm, for what goes around comes around, and in the end, he would face consequences. The current student president, devoid of reason, wanted to vent his anger on him. Drawing a knife from his person, he lunged forward, intent on stabbing him. Kim Tae-young, I'm willing to die with you. He remained frozen, showing no reaction. Swiftly, he used his agility to snatch the knife from the president's hand and kicked him down the platform. He exuded an air of confidence and dominance. His gaze descended upon the fallen president, a triumphant smile on his face. President Newell, it's time to step down from the stage. The president lay sprawled under the stage, surrounded by onlookers. He lay there dazed, and what goes around comes around. The people he had harmed tore at his clothes, pulled his hair, and yanked down his pants without holding back. Enjoy playing the victim. Pay for it now. Tear him apart and see how you perform. The president, suffering at the hands of those he had wronged, pleaded for forgiveness amid tears. No. At this moment, he appeared utterly forlorn, even more pitiable than someone who had tasted something extremely bitter, with foam at the corners of their mouth. It seemed that those around him were a bit excessive. Hemp, you think you're fit to be the student president? It's far from over. He dared to drug a female student. He should be sent to jail. The crowd, swayed by the prevailing sentiment, turned to look at the three on the platform. Principal, the student council leads to quickly elect a new president. The principal approached, leaning on a cane, and stood beside him, placing a hand on his shoulder. Kim Tae-young, you're courageous and just, helping the school eliminate two harmful elements. The position of the student council president is yours if you want it. Upon hearing this, he was a bit surprised, and the people below were even more astonished, but still supportive. The principal's recommendation is powerful, a swift rise. I support him. He walked over to the shoulders of the two people next to him, expressing gratitude. Thank you for the principal's praise. This time, it was thanks to Tahi's timely discovery of the plot, and Mr. Park promptly informed you. Otherwise, the consequences would have been unpredictable. He passionately nominated Tahi. Principal, the position of president should be held by someone capable. Tahi previously served as the head of the organization committee in the student council, only to be unfairly expelled by the president. Tahi has both talent and capability, and I believe the presidency should belong to him. To hold such a burdensome position, I have no interest. It turns out that this was his true purpose. The people below continued to applaud enthusiastically. What an incredible opportunity, he's so cool. Kim Taehyung is truly a man. If anyone dares to speak ill of him in the future, I'll punch them to death. Shin Hai below was wide-eyed in admiration, her cheeks constantly blushing. Student President Kim Taehyung is so cool. What the fuck, did you become the president? Jisoo, observing him from afar, had blushing cheeks and wore a smile of admiration. Kim Taehyung is outstanding, truly a man. This girl is too delusional. He'd never agreed to become a man. At this point, his part was over. On the stage, Tahi declared, let the party continue. He descended to the auditorium, saying, everything is over. Let's see if M. Jin has awakened.
In the restroom, he entered the place where Jin Gu was placed earlier, seeing that Jin Gu was still unconscious, sitting there motionless. He felt anxious, scratched his head, then approached to lift Jin Gu's face and called, M. Jin, M. Jin, how much sedative were you given? Unexpectedly, someone was watching him from above and sprayed something into the restroom. He too got exposed to that substance, feeling a strange sensation. Why do I feel a bit? He collapsed on top of Jin Gu, not knowing what was happening. The one following him turned out to be Jisoo, and she was amused by the situation. Subsequently, Jisoo approached and grabbed his shirt, lifting him up. The scene was utterly repulsive. Jin Gu was unconscious sitting behind him, and he too was unconscious sitting in front, leaning against Jin Gu. Jisoo approached, wrapped herself around him, and automatically tore her dress, sitting on him. This dress was truly cumbersome. Knowing it would be so, why wear it in the first place? Jisoo pressed close to his face, saying, Kim Taehyung, you're mine now. Jisoo did something on her own, and I'm sure you can guess. Afterward, her whole body shivered. Jisoo continued to cling to him, lifting Jin Gu's chin. You disgusting wretch, open your eyes wide. Kim Taehyung belongs to me now. You'll never get close to him forever endlessly daydreaming and clinging to him in your dreams. Jisoo continuously pressed against him, wanting to kiss him passionately. Kim Taehyung, I won't leave you anymore. Suddenly, he stood up, lifting Jisoo, making her startle. Wait a minute. Turns out he had been affected by the substance too. He turned Jisoo around, panting heavily. It seemed like he had been hungry and thirsty for a long time. Jisoo, in pain from his actions, said, Wait, Kim Taehyung just calling his name, and this girl jerked her whole body. She was penetrated by something large. Kim Taehyung, he's not sober. He kept moving continuously. Could this be the primal instinct of a man? Damn it, I want to wait. Jisoo jerked, her body full of pleasure. Sounds of stimulation echoed from the restroom. He woke up at this moment, realizing that the effects of the drug had worn off. Looking at the current situation, Jin Gu was sitting on the toilet, Jisoo lying on the floor. He stood in the middle and was utterly bewildered. What is going on here? Jisoo lying on the floor, her face looking extremely euphoric as if she had just taken drugs, said, Kim Hin Jisoo, this is the drug. He scratched his head in confusion, his face showing bewilderment. This crazy woman, her tendency to play her toxic tricks hasn't recovered, and she's still causing trouble. He laid Jisoo on top of Jin Gu giving her a slap on the butt. Jisoo was hit but still seemed to enjoy it. Take a lesson. If you weren't unconscious, I would have beaten you to death. At this moment, his phone rang. He took it out and answered, his face showing confusion. Chairman Jun. Good evening, Chairman Jun. I just saw Park's son flaunting in the rich kids group and helped him with something. Yang Yoon seems to be involved too. Why didn't you call us, brothers? Upon hearing this, he checked the rich kids group chat and there was even a picture of him inside. The relationship with Chairman Jian has risen to another level. Quickly admire me. This time, I also have something to show off. On the other side, Chairman Sook was leaving the crowd to talk to him. Chairman Jian, do you remember the private dining party on the yacht that I enthusiastically suggested to you? It will be held in Seoul tomorrow, and this time, we have arranged a very special performance. Will Chairman Jian honor us with your presence? Hearing this, he agreed cheerfully. Sure, my mood isn't great, so attending a yacht party will help me relax. Upon hearing this, Chairman Sook was extremely delighted. That's great. Welcome Chairman John to participate. The clinking of two beer cans echoed along with laughter. Ha ha ha. As he and his three friends walked home. Leading the group was him, and all three were in high spirits. The drinks at the party were dull. It's better to go out for a beer. That's right, I'm the class president now so feel free to drink. I'll foot the bill. Hearing this, he was exasperated with his friends. Okay, you said this a hundred times tonight. A hand nonchalantly gestured towards the restroom. I want to handle something there. Come along. He watched his friends cheerfully go in, with one of them gesturing towards the restroom. After physical enhancements, alcohol wasn't as intoxicating. He had witnessed everything from a distance earlier and was now standing right behind these guys, arms crossed solemnly. If someone refuses, why force them? Hearing his words, the guys were left with question marks in their heads. The girl, upon hearing him, began to sweat profusely. 
The four troublemakers continuously pointed at him. You dare to show up alone, trying to be a hero saving a beauty, huh? Watch too many movies, haven't you? Ha ha ha. He stood in the middle with great dignity. Get lost. I don't want to get involved. As soon as he finished speaking, the four troublemakers couldn't tolerate the insult and threw punches at him. Still acting arrogant. Go die. The worried girl raised her hand and warned, be careful. He swiftly dealt with the troublemakers, leaving them lying on the ground. The girl approached and checked one of them. They're all unconscious. He stood upright, witnessing it all. The girl scolded him. Do you realize how dangerous your behavior was just now? The system beeped, detected a beautiful girl, initiating a counter task. Name, Go Sung Tak, age 24. Height 172 centimeters, weight 50 kilograms. When the target's favorability towards the host exceeds 90%, return 10% of the completed counter task funds, adding to the host's personal assets. Reward. All attributes increase by one level, choose one skill. When the target's favorability towards the host reaches 100%, change status and renew the host and target's dependent relationship. After seeing the task, he broke out in a cold sweat. I can't believe my eyes. It initiated a counter task. She seems so innocent. Unfortunately, she's a flower seller. He left but didn't forget to bid farewell to the girl. Miss, although you look beautiful, this isn't a suitable profession. Take my advice and find a normal job. Hearing this, some tack was bewildered. What? The girl sitting on the ground replied. Where did this guy come from? He unilaterally tried to be a hero, almost ruining my plan. The unconscious troublemaker, still not awake, tried to grab Sung Tak, but before he could say anything, Sung Tak stepped on his face, knocking out a tooth. Oh my goodness, that's so scary. Sung Tak lifted her earpiece. The suspicious person has been restrained. Notify Team 4 to prepare for capture. Yes, Captain Tack. It seems Sung Tack is either a police officer or a special agent. Sung Tack above answered the call and below. She stepped on the man, truly a beautiful sight. The next day, he sat on the yacht, brought there by someone. He boarded, and the person following below waved, saying, Director Jun, have fun. I'm heading to another yacht for some business talk. He waved back. Sure. Go ahead with your work. The blonde guy threw money at Sung Tak, been having a lot of meat these days. Today, I want something pure, restrained, maybe a gentle tease. Pay up and come over here. He licked his lips. Serve me well. He pointed at himself, making Sung Tak blush. Suddenly, he appeared, blocking Sung Tak, this esteemed gentleman. Our place does not provide special services. By the way, a reminder, your actions are against the law, and you're not worthy of respect. The blonde guy couldn't help but laugh, angrily shouting, A waiter like you dares to confront me. Calmly, he responded, Oh, I'm not a waiter. The owner of this yacht invited me to join the party. Hearing this, the purple-haired girl next to him immediately stood up and taunted him. Dressed like that, you're not a servant. You're even poorer than a guest. We've attended many parties but never seen you. Why suddenly play the hero saving a beauty today? Where's your invitation? He didn't care about her words. A waitress passed by, and he casually grabbed a grape, putting it in his mouth. No invitation. The yacht owner invited me. Why don't you go ask the yacht owner? Upon hearing this, the people around couldn't help but sneer. To join this party, you need to pay a fee of 10000 per person. You're saying you got invited by the yacht owner. Who are you? Revealing your tale, aren't you? A poor guy sneaking onto the yacht, either a servant or a thief. Throw him into the sea. Two of them were surrounded. Let us teach you what the rules are for those with money. Sung Tak looked at him with some concern. The main target hasn't made a move yet. If we capture him now, it will result in some losses. Currently, although he has some martial skills, he can't handle multiple people like us. He smiled triumphantly and raised his phone. So your point is, whoever has money can enjoy freely, right? Well now, I'll call Chairman Suk. Hearing this, the blonde guy and the two girls beside him couldn't help but be amazed. He lifted the phone to make a call, and suddenly, the space fell silent. Only the sound of his phone echoed. The number you are calling is temporarily unavailable. Sweat broke out on his forehead. When he realized no one picked up the call, Chairman Suk is in a business meeting with clients. Probably, he doesn't have time to answer the phone. Seeing that no one answered his call, 
The people around couldn't help but mock. Ha ha ha. You're pretending. Kid. Calling Chairman Sook, and I actually got scared. Not much, just scared for three seconds. These old guys were quite mouthy. The green-haired girl sat on the yellow-haired guy's thigh. Whether you're poor or not, just buy this yacht, and then we all have to follow your orders. Hearing this, the yellow-haired guy smiled triumphantly, pointing at him. If you buy this yacht, this servant will be yours. Consider tonight as my gift to her. But can you afford it? This guy really knew how to provoke. He had nothing to say. Money was the only thing he lacked. Hearing that, he smiled, finding the opinion of the girl not bad at all. He called another waitress over. Waitress, bring your captain here. The waitress hesitated upon hearing that. This matter. The yellow-haired guy, eager for some excitement, quickly told the waitress to go. Go, although the owner is not here. The captain can still decide on buying and selling. I remember his name is Ah Sung, right? Let this desperate poor guy perform with him a bit. At this moment, the captain came out from the cockpit, greeted the yellow-haired guy with a cheerful face, but ignored the presence of him. Chairman Cha. The yellow-haired guy pointed towards him. He wants to buy this yacht. It's a big deal, so entertain him quickly. The captain, upon hearing this, smiled. Chairman Cha is just joking. This yacht, owned by Chairman Sook, has great value. Even you found it expensive let alone him. The captain said this while glancing at him with a disdainful look. He didn't care about the glances from the people around, holding up a black card. Don't waste your words. Give me the price. Seeing the black card in his hand, the surrounding people couldn't help but be surprised. That black card seems to be from Dragon Harmony, but it's slightly different. It seems to be even more high class. The girl standing next to him covered her mouth with her hand, mocking. Looks like a genuine item. Ha ha. Some tack stepped forward, grabbing his hand, expressing concern. Why don't you go first? There's no need to do this. You can't make him offend so many people for your sake. If the mission to Mag fails, we may have to give up. Having just spoken, he turned with a handsome demeanor, rest assured. Hearing his caring words, some tack blushed involuntarily, and his favorable impression increased by an additional 5%. The captain stepped forward, presenting the boat sail papers in front of him. So it turns out this gentleman really wants to buy. Well, this boat is priced at 700 million, with 100 million for the procedures, making a total of 800 million. All the necessary paperwork is here. Just sign your names, sir. The people around kept urging. Sign it now. If that card really has 800 million, I'll immediately jump into the sea. Ha ha, my chairman Cha. You better not waste time with him anymore. It's a big loss. As for this farce, play it however you want. The captain quickly spoke up. Does the gentleman need to swipe the card? If you truly want to buy, please swipe the card. He returned the signed contract. Of course, I won't sign. I know, just find it amusing. Enough with the act, no need to continue. Truly a fake pretending to be a duck. Before they could smear him any further, he pushed Sung Tak forward, and she will sign. Hearing his words, even Sung Tak was surprised. Those guys were more shocked than ever. What? He nonchalantly. I'll sweat the card, and she will sign. I'm buying this boat for her. He glanced at Sung Tak. Right, I haven't learned your name yet. Sung Tak, with rosy cheeks, looked at him and replied, Hi, my name is Go Sung Tak. As soon as he heard Sung Tak's name, he swiftly swept the card. His demeanor was undoubtedly charming to any girl. All right, this boat is the first gift I give to Go Sung Tak. After swiping, the payment machine announced, transaction successful, an amount of 800 million deducted from the account. Hearing the payment machine notification, the surrounding people were astonished, holding their heads. He really bought it, paid in full at once. He must not be an ordinary person. With this level of wealth, he surely is the invited chairman Sook. Especially the guy with the yellow hair was practically spewing blood. The people in the shop now bowed respectfully to him, and Sung Tak, this, Tack, Miss Tack, sir, you two are the owners of this boat now. Our boat has a total of 100 employees, all at your service. Greetings, Miss Tack, greetings, Miss Tack. He, below the crowd, stared straight at the yellow-haired guy. As you said, if I buy this boat, this attendant will be mine, correct? The yellow-haired guy shivered upon hearing that, correct? The green-haired girl on the side extended an invitation. Not only her, 
but all of us belong to you. May I ask the name of the owner? Someone as young, beautiful and wealthy as you. Could we get to know you a little? The crowd that had mocked him earlier now approached him with a different attitude. Exactly, exactly. That chap person dared to offend you, which is truly laughable. I've found him unpleasant from the start. The shoelaces of his boss have come loose. Seeing this scene, some tack couldn't help but be horrified. Who is he exactly? At this moment, a scar-faced guy suddenly appeared next to the yellow-haired one. Shan Mai, you're mistaken. This guy is not ordinary. The yellow-haired one quickly went to the scar-faced one, bowing. Big Brother Nam, I was wrong, but he dared to disgrace me, which is also a disgrace to you. If Big Brother Nam can help Cha Mai settle this matter, I'll give all my business dealings in Myanmar to you. The scar-faced guy, still smiling, said, Cha Mai's agreement is hard to refuse. All right, let me handle them. If the fat lamb is brought to the mouth, it should take a big bite. Approaching him, the scar-faced guy said, this young master is truly generous. Some tack, seeing the scar-faced guy, was shocked. His face was incredibly cruel. I'm Nam Gill. People usually call me Big Brother Nam. How should I address you, young master? Hearing this, he responded politely, My last name is Taehyung. Some tack on the side was shocked at the scar-faced guy's identity. Nam Gill, the leader of the Lion Black Gang, specializing in smuggling from Myanmar and Laos. He has built two underground warehouses for illegal goods. In recent months, the headquarters has been constantly tracking his traces. The goal of tonight's operation is precisely him. The scar-faced guide approached, inviting him. The atmosphere tonight is great. Young Master Young, would you like to play a little game? Hearing that, he quickly declined. I don't know how to gamble, and besides, gambling is illegal. I won't play. Hearing this, the scar-faced guy sneered. Really? Someone who spends a hundred million like young Master Taeyeon has never gambled. What if that eight hundred million is your entire capital? The girl who played Daisy next to them chimed in. Big Brother Nam is just joking. Even if young Master Taeyeon runs out of money, he's still the owner of a luxurious yacht. How can you say that? He smiled, narrowing his eyes. Of course I have money, but... Hearing this, the scar-faced guy approached even more. With money... It's not just about having enough courage. Unable to hold back, he raised his eyes to look, and the yellow-haired one walked over. Enough. Big Brother Nam. Young Master Taeyong may have a lot of money, but he can't stand losing. Even if he loses a thousand or two thousand yuan, he'll be so uncomfortable that he won't be able to sleep. I'll play with you. Some tack, behind him, whispered to him, Don't let them provoke you. I've heard that guy Nam Gil only gambles in billions. Even if you have up to 20 billion, it's not enough to play with him. Hearing this, he replied, lose 200 billion. Hearing that, his eyes lit up. That's perfect. Some tack, hearing this, was horrified. What? After hearing about his extravagant betting style, he couldn't resist speaking up. Hey, big brother Nam, suddenly I feel like playing a bit. It seems quite interesting. Some tack, seeing his arrogant behavior, was completely powerless. You... On the contrary, these two, seeing his reaction, felt like they had opened a winning move. Still not done, he continued. However, I haven't been very lucky lately and couldn't draw good cards. So she'll play on my behalf. If she loses, I'll pay. If she wins, it's all hers. But no disclosure is allowed. Expressing these words naturally, without a hint of worry, without any hesitation. This move stunned some tack, momentarily disbelieving his ears. What? He seemed to have his own calculations, seemingly indifferent to everything around him, only thinking about the money about to rain down on him from the sky. I provide the money. She places the bet. If she loses two billion, I'll refund two hundred million. This is more profitable than giving gifts to streamers. Ah ha ha. Some tack was extremely worried about him, constantly shaking, hoping he would wake up, continuously scolding him. Are you crazy? Didn't you hear what I said? Betting with him you'll lose terribly. His response to Sung Tak's words was like water off a duck's back. Not only did he not want to retreat, on the contrary, he thought, it's best not to go against the current. From now on, even if I lie down, I can't spend all the money. Right after that, he and Go Sung Tak and the other two sat at the table, ready to start the first round. Nam Gil spoke up. Backer it is too complicated. 
but considering whether young Master Taeyum can understand it, it would lose a lot of the excitement of participating. So let's play blackjack. It's the simplest. This statement's outward appearance suggests his concern, but in reality, the underlying implication is that he views the person's mind as no different from a pig's, completely incapable of understanding the games meant for the upper class. Unfazed, he immediately agrees with him. No problem. The surrounding crowd couldn't resist their curiosity and closed in to witness the unfolding drama. Some tack, sitting next to him, looked at him with a suspicious gaze, thinking, as a servant, having just been generously gifted a boat, I mustn't refuse the requests of the generous benefactor. Playing along discreetly is the only way to help him. Some tack is not as simple as he appears on the surface. Her actions are also intended to be advantageous for herself. The onlookers chuckled skeptically, finding it hard to believe that the two of them could win this round. Pity for you. This time young Master Young is in for a disaster. How can a servant be good at gambling like Boss Nam? With money, one can truly make Chairman Cha call him father. But in the casino, no matter how much money one has, it all goes into Boss Nam's pocket. It seems that young Master Taeyong is a second-rate master who isn't too smart. The next round of cards commence, and the female dealer announced, Deal the cards. Nam Gil remained silent, and so did he. With a face that showed no trace of self-consciousness, but radiated confidence instead. Nam Gil smiled, and looked at him, wanting to lure him into his trap. Quite lucky, isn't it? Young Master Taeyong, would you like to add more chips? Cha Mi completely trusted Nam Gil's gambling skills, his face bright and cheerful, responding to Nam Gil's provocation without hesitation. He immediately bet all his chips decisively. I'm all in. It's up to you. This action and attitude left some tack astonished and speechless, concluding the first round. In this round, Boss Nam emerged victorious. After hearing the outcome, he tried to put on a show of regret, feigning disappointment without a hint of genuine sorrow. What a pity. Despite the performance, Nam Gil remained convinced. He certainly wasn't a Hollywood actor. His act was far from convincing. Having won the first round, Nam Gil grew even more confident. He cradled the stack of chips in his hands, wearing a satisfied smile, and tried to console him. It's okay, young Master Taeyong. You'll win the next round. Cha Mei couldn't contain his amused emotions and grinned. The words and demeanor of the other two had no effect on him. He immediately raised his hand cheerfully. In the next round, I'll bet 200 million. By the way, the face value of this chip is so small. Exchange it for 2 billion for me. The female dealer immediately agreed, certainly. As for Go Sun Tak, she was at a loss for words with him. Hey, she truly didn't know what he was up to, daring to take such a risk. The spectators witnessing his new move couldn't contain their surprise and exclaimed, 2, 2 billion, such a high stakes game. His money seems limitless. Those who came to watch this spectacle couldn't comprehend the playing style of someone wealthy like him. Nam Gil, after hearing him say that, felt elated, thinking. His tactic worked on him, a little provocation, and the mind of the second generation wealthy has become infatuated. They continuously applauded him. Indeed, young Master Young is decisive. Nam Gil looked at the figure of two billion put forward by him, thinking, after winning two billion, my legal businesses will quickly recover. He not only wanted to take his money, but also intended to use him to launder money for his dirty business. Following that, Nam Gil consistently won rounds, and he also lost a considerable amount of money. From 200 million to 500 million, the losses now amounted to a billion. Nam Gil held the chips he won from him in his hands and kept encouraging him. Young Master Taeyong, do you continue? A triumphant smile had involuntarily appeared on his face. Of course, he couldn't accept stopping at this point and replied without hesitation. Certainly. Oh, suddenly, some tack couldn't bear this foolishness from him any longer. She immediately grabbed him by the collar, her face unable to conceal a shock and anger. The onlookers, often more interested in gossip than business, burst into mocking laughter, seeing him being dragged away by Go Some Tack. This service staff is too proactive, giving up already, just walking away like that. Being pulled into a dark corner by Sung Tak, as soon as they stopped, Go Sung Tak couldn't contain her anger and shouted directly at him, Are you crazy? Even if you have money, you can't waste it like this. Do you really think that by doubling your bet each time, you can recover what you lost before? Don't be foolish, there's no such thing as luck in the casino. 
Some Tak tried her best to help him break free from this deceitful cycle. She paid no attention to the two muscular bodyguards pressing against him. Go Sum Tak's anger reduced her goodwill towards him by 30%. From childhood to adulthood, he had never been pressed against the wall like this, and the feeling was not bad at all. Blushing, he awkwardly replied with a nonchalant attitude. It's okay. Even if you lose to me, I won't blame you. No need to get worked up like this. His response was also meant to advise Sum Tak to calm down. After all, she didn't understand that his job was all about making money. He just feared that Go Sum Tak would get too agitated and run away. Sum Tak, after hearing your advice, managed to reduce her agitation somewhat. She almost couldn't control her emotions, nearly revealing her identity. Right after that, she tried to readjust her emotions and turned away to awkwardly say to him, I am not agitated. I just want to say, I can't possibly win. Hearing Sum Tak's words, instead of stopping, he continued and even rubbed his hands together in amusement. Why can't you win? Does Nam Gil know how to manipulate cards, like in the movies, where they can magically get the cards they want? Should I report him? It seems reporting gambling has a reward. Listening to his senseless words, Sum Tak felt helpless. Right now, Sum Tak was like a mother trying to advise her child, saying movies only depict deception. It's the lowest level trickery. There are sensors both on and under the table. Before the cards are even dealt, the sensors know the quantity and order of the cards, which card will be dealt to whom, and the dealer knows everything before the game begins. The dealer provides reminders through Bluetooth to Nam Gill. Whether it's card theft, card swapping, or using fake cards, it will be detected immediately by the sensors. Both the chip and sensors comply with regulations, and their function is to prevent cheating. The only form of cheating is the reminder from the dealer to Nam Gill an action that cannot be caught. That's why I said, you basically can't win. Do you understand now? After hearing Sung Tak's thorough explanation, he seemed to open up to a new horizon of knowledge, saying, oh, so that's how it is. Gambling truly is harmful. Having said that, he suddenly reached out and pulled Sung Tak back, displaying an extremely pleased demeanor. Knowing the principle makes things easy. I will teach these gamblers a lesson. Seeing his attitude, Sum Tak couldn't predict what he would do next, a big question mark emerging in her mind. What? Together, he and Sum Tak walked inside. Upon arrival, he spoke loudly, I suspect there's something wrong with the cards. I suggest we check them. Upon hearing this, those present couldn't help but be surprised. Nam Gil, without a hint of fear, thinking he was just a young man, couldn't possibly do anything, said, No problem, go ahead and check. Let Tae Young admit defeat wholeheartedly. Some spectators, not knowing their place, even sarcastically commented, he's getting anxious now, losing all of his money, probably over a billion. Now, apart from this ship, he has become poor. Luckily, I haven't dealt with him. He, with a calm demeanor, approached to inspect. The female server, without showing any concern, said to him, Tae Young, however you want to check, it's fine. He reached out to examine the table and with a composed tone, responded to the server's willingness. Thank you. I have checked this table already. We can check your clothes later. After a bit of fumbling, his power increased to level three. Then, he appeared perplexed and said to them, It seems there's no issue. Naum Gil and Shami looked at each other with satisfaction. After realizing he found nothing unusual, he continued, Well then, let's continue. Too bad it gets boring the more we play. Hearing these words, everyone was quite surprised. He looked at Nam Gill and provocatively remarked, Big Brother Nam wins so much money, but each time he's so hesitant with the chips, only daring to bet a few dozen million. This taunt, seemingly too powerful, completely stirred up his anger. His eyes widened, and he couldn't contain himself. The wind was blowing in the direction it favored. Seeing Nam Gill succumb to public pressure, the crowd chimed in, afraid of losing. Gambling a few dozen million is not small. We also need to consider who the opponent is. Nam Gil, unable to withstand the public opinion, immediately fell into his arrogant trap. Every time Taehyung plays, it's in the hundreds of millions. Comparatively, Mr. Nam is indeed stingy. All right, then I'll play big with Taehyung. One billion. It seemed like he, the money-hungry demon, thought that he couldn't possibly win, so he boasted like this. The game swiftly commenced after that. The waitress drew a nine of clubs, and as soon as it touched the table, 
He spoke up. Stop. Observing his reaction, Nam Gil couldn't help but be surprised, poking his head out with curiosity. Without saying anything more, he gestured with his hand and said, Deal the cards. Nam Gil looked at the perplexed waitress and was impatient. Why the delay? I'm eager to turn the tide here. It turned out that making the waitress flustered disrupted the censor. Nam Gil quickly realized the issue and became completely enraged, clenching his fist, suppressing his anger. Seeing his attitude, he expressed satisfaction on his face. He raised his middle finger to Nam Gil, teasing him, deal the cards. It was hard to believe his luck. Some tack couldn't help but be surprised by the turn of events. She involuntarily couldn't hold back her words. Exactly as you had calculated, you emerged victorious in this decisive round of cards, leaving everyone in astonishment, mouths and gape. Finally won, huh? Winning one round means getting back all the losses. Now, the big boss is no different from using bamboo to hold water, someone exclaimed. Nam Gil couldn't accept the reality of being defeated by you. Unable to contain his anger, he slammed his hands onto the table, reacting furiously, you wretched kid, dare to challenge me. Indeed, money is closely tied to one's nerves. In the blink of an eye, he lost an entire billion. How could he not be furious? The more enraged he became, the more it suited your intentions. You looked directly at him, smiling calmly, and replied, What's wrong? Winning so many rounds is not a problem. Losing one round and you're losing your cool? It seems the one who can't handle the game is none other than Nam, the big boss. Right? Nam Gil had no rational argument left and shifted the blame to someone else, pointing accusingly at Sung Tak, while loudly cursing. This cunning brat cheated earlier. I've been in the gambling world for years and she can't fool me. She's a master that you invited. Hearing his baseless accusations, you couldn't help but find it amusing. Some tack, on the other hand, truly seemed to have a stroke of bad luck. Sitting quietly, she found herself unfairly blamed by this imputed fellow. The crowd of onlookers, ignorant as they were, didn't witness the events, but were quick to join the criticism. Tay Young, you cheating is not right. Although this is your ship, there are rules on the gambling table. Cheating at the gambling table is not a trivial matter. Tae Young, even though you have a lot of money, you made a mistake. You chose to remain silent, knowing that explaining anything further to this group of clueless spectators would be futile. Some Tak was extremely worried and repeatedly explained for both of you. We didn't cheat. If you don't believe it, we can check the CCTV. After losing a billion in the blink of an eye, Nam Gil couldn't maintain his calm anymore. He drew a knife and stabbed it forcefully into the table. One knife was not enough to vent his anger. He continued to pull a gun from his person, aiming it directly at your head. Spitefully, he said, according to the rules, cheating requires cutting off a finger and seizing all the betting money. If not, enjoy my lead-flavored candy. Thinking that by shifting all the blame onto you, he could take over your entire fortune. He incessantly provoked you. You, on the other hand, treated these conventional weapons like toys for a three-year-old, showing no fear. Instead, you smiled intriguingly and said, I'm a bit curious too. Based on my years of practicing hand speed, is the gun faster or is my hand faster? Hearing your words, some tack became temporarily agitated, unable to believe that you dared to provoke the infuriated Nam Gil. Don't provoke him. He really will kill. Before she could finish her sentence, a loud explosion echoed. In an instant, the scene unfolded before everyone's eyes was Nam Gil clutching his stomach, collapsing to the ground. He vomited blood incessantly. His eyes turned white without a trace of vitality. Everyone was astonished witnessing this, except for you, who calmly sat there observing his agony without a hint of surprise. Sung Tak momentarily didn't understand what was happening, trying to recall the recent events. I saw it just now. He shot the chip in his hand against the gun and simultaneously delivered three strikes to Nam Gil's abdomen. The speed was too fast. He really knows how to show off, very skillful in showcasing his speed. Cha Mei, seeing his boss being humiliated like that, immediately reacted with anger, not wanting to let the situation be reversed. Quickly, arrest this guy. He cheated in the bet and dared to attack people. Wanting protection was one thing, but the one being apprehended was him. This also left him bewildered. The sturdy guy was held tightly by two guards, forced to kneel on the ground. You slowly approached him and said, Chairman Cha, did you forget something? 
I am the owner of this ship. You said the guards would listen to anyone. In fact, your words were aimed at dispelling Chimay's illusions of power. Then, you stepped closer to the unconscious Nam Gil, with a very disdainful demeanor, nudging him to lie on his back. At the same time, you pulled out two cards, proving who the cheater really was. You continued, Moreover, the cheater is him. The foolish crowd now widened their eyes, surprised to learn the truth. What? Nam Boss cheated? Sung Tak couldn't avoid being surprised, leaning close to you and whispering. Strange, he probably wouldn't resort to low-level cheating tactics, like card theft. How did you manage to win against him? You, with a pleased smile, whispered back to Sung Tak. When I checked the table, I discreetly sabotaged the sensor. The round we just played was simply a gamble of luck. Then, when I played against him, I skillfully slipped these two cards into his possession. Upon hearing your cunning plan, some tack found it entreating. You are quite devious, accompanied by a 15% increase in his favorability. Right after that, President Suk entered with an extremely astonished expression. Oh my, what happened here? The foolish crowd immediately spoke up. President Suk is here. Just now, Nam Boss bet on cheating money with Taeyeon Boss, and then he fired a gun. Upon hearing this, President Suk hurriedly approached with a worried expression for you. Chairman Jeon. Chairman John, are you okay? You replied, I'm fine. Despite your assurance, President Suk remained overly concerned. You didn't get shot, did you? Were you injured by the knife? The clueless crowd, upon hearing President Suk's way of addressing you, became even more surprised. President Suk, you said Taeyong boss is Chairman Jeon. Chairman Jeon is such a big shot. Meanwhile, some tax swiftly blended into the crowd, discreetly contacting someone. The main target has been subdued. Deploy the plan immediately. President Suk cleared up the confusion for the bewildered crowd and cheerfully introduced you. That's right. This person is Chairman Jun, whom I always mention. Tonight, I specially invited him to join us. Introduced this way, you stood tall and proud, basking in the admiration of the people. In the face of your handsome appearance and wealth, the two-faced individuals immediately changed their tune and sought an opportunity to get close. Chairman John, you are truly modest. Nice to meet you. I'm Lee, Chairman John's younger sister. Do you happen to be single? My brother has an exceptional skill set. He knows 48 different positions. You were truly busy at the moment as everyone wanted to get a piece of your attention, proving the saying that with money, you could have it all. Suddenly, the Special Forces team arrived, addressing the people present seriously. Everyone, stay quiet and don't move. We are here to apprehend a smuggling gang. Please cooperate. Shortly after, the group of people with Nam Gil was apprehended. His once domineering demeanor now only carried a sense of humiliation. Approaching Sum Tak, a member of the special forces informed, Nam Gil and his subordinates have all been captured. We can disband now. Sum Tak promptly replied, Yes, disband. Under the amazed gaze of others, Sum Tak paid no attention focusing solely on his thoughts about you. Hmm, where did that person go? He practically helped in capturing the criminals, and his money must be returned as well. While some tack was still trying to locate your whereabouts to repay the favor, you've had already sped away on the yacht in eight directions, turning back to the cruise ship and sighing in relief. Phew, luckily I managed to climb out through the window during the chaos. If the police caught me gambling, it would've been a disaster. You thought that your gambling escapade would lead to many consequences later on, but unexpectedly, the person helping you gamble turned out to be an actual police officer. Life is truly ironic. Back at the female dormitory, Shin Hai lay sprawled on her bed, daydreaming about you. Where did Kim tae run off to? Why isn't he responding to my messages? I wanted to invite him to my rented house for dinner tomorrow, but it seems too direct. Shin Hai spoke with embarrassment, twisting her body then regretfully recalling that day. All because that day got unexpectedly interrupted, I have to find another opportunity. Interrupting her train of thought, Jisoo returned. Jisoo appeared exhausted and slumped onto a chair, her worn-out dress and disheveled appearance telling the tale of her fatigue. I'm so tired, I can't take it anymore. Seeing Jisoo in this state, Shin Hai expressed concern. Jisoo, what happened? You seem like you've been through something. You need to take care of yourself. Feeling Shin Hai's genuine concern, Jisoo transformed into a pick-me-girl, 
portraying exhaustion while lamenting. It's all Kim Taehyung's fault. He looks normal, gentle, and honest, but turns out he's so rude. However, that roughness is also charming. It's what brings me a joy I've never felt before. Jisoo spoke as if she were bragging to her friend about her experiences. Shin Hai completely disbelieved in this pick-me-girl act and wanted to expose the truth, saying, Really? But I don't think he's rough. Did you tear this dress yourself? Seeing that Shin Hai was not convinced, Jisoo pulled the torn dress open, revealing a red handprint prominently imprinted on her buttocks, putting on a dramatic display. I couldn't do that myself. Normally, I can't even open a bottle cap. If you don't believe me, take a look at this. After witnessing the handprint on Jisoo's buttocks, Shin Hai was momentarily in disbelief, exclaiming, It's a cover-up, such a big cover-up. She probably didn't do it herself. It's impossible. Jisoo's plan seemed to have completely defeated Shin Hai. Shin Hai, now trembling, could only sit on the bed. Seeing Shin Hai's reaction, Jisoo secretly rejoiced in her success. Still playing the pick-me-girl role, she tried to appear concerned. Shin Hai, why are you shaking like that? Put on more clothes to avoid catching a cold. Shin Hai was entirely agitated by Jisoo's words and couldn't resist rushing out. Jisoo, seeing her plan succeed so perfectly, became smug, smiling as she watched Shin Hai leave. It's too late to sacrifice yourself for Kim Taehyung now. The man will forever belong to his first woman. Kim Taehyung is truly formidable, especially when he plays with me in the end, making people feel comfortable. I wonder when he can continue. Yeah. Outside the male dormitory, Shin Hai walked while holding her phone, silently thinking. No response to both messages and calls. It seems like Kim Hin Jisoo wasn't lying. If it's true, I need to take control of the situation. In her mind, she pictured him surrounded by beauties, such as a charming nurse or a seductive flight attendant, a tall maid in a short skirt. She thought to herself, a top-notch guy with money and looks like Kim Taehyung still doesn't have a girlfriend. He must be a competitive target for many girls. Shin Hai clenched her fists, determinedly, saying, I absolutely won't give up. Behind Shin Hai, there were a few guys gossiping. Why is that girl dressed so scantily? Who was she waiting for? Maybe she had a fight with her boyfriend and ran here. Look at those legs, so slender. The next morning, he was walking down the street while eating and murmuring. Last night, playing cards and fighting, exhausted. I need to go home and sleep quickly. Suddenly, he spotted a familiar figure. It's Park Shin Hai. Some guys nearby were gossiping. Hey, isn't that Park Shin Hai? I saw her waiting here yesterday too. Isn't she waiting all night? Shin Hai, seeing him, rushed over and hugged him, calling him Kim Taehyung. Kim Taehyung, you're finally back. He looked at her with a guilty and embarrassed expression, asking, Did you wait for me all night? Shin Hai nestled into his chest, saying, It's okay. You're busy, so waiting for you is something I should do. I just wanted to let you know that I understand. He asked in surprise. Know what? Shin Hai looked at him from the beginning and said, You excel so much. I know there's a considerable gap between us. There must be many girls pursuing you, so I willingly understand the situation. To ease the boredom, Shin Hai began to act, Oh, suddenly dizzy. Surprisingly, he caught her and said, Yeah, are you okay? Let me take you back to rest. In the bedroom, Shin Hai said, Thank you for bringing me back. While tucking her in, he asked, Are you awake now? Shin Hai expressed a seductive look and said, Kim Tae Young, you're so good to me. He blushed, looking at Shin Hai and said, I. Shin Hai hugged him and said, You were busy all night yesterday. Let me give you a massage. He thought, She waited for me all night and even wants to massage me. This convenient person is not normal, but if the meat is offered for free, why not eat it? Then he smiled and asked, Do you know how to massage? Lying on the bed, Shin Hai sat on him, massaging his shoulders, and said, Of course, just relax and rest. He closed his eyes, enjoying it, and said, So comfortable. Hearing this, Shin Hai raised her leg and started massaging. He blushed, enjoying it, This place is a bit far from the school. In two days, I'll take you to buy a room near the school. He thought, this is a chance to spend money. Shin Hai happily embraced him and then kissed him on the cheek, exclaiming, 
Oh my, really, you're so good to me. I love you so much. The system sound echoed with a 4% increase in favorability, and Park Shin Hai's favorability rating was 95%. She then hugged him in a somewhat ambiguous posture, surrounded by a pink atmosphere. Her hand was placed beneath him as she said, From now on, can I give you a massage every day? He replied very quickly, Of course you can. In the room, the sound of heavy breathing filled the air. After a while, they stopped. At this point, Shin Hai texted her friend, engaging in conversation. Jisoo, what should I do now? Kim Taehyung just said he wants to buy a house for me. He gave me a million before to buy a bag, and now he wants to buy a house. I feel uneasy about it. What should I do? It's really bothering me. Upon reading Shin Hai's message, Jisoo on the other end shouted in anger, What? Kim Taehyung wants to buy a house for that convenient person. Does she deserve it? Scheming, Jisoo replied, Oh really? If he gives it to you, just accept it. Anyway, Kim Taehyung has so much money he can't spend it all. Taking care of these shadowy figures, I can't be bothered with how he spends his money. Shin Hana quickly replied, That's true. So I'll agree with him. Kim Taehyung and I haven't been together for long. Him giving me so much money doesn't feel right. Besides, I've never heard of Kim Taehyung spending money on you. As sisters, you're hiding things too well. Jisoo cursed silently, but still responded calmly. Money is just a worldly possession. It's not a big deal. What's important is the harmony between Kim Taehyung and me. Shin Hai, she doesn't understand our relationship. Shin Hai read those lines and smiled, laughing to death. Wait until Kim Taehyung buys me a house, and I'll take a selfie with him on the sofa in the living room and send it to her. She can continue being crazy in her indignation. In the afternoon, he walked out with a relaxed expression. There was still a white cloth around his neck. After the massage this morning, I had a pleasant nap. Suddenly, his phone notified him. He opened it and saw the notification. Who sent the message like that? In his chat frame, there were only beautiful women. Yesterday's message from Han Na Reed. Kim Taehyung. Where are you? I have something to tell you. Following, Shin Hai's message was Jisoo's. My way still hurts now. But how about we go out for dinner sometime? Accompanied by a seductive photo of herself. In today's updates, Yang Yud smiled and said, Boss John, I've found a professional team and the chip development is more stable. If you have time, I'd like to meet you at 1124. Next was a message from Song Hai Kyo. Today, I went with the professor to arrange storage at the museum and I found it at 132. Jenny's message at 1358. Kim Tae Young. I've finished shooting and am preparing to leave. Before I go, I want to meet you. He exclaimed, Oh, why so many messages like this? I only didn't check messages for a day. He scratched his head, saying, Before, I used to send messages to girls, and they didn't bother to reply. Now it's the opposite. Oh my, it's tough dealing with so many girls. Where can I find the time to chat with all of them? One message that caught his attention was from his boss, Min Sik, the car dealer. Boss Joan, the car you ordered today has arrived. When can I deliver it to you? He sighed. So many tasks lately that I forgot about this. But I still haven't saved up enough money for the car yet. He replied to the message. It's all right, Boss Min Sik. I'll pick up the car myself. He rubbed his chin, saying, Afternoon has no tasks. Might as well go there. Let's see if the car looks as good as in the pictures. The Seoul Auto Exhibition was vibrant with dozens of people inside showcasing luxurious supercars and captivating car models. The enthusiastic staff joyfully welcomed customers. As he entered the exhibition, he looked around and commented, It's indeed a large auto show. Chairman Choi is quite shrewd. I came to pick up my car, and he conveniently treats his cars as display items. Many high-end cars are still unnamed. By the way, this is my first time attending a car exhibition. Observing the surroundings, his gaze collided with those of the foreigners exuding an aura of wealth. Oh my, there are quite a few foreigners here, he remarked. The famous foreigners were announced, Mr. Stephen, the boss, is here. He turned to eavesdrop, and three figures entered. The head figure was Boss Stephen, a charming lady with rounded hills, named Choi Hai Ji, and the confused guy next to her was Su Bin. Su Bin approached Ji Ji. Ji Ji, are you thirsty? Let me get you some water. Ji Ji, indifferent, replied, not thirsty. Subin persisted, 
All right, are you hungry then? Let me get you some food. Not hungry either. On the other side, Boss Steven was warmly welcomed by the two servers. Boss Steven, today's business is not bad. Sales are going well. Another server brought Coca-Cola to offer to Boss Steven, who declined, saying, No, thanks. While feeling thirsty, he smiled and waved at the server, saying, Give me a glass of cola. He enjoyed the Coca-Cola refreshingly, exclaiming, Refreshing. I didn't expect the car exhibition to offer food and drinks. He continued to enjoy his meal, oblivious to the disdainful look from the server, who perhaps looked down on him for being less affluent. Suddenly, his eyes collided with a free ice cream counter. Wow, there's free ice cream, and it's Haven Das. It's sold for 30 yuan per small box outside, unexpectedly so generous in here. Approaching, he smiled and said, Beautiful lady, one ice cream, please. Upon hearing this, a server smiled apologetically. Sorry, all the ice cream has been given out. The other server next to her, not fond of him, turned away to another area, muttering, this poor and ugly guy came to the exhibition. Hearing that, he just rubbed his head and walked away, saying, Oh, it would have been better if I came a bit earlier. After he left, Boss Steven approached. Is there any ice cream left? Seeing that he was a wealthy foreigner, the two servers immediately greeted him with a smile, presenting a box of ice cream. Yes, there is. Please enjoy it slowly, sir. After Boss Steven enjoyed his ice cream and left, three girls approached the ice cream counter. Wow, it's Haven Das, give me a portion. However, the two servers refused once again, saying, Sorry, miss, it's all gone. Hearing this, the three girls walked away with a slightly regretful expression. Too bad. The two servers behind the counter share a mocking smile, unable to tolerate such discrimination. He stepped forward, saying, Wait a minute. His voice was loud enough to startle the server and the girls nearby, leaving everyone stunned. His face showed a hint of anger, directed towards the girls from earlier. They told me and these three girls that the ice cream is finished. The foreigner just now claimed there was still some. What kind of person is she to have this ice cream reserved? The girls behind overheard and looked towards him. Then they glanced around, and one of them discovered, Oh, there's something going on here. Did you see those two foreigners? They both have ice cream. What's happening? The two servers wore a diplomatic smile. Sorry, there's a limited quantity each day, only provided to a few special customers, they said. Though they uttered these words, in their hearts, they cursed everyone for being the nuisance. Truly, their words were different from their thoughts. He looked at the smirking server and sarcastically remarked, Special customers, only those from abroad, right? Hearing this, the server's face turned dark with anger, glaring at him. He persisted, Do you still have any ice cream for us? It's embarrassing to have missed the last batch earlier. I don't believe you've run out. I bet you could open the box to show me. The commotion on his side caught the attention of those nearby. Boss Steven inquired, Who's causing trouble in my exhibition area? Su Bin, upon hearing this, hurriedly tried to pacify. Mr. Steven, it's these foreigners causing a disturbance. I'll handle it. GG, on the side, remained absorbed in her phone, indifferent to the commotion around her. Su Bin left but not without waving a farewell to GG. GG, even your brother's business, how Chairman Choi influences it. Don't worry, you have me here. GG I remained indifferent, focusing on the phone, silently cursing. This Su Bin is such a bother. If it weren't for his collaboration with my brother, I really wouldn't want to pay attention to him. Su Bin approached the group, asking, Hey, what's all the fuss about? The two serving girls explained in unison, Su, it's under your responsibility. He clarified. Ha, huh, so I'm in charge here, right on time. These two servers only give ice cream to foreigners. Local people don't get the privilege. Su Bin moved closer, mocking. Is there a problem? Foreigners have money. What about you? He looked down on him disdainfully. People who come to car exhibitions freeload, drink, and eat for free. Just like you. Don't cause trouble here. Hearing this, he responded candidly. You've disappointed me. I came here to pick up my car. Upon his words, the two serving girls and Su Bin burst into laughter. Ha ha, hee hee. Perplexed, he questioned. What's so funny? Su Bin and the serving girl looked at him with a mocking gaze. A guy who's both poor and ugly like you, claiming to buy a car worth 60,000 TWD, 
Can't even tell a convincing lie. In the Sewell Auto Show, there's no car price lower than 100000 TWD, understand? This guy was indeed ugly, so much that it made dogs close their eyes in sympathy. While calling him poor might be acceptable, labeling him as ugly was beyond tolerable. To call them ugly when he looked like this was an insult even to dogs. People around started discussing. What's happening over there? This guy seems to be both poor and ugly, sneaking in here, eating and drinking while causing trouble. What audacity. Kick him out quickly. Su Bin approached him even closer, saying, What are you pretending for? Your face is so thick. The people around kept mocking his poverty, so he helplessly took out a card from his pocket, finally found it. Chairman Choi gave this to me this morning. He pulled out a black VIP card, raising it high for everyone to see. The crowd that was gossiping earlier was now stunned. I can't be mistaken, right? This is a VIP card from Big Bang. Only five of them are given out at the Jangnan Auto Show. The VIP card from Big Bang. Someone who has spent over a million at the auto show and has a net worth of at least a billion is the only one qualified to possess. He held the card in his hand. At this moment, his gaze seemed to be looking down on ordinary people. Finally, he could pause and listen to what others had to say, right? Indeed, you could only have a conversation if you had money. The two serving girls who were handing out ice cream earlier now became timid, continuously bowing and apologizing. I'm sorry. We were wrong. We didn't know you were. Before she could finish her sentence, he interrupted. Did you make a mistake? The person you should apologize to is not just me, but all the Chinese people at this auto show. The cause of this issue is these foreign-born girls, with no relation to whether I can afford a car or not. The girls behind him felt it was right to speak up. That's right. Ice cream is just a small matter. Do you think we really care about a small tub of ice cream? What we noticed was that you knelt for too long and didn't learn how to stand up properly. People around cheered and applauded. Well said, little sister is really awesome. The car boss should give us a reasonable explanation. He turned to the girl talking. Little sister, you're really cool. Like for you. Seeing the blushing girl, it was clear he wasn't just casually flirting. Su Bin was sweating bullets gritting his teeth in frustration. Suddenly, Gigi appeared out of nowhere. Without hesitation, she rushed towards him. Mr. Kim Taehyung. Still bewildered, he looked down at Gigi. You are blushing. Gigi looked up. Mr. Kim Taehyung. Why did you come without any notice? You are an important guest. Please wait a moment. When the ribbon is cut, you must stand in the center. He, still confused, responded. What? Gigi pressed closer to him. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Choi Hai Ji, the younger sister of Chairman Choi. I always listen to my brother talking about you. I really admire you. He still bewildered, said, Um, hello. I didn't expect Chairman Choi to have such a lovely sister. Su Bin's face turned pale. GG, who is this person? Suddenly, you run over and take Hai Ji away. GG looked at Su Bin. Hey, Su Bin, these two are from Steven's car business. How should we resolve this matter? I don't need to say, right? Su Bin was bewildered. It's troublesome. I didn't expect it to cause such a big commotion. To avoid affecting my business, I can only. Su Bin pointed directly at the two female employees. These two are temporary employees. They did this on their own. I am also extremely angry about it. Steven's car business will immediately remove these two to express our attitude. The two service girls spoke up. Sue, this is not our fault. However, Su Bin ignored his loud scolding. Shut up. People around couldn't help but discuss. If they can hear, that's enough. These two are already very suspicious. Gigi stepped forward, holding his hand. Wait a minute, is demotion the only consequence? The nearby service girl, a bit frightened, stuttered. What do you want, Mr. Kim Taegyung? Do you need me to call security to give them a beating for you? But he didn't care. No need to pay attention to them. Gigi looked down at the two service girls. Consider yourselves lucky. Chairman Jian generously forgives you. Now, get lost. The two girls quickly bowed and thanked profusely. Thank you. Thank you. After that, they hurriedly left the car exhibition. However, one of them stumbled and fell to the ground due to their haste. The two girls became the laughingstock of the exhibition, with people around continuously mocking. Ha 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 ha. The crowd was buzzing. Who is Chairman Jian? I'd never heard of him. 
But how come Chairman Choi's sister actively sticks to a man she just met for the first time? You don't know how your goddess took the initiative. Every word from the people around made Su Bin stand angrily in a corner. He gritted his teeth, shivering uncontrollably. So it's him. He humiliated me on the live stream before, and now he's snatching Choi Hai Ji. Taeyong and Ji Ji stood in the midst of the crowd, where everyone constantly leaned in to chat. Taeyong wanted to rely on a large, sturdy tree nearby. Miss Hai Ji, you just mentioned that this guy is Chairman Jeon. This is Chairman Jeon who spent tens of billions on that live stream platform. Any room for pretending? I've admired Chairman Jeon for a long time. I'm from the Jeon BM Consumption Company, and I am. Su Bin approached Stephen, bowing with a respectful attitude. Mr. Stephen, I'm truly sorry. Originally, this matter was easy to resolve. But unexpectedly, the other person is Chairman Jeon, a recently famous second-generation rich kid who flaunts his money and likes to cause trouble everywhere. Definitely a social delinquent. This scoundrel clearly wanted to tarnish Taehyung's image in Stephen's eyes. He pointed at Taehyung. This time, he definitely intended to cause trouble, affecting our booming luxury car consumption business. Hearing this, Stephen agreed. All right, I'll handle them. Stephen approached Taehyung, and in a loud voice, he called out, Chairman Jeon Wright. Stephen crossed his arms with a slightly uncomfortable and angry expression. I'm Stephen. I heard Chairman John is extremely wealthy, spending money like water. Why do I feel it's a bit fake? I smell the scent of a Ponzi scheme around here. Hearing Stephen's words, Taehyung scratched his head in confusion and asked again, Ha! Huh, what is a Ponzi scheme? Seeing that Taehyung didn't understand at all, Stephen didn't know what else to say. Gigi stepped forward and whispered to Taehyung to explain. Mr. Kim Taehyung, a Ponzi scheme is a fraud originating from abroad. Basically, it's an empty-handed wolf in sheep's clothing, deceiving investors. Hearing that, Taehyung just smirked mockingly. So it's the invention of you foreigners. Stephen, enraged, pointed directly at Taehyung's face. The biggest characteristic of a Ponzi scheme is that the scammer is very cunning, always present in the upper class, and acts very generously. The main purpose is to deceive as many wealthy people as possible to invest. This is not something you always do. Hearing him say that, the people around couldn't help but be amazed. It seems quite accurate. Many times looking for him to invest. Turns out Chairman Jeon is a truly frightening scammer. I was almost swindled. GG stepped forward to break the encirclement for Young. Mr. Stephen, do you have any evidence? If not, please don't accuse Mr. Kim Young. Stephen had no evidence. But he liked to talk without proof, saying, So does he have evidence to prove that he is not a scammer? Taehyung didn't care, turned away, yawned, and showed an attitude of dissatisfaction, not bothering to acknowledge him. This is boring. I'm getting sleepy. Going to grab a drink to wake up. Hearing him say that, the man behind could only stand gaping, knowing he couldn't do anything to Taehyung. So Stephen turned to point directly at the girl from earlier. These three girls are your accomplices, cooperating with each other. The girl, angered, spoke out without thinking. You? You shut up. Stephen approached the girl, eyes wide open, and threatened. If you don't honestly confess, I'll call security. Taehyung couldn't endure it any longer, so he slowly stepped forward. Stephen, isn't it? He challenged. Congratulations on successfully provoking me. Let me play with you. Gigi also stood up for him from behind. Can't do anything. Mr. Kim Young. and you resort to bullying someone else's daughter. Truly despicable. Stephen applauded, his face showing a bit of satisfaction. Why run away? It's very simple. Just prove that you have more money than me, and I'll believe you. But if you lose, you have to publicly announce to the entire city that you're a scammer. Gigi couldn't bear to hear any more, but didn't know what else to say, sir. People, upon hearing about this bet, couldn't help but find it amusing, discussing, and buzzing around. Mr. Stephen is one of the top car agents of Vin Group. He came to Seoul to advertise the new VinFast car brand, and he's being overly oppressive. This pretentious rich guy can't possibly have more money than Mr. Stephen. Young stepped forward, raising a challenging finger. Okay, okay, let's play it that way. If you lose, you have to publicly announce to the entire city of Seoul that you're a businessman who bullies small businesses. Are you up for it? Hearing this, Stephen widened his eyes. 
pointing at the man on the other side. Arrogant brat, I will make you fail miserably. Hey, the guy across the street, I'll give you a car worth a billion. Hearing that, the man was overjoyed, really? Thank you, Mr. Stephen. Stephen approached Taehyung with a challenging face. President John, do you dare? What do you have if you don't dare? Apart from money, you have nothing. GG, angry, stepped forward and shouted, This is unfair. You're the CEO. These cars belong to you. Stephen raised his hand and declared to the surrounding crowd, These cars, indeed, are the ones I spent money to buy. Is there any problem, or President John doesn't have the money to buy them? GG also didn't know what to say, sir. After that, she could only fall silent. Taehyung raised his hand to comfortingly pat Gigi's head. It's okay, hi G. Accepting the challenge, Taehyung raised his hand toward the three girls. The two billion supercar, not bad for President Choi's exhibition. Each of these three girls gets one as compensation for the oppression they faced. And so each of those three girls got a two billion car, adding up to a total of six billion yuan, spent on shopping. The people around couldn't believe their eyes. Everyone exclaimed, Oh my, it's real. He paid it all directly and didn't even change his expression. Doubting President Jun's resources, it's unbelievable. I'd never doubted it before. The three girls approached, thanking Taehyung. Heavens, thank you, President Jun. This gift is too precious. We don't know how to express our gratitude. Taehyung heard that and casually said, No need to keep it in your heart. It's just a game. We can't afford to lose to that foreign guy. GG, happily, got closer to Taehyung. Kim Taehyung, you're really cool. I know you're not an ordinary person. And so, the two of them continued to spend money like water. Taehyung shouted, spending like this. Let's see how many cars you can buy. I'll give a one billion car to the person across the street. Do you dare to give away for free? Subtracting one billion two hundred million. Two billion five hundred million continuously this one then that one, and that one. The amount continuously increased to 1 billion 500 million, 3 billion 600 million, 3 billion 200 million. Su Bin approached him and whispered, Mr. Stephen, we've given away everything from 1 billion and above, except for the two at the beginning. It's already happened. We've truly given everything to the person across the street. We've incurred a loss of a few billion. Hearing that, he couldn't believe his eyes, and his words trembled a bit. How can he give away cars worth twice or three times mine every time, and even pay it all? Does his money never run out? Taehyung stepped forward, teasingly rubbing his chin. Mr. Stephen, did you run out because the cars are all gone, or did the money on the card run out? These words touched his pride. He stepped forward, touching a second expensive car in the exhibition. Before, before were just small battles. I admit this scammer tricked a considerable amount of money. You can spend extravagantly like this, but I'll give you a globally limited Lamborghini LP74, valued at 4 billion. Money can't buy it. How do you plan to compare now? Though he spoke boldly, his heart was truly bleeding, regretting the loss. Taehyung, upon hearing this, looked around and remarked, Oh, is that so? Stephen stepped forward. What's the matter? Want to back out? If you can't find a high-end limited edition car, consider yourself defeated. Hearing this, Gigi angrily shouted, Stephen, you're going too far. Kim Taehyung spent more money than you, and now you want to change the rules. He shamelessly changed the rules. He only needs to offer a price similar to mine. If he likes to spend more, what does it have to do with me? Gigi, not knowing what to say, could only curse two words. Shameless. The people around seemed to follow the prevailing wind. Money may buy people, but it won't erase the truth. Quickly find an authorized agency to investigate him. Right, President Jian has lost the game. No need to compare anymore. Immediately expose the scam. He approached the most luxurious car on display, asking, Is this the limited edition? The girl, surprised, replied, That's the idealized Rolls Royce. He playfully rubbed his head. This is just for exhibition, not for sale. If you want it, break your legs and take it. He turned to the man with a serious look. Thank you for teaching me the saying, a dog jumps over the wall. Can you explain its meaning? Hearing this, the man burst into tears of laughter. The drama has ended. You should kneel down and admit you're a scammer, President Jun. Many people are watching, no need to pretend. Just as he spoke, Chairman Choi rushed in with an excited face. 
President John is here. Why didn't you inform me so I could come and welcome you, Chairman Choi? Chairman Choi approached, shaking hands with him, a flattering expression on his face. This is the Rolls Royce you ordered, sir, placed at the exhibition to attract visitors without your consent. I hope you don't mind. Would you like to test the car now? Chairman Choi's words infuriated the man. People around couldn't believe their ears. What? Chairman Choi is not mistaken. This is his car. How could it be? He walked closer to Gigi, words dripping sweetness into her ears. No need to test anymore. I believe you can swipe your card. I'm giving this car to Choi Hai Ji. Gigi blushed at his words, her heart pounding incessantly. Do you like him? The announcement from the cash swipe machine echoed. Payment successful. 800 million collected. Hearing this, Stephen couldn't believe his eyes. He was in disbelief, bloodshot eyes, ears, and mouth, a slightly panicked expression on his face. What? People around widened their eyes, everyone holding their heads in disbelief. Stephen's car, compared to this one, is like straw. 800 million is more expensive than Stephen's limited edition. What's even more astonishing is that this new car is given as a gift. If someone gives me a car like this, I would willingly call him my father. On this side, Gigi was so happy that she kissed him on the cheek. Chairman Choi stood behind, scratching his head in bewilderment. John, President John, is this true? Are you really giving it to my sister? Gigi looked at him with a surprise and admiring gaze. Kim Tae Young, you're really kind. Stephen approached him, bowed slightly, his voice hoarse. Mr. Stephen, what else do you want to compete with? At this point, he couldn't say anything more, just mumbled, I, I admit defeat. He chuckled, embracing GG in his arms. Well, in that case, it's a game with consequences. Speed up a bit. Stephen furrowed his brow, beads of sweat forming, his entire body trembling. He self-reproached, I was wrong. This guy isn't a scammer. He genuinely has money, spends extravagantly, and doesn't even bother to blink an eye. I can't fathom how formidable the situation behind him is. It's frightening. In the midst of a dense crowd, Stephen, facing Taeyong, exclaimed loudly, I was wrong. I dared to doubt President John's identity. Seeing that he hadn't grabbed the spotlight yet, Taeyong spoke loudly, to get to the point, I am a morally corrupted capitalist. Seeing China as an easy target, I intentionally make money from the people. I am shameless. This old man was brutally honest, and the surrounding people cheered. This foreigner, pay up. Support domestic products. Never buy Vin fast cars again. Seeing that he had genuinely changed his heart, Young let it slide. He waved his hand signaling, All right, get lost. Yes. He was chased by a group of people, cursed and scolded. Don't think you can escape so easily. Catch him. This manager is also an obedient dog, returning all the cars and still having to make him compensate for the multiplied mental losses. He ran while shouting, Don't come here. After the crowd dispersed, there was still a group of people surrounding him, and GG, continuously praising. Thanks to President John for helping us see the true face of that foreigner. President John, do you lack jewelry? You're so cool. You helped us vent our anger. At this moment, his phone also rang. He took it out and answered, Hello. On the other side, GG was thinking about something. Kim Taehyung has a real charm. Although it's our first meeting, I really want. What does she want? Gigi, with her loving gaze, turned to Taehyung. Kim Taehyung, I want to date you. But before she could finish her sentence, she noticed he was no longer beside her. Where did he go? Seeing her like that, the people kindly pointed. Heat on the phone, ran over to the other direction, unable to express any words to him and unable to invite him for a meal. Gigi angrily stepped forward and punched President Choi in the face, hitting his body. Oh, with such a good opportunity just now, I shouldn't have hesitated. It's infuriating. President Choi, confused by the attack, asked, Why are you hitting me? Meanwhile, Taehyung was standing outside the exhibition area, waiting for someone. Unexpectedly, the person he was waiting for turned out to be Yang Yoon, who waved at him. President Jeon is here. He cheerfully and playfully responded, Yang Yoon, you look even more beautiful after just a few days without seeing each other. Hearing this, Yang Yun blushed and felt happy. Really, it's strange. When other men compliment me, I find it repulsive. But when President Jung compliments me, it brings a bit of joy. 
Liking someone. What else can you say? The favorability rating increased by another 2%. He approached her, scratching his head. It's a bit embarrassing. The university requires us fourth-year students to intern. Just bothering you to help me find a company, not a big deal. Others may think that President John, with so much money, doesn't need to earn a few internship credits. But I understand you. You must be like me, not agreeing to take over the family business and wanting to build a new career on your own. That's why you're interning to gain experience. Seeing her talk about so many unrelated things, but he cheerfully brushed it off. Exactly, exactly, exactly. The main thing is that if you lack a few points, you won't graduate, but it makes people think you're long-winded. The two of them continued their conversation in the car. President John, I've arranged a position for you as a director with a monthly salary of 600000 plus a 5 million annual bonus. Hearing this, he declined, no, no, lower it. Being an employee with a 5,000 monthly salary is enough. All right, that's the true President John. Meanwhile, in a tall skyscraper building, people in the company were discussing the new employee. Have you heard? Among the new employees who arrived today, one was arranged by the CEO. Oh, we must take advantage and strengthen our relationship. Maybe there's a chance for promotion in the future. Hopefully, he's a handsome guy. While chatting happily, a girl appeared. The boss is here. Quickly get back to your positions. This girl was Su Min, the team leader. She ordered everyone, but in her heart, she felt a bit dissatisfied. A bunch of ugly people daydreaming in broad daylight. What am I doing here with these people? In the distance, two people whispered, Did you see Su Min today, dressed especially hot? It seems like this Su Min girl is also trying to attract some men. The director led the two newcomers in to introduce them to everyone in the company, saying, Attention, everyone. These two are our new colleagues. Why don't you introduce yourselves? One guy, flaunting his style, ran his fingers through his hair and proudly showed off his luxury watch. Hello, everyone. I'm Park Kim Bin. The other guy introduced himself as well. Hello, everyone. I'm Kim Tae Young, a fourth year student at Seoul University. Seeing this, Su Min the girl burst into laughter. One is a poor student, and the other is someone with a Rolex. Just by looking, you can tell Park Kim Bin is the one arranged by the CEO. This girl really has an expressive face. Park Hyun Bin glanced at the director. Rest assured, son. The only one getting officially promoted this month is definitely you. Unfortunately, the company doesn't allow family members to work in the same department, so I have to be modest. It seems this guy has some ambitions. After the two newcomers sat at their desks, Su Min immediately assigned tasks. She placed a stack of documents on Kim Tae Young's desk, saying, New guy, this is your task for today, yes. Then, she went to Park Yen Bin. But unlike with Kim Tae Young, she showed a gentle attitude and handed him just one set of documents. Hyun Bin, this is your task for today. Seeing this, Kim Tae Young disagreed and raised his hand, saying, Wait a minute, team leader. Why does my workload exceed Park Yen Bin's several times? She looked sternly, arms crossed. I'm the team leader. You're a team member. Follow the distribution. Any problem? Are you questioning my decision? Hearing that, he didn't bother to argue anymore. Fine, it's not easy to work as an employee. On the first day, I'm already underestimated. She turned away with disdain. Also, don't overestimate yourself. Unfortunately, I'm the bright moon you'll never reach. This girl seems to have a massive self-delusion. She approached Hyun Bin, deliberately showing off her curves and hot body. If there's anything Hyun Bin doesn't understand, feel free to ask me. I'm not very familiar with this team leader position. She leaned in, her face excited. Which part? Hyun Bin, without much concern, glanced at her cleavage, inwardly impressed. This woman is something, very attractive. By six o'clock, he had completed his work and brought it to her attention. Team leader, the work is finished. While she was reviewing the report, he called her back. She looked at the documents, eyes wide open, mouth agape. The completion progress is too high. How can he be so capable? It seems you also have some real talent. She looked at him with a sharp gaze and then brought the pile of documents to Hyun Bin. Hyun Bin, I've helped you complete these tasks. Submit them to the supervisor for approval. Hearing this, he happily reached out to take them. Sure, thank you, team leader. He stood behind, 
bewildered and unsure of what to say. Unable to contain his anger, he stepped forward to question Su Min. What do you mean by this? I complete the task, and he gets all the credit. This Su Min woman felt no shame. Instead, she proudly smiled and then, with a mocking look, glanced at him before responding. An undergraduate like you should focus on improving. Many others didn't even have this opportunity. Hearing these shameless words from Su Min, he couldn't help but burst into laughter, asking her, Your brainwashing rhetoric is quite impressive. Aren't you afraid the director will find out? Su Min, far from feeling any fear, responded provocatively, Laughable. Do you still want to meet the director? Finding her lack of reason amusing, he no longer cared and turned away, saying, All right, I hope you can maintain this arrogant attitude. Shortly after, Su Min dispersed as well leaving the company gate with that shameless man. The two walked intimately together, showing no regard for anyone around. He walked alongside Su Min, flattering her. Team Leader Min, thanks to you, everything is stable in my world today. Su Min, enjoying the flattery, responded, No need to be polite, just call me Su Min. He then took the opportunity to invite her. Su Min, would you like to have dinner with me? Without hesitation, Su Min agreed, thinking to herself. This wealthy old man has ten chances out of ten. Indeed, the two seemed well-matched, like a horse and carriage. After Su Min agreed to dinner, he excused himself, saying, I'll go get my car. Wait for me there. At the same time, he also left. On his way out, he encountered the two individuals who were like a horse and carriage. Su Min happened to stand right next to his car, making him feel unlucky. Really unfortunate. Why is she standing right next to my car? Despite her presence, Su Min seemed to have some connection with him. Even when it was time to leave, he couldn't avoid encountering her face. In any case, due to the circumstances, he had to approach her and say, Excuse me for a moment. Surprisingly, Su Min showed no sign of shame. Assuming he was attracted to her, she turned away dismissively, mocking, Ha, I knew it. Back in the office, arguing with me in front of everyone was just for show. Now that you have the chance, you come over here to talk to me. Her arrogant attitude and delusional words frightened him. He never expected her self-absorption to be so severe. Unable to contain herself, she continued to taunt him. Look at yourself. You think you can feast on a swan when you haven't even looked at your own appearance. It's laughable. I admit you had some ability. But unfortunately, you're still an undergrad with no money and no backing. In today's world, you simply have no advantage. Helpless, he sat there listening to her nonsense wanting her to realize the issue and keep her distance. He didn't want to reach a point where it would be embarrassing, and he'd have to face the world without any dignity. I think you've misunderstood. She continued her taunts, trying to appear superior. Want to be a spare tire? I'm sorry, you haven't met the standards for being my spare tire. Seeing that she refused to listen to his advice, he decided not to waste more words on advising her. No matter what he did, it would be like pouring water on a duck's back. Right after that, he stepped forward, pulled his car out bluntly, and said to her, Step aside. You're blocking my way to get my car. Su Min, witnessing this series of actions, was astonished, feeling like she wanted to disappear. Fortunately for her, the other arrogant guy arrived just in time to rescue her. He drove his supercar over and couldn't resist making a sarcastic comment. Kim Tae Young, you're driving this wreck. How do you even manage to get around? Released from the encirclement by that guy, she continued to display her arrogant demeanor, stepping onto his car, while saying, Let's go like this. Hyun Bin is taking me out to dinner. I can conveniently drop you off along the way. This is a rare opportunity to ride in a luxurious car, you know. She had just been embarrassed by him. But now, she continued to be arrogant and taunt him like this. Truly, she was a shameless woman. The other guy chimed in. If Su Min said that, I can give you a ride too. Ignoring their annoying remarks, he simply made their words fall on deaf ears. He decisively got on his steed, leaving them in surprise. Then, he revved the engine and sped past two men, causing her to lose balance and fall embarrassingly. People often say that evil begets evil. Sue Min received her instant karma for being swift in getting her comeuppance. The radiant protagonist was certainly not easily bullied by these individuals. Seeing her fall flat on her face, the other guy immediately stepped down, expressing concern. Su Min, are you okay? Su Min replied, I'm fine. That jerk deserved it. 
Seeing Su Min's angry attitude, the other guy immediately joined in the anger. He's just jealous of me. Let it go. But to vent his frustration on you, I can't forgive him. After sitting up, Su Min quickly took out her mirror to inspect her $12,000 nose. Seeing it scratched, she became extremely angry, saying, truly a pitiful man, unable to possess me. He wants to ruin what he can't have. He must be chased away. The delusions of this girl, Su Min, were truly getting out of hand. If not treated promptly, she might soon start thinking of herself as the queen of the world. After causing her to fall embarrassingly, he happily left on his steed, saying, let this couple continue their antics for another two days. The more arrogant they are, the more painful their fall will be. The next day at the company, Su Min, upon seeing him, couldn't resist seeking revenge. Kim Taehyung, buy coffee for all colleagues in the department. Do it now. He, of course, wasn't willing to easily tolerate this tricky woman, who was eight talls and half a caddy. He immediately responded, why ask me to buy? Seeing his attitude, she furrowed her brows in anger. The new person buys coffee for colleagues. It's a rule. He immediately retorted, Oh, so why doesn't Park Hyun Bin buy? The guy Park Hyun Bin, who was protected by Su Min, didn't hesitate to sit smugly, mocking him without any fear. Su Min, countered by him, had no other argument left and said, You buy today, and he can buy tomorrow. What's the problem? Park Hyun Bin, that guy, couldn't resist butting in. Students are just students, they don't know anything about society, only focusing on studying, ignorant of social dynamics. Now, the teen leader is giving you an opportunity, or are you basically saying you don't want good relations with colleagues? This statement from Park Hyun Bin successfully influenced the remaining colleagues. Though not saying anything aloud, their eyes looked at him in a very different way. Even though unspoken, the pressure was already mounting on him. Immediately after, he turned to address the two of them. Well, both of you are great. Park Hyun Bin, not knowing what's good or bad, continued to approach him. Feigning concern, but actually threatening him. Kim Tae Young, don't act strangely in front of me. I have connections. Whether you could stay after the internship is up to me. You didn't bother staying in this miserable place. Just reaching the end of the internship would be enough to help you graduate. With your capabilities, why stay and work in this filthy place full of flies and mosquitoes? However, you still asked him with a disdainful expression. Oh, what happens next? Seeing that you seem to have been subdued, these two became even more arrogant. They grinned maliciously and said to you, If you become my subordinate, I might consider letting you stay here. Su Min couldn't resist chiming in. Hyun Bin, you're treating him too well. Kim Tae Young should quickly say thank you. Unperturbed, you smile back at the horse-faced duo. I think he should be the one saying thank you to me. Just this remark surprised and dumbfounded them. You didn't stop there and continued speaking, looking at them with a scornful gaze. I'm concerned about the well-being of my junior. That's why I advised him to give up such thoughts. Don't you think you should thank me? Upon hearing these words, the name Hyun Bin completely lost his composure. What did you just say? He was furious and completely oblivious to the working environment around him, which was the workplace. Unfazed, you responded with a smile. I'm speaking the truth. As a student, I don't have money. But after I get my salary, I'll definitely treat everyone to coffee. So let Hyun Bin pay this time. With as much money as Hyun Bin has, it's not just a department. Even people in the company can be treated, right? Afterward, Hyun Bin regained his composure, adjusted his tone, and hesitantly replied, Um, the company is big, with a thousand people. Of course I can treat them. I'm not you. Upon hearing his response, you calmly replied, So I'd like a cup of mocha as a thank you. This completely annoyed Hyun Bin, but there was nothing he could do. He could only grit his teeth in frustration, saying, You. Seeing Hyun Bin's anger, Su Min approached cheerfully and said, Thanks, Hyun Bin. Only someone as generous as you could make friends, unlike someone else, who is both poor and doesn't understand office etiquette. Other colleagues chimed in with thanks. Thank you, Hyun Bin. The team leader is right. After receiving these expressions of gratitude, Hyun Bin seemed to have to concede. Then, reluctantly, he said, Thank you, everyone. Treating everyone to coffee is my honor. Taking advantage of the situation, you added, That's great. From now on, let Hyun Bin cover all the coffee expenses. 
reluctantly accepting. Hyun Bin had no other choice, only able to mutter curses silently in his heart. Wretched fellow, to your surprise, at this unexpected moment, Hyun Bin's father appeared. He had been holding back his frustration until now, and upon seeing his father's arrival, he gleefully pointed at you, signaling his father. This kid bullied me. The dynamics between these two father-son figures were truly sharp. Without uttering a word, the elder father understood his son's intentions, smiling to reassure him. Both of them then exchanged a sly look, and the elderly man began plotting revenge for his son. Attention, everyone. There's an important matter. Su Min, upon seeing Hyun Bin's father, immediately asserted her authority over the remaining employees. The manager is here. Get in order. Once everything was settled, the elderly man continued to address the issue he was discussing. We've just received a project worth eight million, and they're demanding a proposal within three days. Whoever gets their proposal approved will receive a bonus of 80 million. Time is tight, and the task is crucial. Quickly form groups and work on the proposal. Pay attention when selecting team members. They must be cooperative. This elderly man seemed to have a dark sense of humor, with each word carrying its own poison. His words were almost implying that you lacked a spirit of teamwork. The employees present here promptly responded with a collective yes after hearing the elderly man's instructions. Everyone quickly formed into groups, and, of course, the pair with the buffalo and horse faces ended up in the same team. You seem to have anticipated the outcome, realizing that you wouldn't be chosen by anyone in this office, and you didn't feel particularly surprised. Observing that nobody picked you, the pair with the buffalo and horse faces couldn't resist mocking. Ha ha! No one wants to be in a group with Kim Taehyung. If they dared to taunt you like that, you certainly didn't hold back in responding. That's fine. What's the problem? You replied with an indifferent attitude, displaying no hint of fear. Seeing you standing alone, the pair with the buffalo and horse faces thought you wouldn't achieve anything and walked away, continuing to mock you. Ha ha, keep being arrogant. Let's see how many days you can keep smiling. As time passed, everyone in the office was enthusiastically discussing the newly assigned project. In stark contrast, you remained entirely unbothered, casually eating at your desk, seemingly unaffected by the ticking clock. Even when it was time to finish work, you stayed behind for discussions, in an extremely stressful atmosphere, where no one dared to leave the office except for you. You paid no attention to the time, indifferent to everyone's efforts to continue working. Regardless of whether others stayed to work, you didn't care. Alone and undisturbed, you calmly left the office. The three-day deadline had passed, and you felt incredibly relaxed, without a trace of stress. You were able to flawlessly complete the plan, and after updating it, you smiled contentedly, saying, Done. With a third-level intellect, executing this plan was as easy as pie. No need to waste time lying around the office, racking my brain. With your protagonist-level intelligence, you effortlessly finished the plan in the blink of an eye, leaving many in awe. Seeing you in such a cheerful and playful mood, Su Min felt extremely uncomfortable. He hasn't worked overtime for three days, and the meeting is about to start in an hour. Why is he still so relaxed? As a dull and insignificant supporting character, how could she understand the thoughts of the story's main character? This girl was just preparing to receive bitterness from you. The name Hyun Bin remained confident in his own abilities, and witnessing your relaxed demeanor, he expressed his confidence. Look at his appearance. He's probably lazy again. Nothing surprising. Despite hearing these mocking words, you paid them no mind. Indifferently, you turned away to address your concerns in the restroom. Su Min, feeling extremely anxious, couldn't contain her curiosity about your mysterious actions, sneakily peering at your computer screen. The surprise you had prepared for her turned out to be unexpectedly significant. Seeing the plan you had prepared, she was greatly astonished. This... Hyun Bin noticed Su Min's strange reaction and couldn't help but ask, What's wrong? She hesitated for a moment before responding with an anxious tone. Your plan is very professional, the product positioning is precise, and the perspective is fresh, even better than the plans of our three teams. I can't believe this was done in just three days. Hearing Su Min's words, Hyun Bin began to feel concerned, unable to believe his eyes for a moment. What? He must have paid someone to do it. Su Min, Frightened by the comprehensive plan, was so terrified that she broke into a cold sweat, completely disregarding whether you or someone else had created the plan. This is not the focus. 
The meeting is approaching, and we absolutely cannot let him present the report. Just as she was about to have ill intentions toward your plan, you suddenly entered and spoke, startling her. Is there something, team leader? Seeing that you had caught her standing next to your computer, Su Min had to cover up. The report will start in half an hour, and the whole department is busy. You have some free time, so why not head to the meeting room and tidy up a bit? This girl, Su Min, is truly a venomous snake. It's unbelievable that she came up with such a cunning plan. You, of course, have to agree with her. Watching you walk away, Su Min felt like a flag had been planted in her heart, sensing that the time was right. Ha ha, Kim Tae Young. My team is very pleased to accept your proposal. It's really surprising that she could swallow this plan. It seems like she's not afraid of getting stuck. Clearly, she told you to go to meeting room A for cleanup, but now the meeting is taking place in meeting room B. This girl is indeed an extremely, extremely them a snake. The meeting immediately began. Hyun Bin, right after stealing your plan, confidently stood in front of everyone to present. The pod urban development model, park-oriented development, is thriving. Following the ecological infrastructure direction, such as the part and hill water system, this model can support and promote new consumption, the new consumption hotspot in education, and upgrade the surrounding areas. While he was passionately presenting, suddenly your name appeared on the slide, making him startle. The cunning mouse immediately flipped to the previous page to avoid others noticing that he had stolen your plan. Seeing that everyone remained completely unaware, he started silently celebrating in his mind. Too close, luckily no one has seen anything. Director Ah and his father were joyfully discussing his presentation. Very good, very good. This plan is much better than the others. Your employee has great potential. Upon hearing his son being praised, the old man was secretly pleased. That's too much praise. If Director Ah is satisfied with the project, that's good enough. Feeling the director's approval, he happily smiled and said, well, I graduated from MIT, so I must have the competence to match the school. Su Min also chimed in with flattery. Hyun Bin, I didn't expect you to have such outstanding academic achievements. You're amazing. Director Ah, upon hearing the prestigious university's name, praised him. So, you're a talented student from MIT. With such a perfect plan, I have no suggestions for any modifications. Seeing his son being praised like that, the old man felt as if he had blossomed. Looking at his son with a secretly satisfied smile, he prays, Success, my son. You did very well. The old man then presented the contract and said, If that's the case, can we sign this contract? Director Mang is very pleased with this plan, and there's no reason to refuse. No issues. The cunning old man, upon seeing Director Ah preparing to sign, revealed his malicious intentions. With this contract in hand, the process of my promotion to director becomes simple. The do with the faces of an ox and a horse, upon witnessing this, harbored their own calculating thoughts. The 800,000 reward, I can pay off the remaining balance for the Rolex. Hyun Bin and I can split it, each getting 400,000. Immediately go buy the new spring collection of Chanel handbags. Just when this group was feeling delighted, envisioning a bright future ahead, suddenly you burst in and shattered their dreams, saying, stealing someone else's plan. You really have no shame. The old man, upon seeing you appear, was extremely shocked, saying, Kim Taehyung. Director Ah, after hearing your words, also felt extremely surprised, completely unaware of what was happening. Upon seeing you enter, that guy Hyun Bin immediately felt uneasy and singled his father, dad, quickly kicked Kim Taehyung out. The old man instantly grasped the situation, changing his angry tone to scold you, Nonsense, such an important meeting, and you dare to come late, moreover, causing a disturbance when signing the contract. Get out for me quickly. Don't think leaving the room will solve everything. After signing the contract, I'll settle the score with you. Feeling the old man's irrational speech, you promptly exposed the truth. Late, if you hadn't tricked me into meeting in room A, then I would be the one signing the contract now, right? You furrowed your brows, turning to reveal the true faces of the duo with the faces of an ox and a horse. Su Min, Hyun Bin, you stole my plan and dare not admit it. Seeing that everything was about to be exposed, the old man couldn't contain his anger any longer and burst out loudly. The intern, shut your mouth for me. Director Ah, standing nearby, completely puzzled by the situation, 
turned to ask the old man, What is he talking about? The old man still didn't lower his voice. On the contrary, he spoke even louder. The team leader's capability, everyone can see it. Why steal his plan and falsely accuse a colleague? Immediately pack up and leave right now. You completely ignored the old man's words and immediately approached the thieving Hyun Bin step by step. Park Hyun Bin, do you dare to open page 11 for everyone to see who signed it? Seeing you approaching more and more, Hyun Bin became extremely anxious, to the point of sweating profusely, and he began to stammer. Well, why should I open the page? At this moment, Su Min suddenly rushed forward, wanting to reverse the situation. Listen to me, everyone. Here's the thing. When I was discussing the plan with everyone that day, Kim Taehyung unexpectedly made a constructive comment, so I recorded it. I also wrote down this plan under his name, considering it a face-saving gesture for him. Now, he wants to use this as evidence, claiming that we chose his plan. Unexpectedly, this cunning woman could spin such a wild story and turn the situation around. It's truly admirable. Hyun Bin, seeing Su Min launching this counterattack, seemed to regain his smug demeanor. People around, right after hearing the story woven by Su Min herself, paid no attention to how the situation unfolded. They immediately unleashed sarcastic remarks at you. Kim Taehyung has been leaving work on time for the past three days. We haven't seen him working overtime at all. Can he really come up with such a good plan? Who would believe that? Unexpectedly, he is not only lazy, but also wants to snatch the hard-earned achievements of his colleagues. These people are truly going too far. Without even knowing the whole situation, they spoke harshly to you. Even though they criticize you based on a story fabricated by them to shift blame onto you, you showed no concern. Raising an eyebrow, you said, I must say, the teen leader does have some urgent crisis management skills to come up with such a story, but my computer still has several draft plans. How will teen leader Min handle this? Hearing this daring move from you, Su Min was completely helpless and didn't know how to justify herself, standing silent as if struck by lightning. Suddenly, the cunning old man cracked a wicked smile. Then, he pretended to be shocked and shouted loudly to attract everyone's attention. I lost my watch. After that, he turned his accusing finger towards you. Kim Taehyung, are you the thief? Hearing the old man accusing you like that, you were momentarily speechless. He didn't give you a chance to think. He searched your seat, and with his son Hyun Bin acting in perfect harmony, immediately checked your belongings, saying, Yes, manager. Unexpectedly, he found the old man's watch right there in your place. Found it at Kim Taehyung's place. It indeed was stolen by him. This family is indeed sly. They seem determined to destroy your reputation. After being trapped in such a tricky situation, you now truly realize the cunning nature of this father and son. Indeed, their cunningness reaches extraordinary levels. Playing games like this and still managing to succeed deserves a salute. Even though you find yourself in this awkward situation, you can't help but praise. Diverting attention like that, you guys sure know how to play. The reaction was quite something. While you and Su Min were talking, that cunning old man discreetly removed his watch and handed it to his son, Hyun Bin, pretending to look for it at your place. Even if someone were to figure it out now, it wouldn't make a difference. Like father, like son. The satisfaction on the faces of these two is uncanny. The old manager proudly displayed a smug expression, looking at you with a scornful smirk. The evidence is clear. What else can you refute? But because I am a good person, if you kneel down and beg me, I won't involve the police. However, termination is inevitable. Is it really being a good person, or is it just to avoid revealing that his worthless son stole your plan, saying such things without feeling any shame at all? The whole group of employees had no idea about the right or wrong, the beginning or the end of the story. They stuck their noses in and ridiculed you. No mercy from the manager. We should report to the police and fine him. It's terrifying to have people like this as teammates. Who knows when something will be stolen? You sat there listening to the weak criticism from those people. The fire of anger burned fiercely within you. Clearly, you were the victim. So why should you endure such contemptuous words from them? Your eyes at this moment were filled with resentment, staring intensely at the cunning old man. The gaze seemed capable of killing him right there. Seeing the sharp look you directed at him, the old man immediately panicked no longer daring to pretend. He shouted loudly, Get out, aren't you supposed to protect? Drag this person out. The two security guards, 
upon receiving the order, immediately rush forward, ready to use force on you. Yes, boss. This old man then crossed his arms and stood there looking extremely pleased, thinking that this threat was about to be resolved. Just as the two guards were about to approach you, a shocking voice rang out suddenly, Stop! Both security guards immediately looked bewildered but had to halt according to the command. Seeing their astonished expressions, it seemed that the person about to appear played a crucial role in this matter. A graceful lady entered, exuding an extremely elegant appearance. Immediately, both sides stood very seriously to welcome her. She was the director's secretary. The old man, upon seeing the newcomer as the director's secretary, eagerly greeted her, as if a dog had found its owner. Why are you here? Surprisingly, it didn't stop there. Following the secretary was the director, with an imposing aura that made everyone tremble with fear. The old man instantly dared not show arrogance anymore, humbling himself like a dog in front of the female director. He approached with deference. Oh my, why did the director come without saying a word? Let me welcome you. The director paid no attention to this scum, not even sparing a glance. The female secretary, on behalf of the director, replied, The director will come when it's time. Her response was a strong blow to the old man's face, making it clear that no one dared to make a fuss. The old man could only try to please the director, quickly bring a chair here, and you, make my Westlake Longing tea promptly. Director Ah, upon seeing the female director's arrival, immediately stood up to greet her. Boss Yoon, greetings. I am from Vin Holmes Real Estate Development Company. It is truly an honor to meet you. The secretary, on behalf of the director, replied, I apologize, but the director has urgent matters to attend to. The female director completely ignored these individuals, not sparing them a glance, focusing her attention solely on him. She gradually approached him. The old man, after preparing the scene, cheerfully spoke, The tea is ready. Please have a seat. By the way, I just negotiated a large project worth $8 million with Director Ah, and I'm about to inform the boss. He remained joyous welcoming the female director without noticing the current situation had been reversed. He then confidently took the seat prepared for the director. The female director beside him graciously presented the tea, saying, Please enjoy your tea. He responded with authority. Yes. The other four individuals witnessed this scene as if turned to stone, standing still for a few seconds, utterly disbelieving their eyes. Why was someone who had been bullied like this? now sitting confidently in the director's chair and being treated with such respect. He casually enjoyed sipping his tea, complaining nonchalantly, the tea is too hot. Upon hearing his complaint, the female director suddenly became hesitant, bowing slightly in apology. I'm sorry, let me blow on it for you. Director Yoon then took his tea, incessantly blowing on it. The scene appeared quite enchanting, even just watching it was pleasing. Another surprise followed, the malicious bunch, who had criticized him earlier, now looked terrified, gaping in disbelief. What's happening? Am I dreaming? Those submissive employees who had criticized him just moments ago were now terrified, wide-eyed. It was unexpected that he held such authority. I must not be daydreaming. This is... On his side, after blowing on his tea, the female director, concerned, asked, Is the temperature suitable now? Enjoying his tea, he replied cheerfully, Perfect. Thank you. Pleased with his satisfaction, Director Yoon said, Just enjoy your tea. I'll take care of this. He then turned to his secretary, signaling her to handle the situation. Following that, the female secretary also grasped her director's intention and immediately turned to interrogate the cunning old man. See Hai Ran. See Hai Ran, do you know where you went wrong? Seeing the secretary's attitude and demeanor, the old man felt threatened and seemed on the verge of wetting himself as if wanting to relieve himself in his pants. I, I, Kim Tae-young, was he arranged by the director. Before the old man could discern the details of the situation, an employee approached the female secretary and whispered, Secretary C. found it. The secretary took hold of the pile of documents, then threw them directly at the old man, saying, This is the draft of the plan found at Kim Tae-young's place. Take a look for yourself. The old man clutched the trembling stack of documents, kneeling down in fear and stammering. Kim Tae-young made the plan. I wrongly accused him. The meek group of employees, upon learning the truth, looked stunned and realized they had blamed the wrong person. After hearing the old man's confession, 
the female secretary declared, colluding with subordinates, embezzling others' hard work, abusing authority to favor Su Min, promoting Su Min, unqualified, to teen leader, affecting department efficiency, violating company regulations, secretly placing her son in the department, behind the company's back, he has done quite a lot, hasn't he? Every word uttered by the female secretary felt like a deep-cutting knife into the souls of these three individuals. All truths had been laid bare, and they could no longer maintain their arrogance, only experiencing an overwhelming sense of fear. The remaining employees, upon hearing this truth, couldn't escape their astonishment. What? All of this was orchestrated by the management. The female secretary approached the old man, who was still kneeling, and said, Now that you've offended Boss John, your luck has run out. Upon hearing the name Boss John, the old man was bewildered, thinking he must have misheard, and spoke up. Wait, Boss John. The secretary looked towards the one sitting confidently in the chair and said, Boss John, who invested 500 million in the company, is now the largest shareholder, namely Kim Tahyam. Through the secretary's words, it became clear why he held such favor in the company and received such respect from Director Yoon. His face at this moment appeared remarkably triumphant, reveling in the surprise on their faces. The other three, upon learning his true identity, felt as if their mouths were about to bleed and die on the spot. How, how could this be? He can't possibly be Boss John. They say that karma often catches up with the wicked, and now they were tasting the bitterness of life. This shock was truly too immense for them, and they found it difficult to come to terms with it in an instant. After all the things the old man had done to him, Upon learning his true identity, he seemed on the brink of madness. The female secretary immediately declared loudly, Si Hai Ran, Su Min, Hien Bin, dismiss them right here. The old man, shocked by this revelation, and now facing termination, grabbed his head and screamed, No. The guy named Park Hien Bin, realizing the consequences, immediately shifted all blame onto Su Min, looking at her with a bitter gaze. It's all because of this shameless woman. He then turned to confront Su Min directly. You shameless person, you even have a vague relationship with my father, and you came to the hotel with me. Upon hearing him speak like that, Su Min didn't hesitate to spill the truth. What did you just say? I'm the one suffering the most here. I thought you were arranged by the director. Turns out you're just the son of an owner. You pretended to be wealthy for what? The once united couple was now betraying each other. The showdown of the three antagonists unfolded immediately. All three engaged in a chaotic brawl, pulling hair, hitting relentlessly, and constantly blaming each other. Shameless person, you dare to seduce my son. While mom is working hard at home, dad is fooling around with subordinates at the office. Dare to hit me? This troublemaker and this shameless woman just die already. You dare to hit me? I'll talk to your wife. This series of chaotic scenes was truly embarrassing. The truth is always heartbreaking, but who would have expected it to lead to a family brawl like this? The buffalo-headed horse-faced duo, along with the cunning old man, caused such disorder trying to escape the office that the secretary could no longer bear it. She immediately called the security. Shut up. Security, take these three away. As the two security guards entered, all three individuals were dragged away, screaming and shouting incessantly on the ground. The oblivious group of employees, upon learning the true identity of the man, immediately changed their attitude. They bowed and apologized loudly. Director Jun, I apologize for my ignorance. It's all Si Hai Ran who deceived us. I've never liked Su Min. Thank you, Director Jun, for helping me vent my anger. I've always been on Director Jun's side. Indeed, these employees were like turning a pancake, swift in changing sides. Without hesitation, they shifted all blame onto others leaving themselves a path for advancement. Their mouths continued to flatter the man, resolving all matters smoothly. The female director turned gently to ask him, Director Jun, are you satisfied with this outcome? He looked at the three being dragged away like discarded objects and smiled contentedly. It's okay. Let it be like this. But in the future, if your company hires new people, pay attention and carefully evaluate their character. Truly, a person with money speaks and carries oneself differently. Now hearing him speak, no one would think he was just an ordinary employee. The father and son duo still clung to hope, unwilling to abandon their future in such a pathetic manner. Tears streamed down, hands grasping onto the floor, desperate to stay in this place. 
As he observed their pitiful state, a sense of satisfaction washed over in him. The female director then gently lowered herself and said to him, Before, I wanted to appoint you as the director, but you refuse. Now that you're infuriated, I find it amusing. Hearing these words, he chuckled, Ha ha, I am a humble person. With everything resolved smoothly, his identity now revealed, he no longer needed to hide. He confidently turned his back and walked away. The female director, seeing him leave, gracefully followed, saying, Kim Taehyung, do you remember when I mentioned finding a professional team? Their research has made significant progress, and I'd like to show you. He replied with a decisive yes. The scene at that moment was unknown to those outside. The woman walking behind him was, in fact, the director. The other employees, witnessing the unfolding scene, found it hard to believe their eyes. Am I not seeing things? The legendary powerful female CEO has a vulnerable side. Immediately, you and the female director walked into her beautiful office. As you stepped inside, you couldn't help but observe the surroundings. The luxurious office prompted you to exclaim, Your office is truly extravagant. Now, the female director seemed like just another colleague. As she entered the room, she sat at her desk, working excellently. Being both a beauty and a director, her presence was unmatched. While continuously typing on the computer, she spoke. Most of my time is spent at the tech company. It's been a while since I came here. This is our latest achievement. The female director was very confident in this accomplishment and wanted to show you. You quickly approached her to admire it. As you looked at the computer screen, a sense of hesitation came over you. Oh, I don't understand, but it looks fantastic. All the information consisted of figures and codes, none of which you understood. Clearly, you had no need for such things. Handsome on the outside, wealthy on the inside. Why bother with these details? To remedy the confusion about the financial figures, even though you had no understanding of the data, you, with nothing but money to offer, immediately withdrew your phone and transferred 500 million. Overall, well done. I'll invest another 500 million for you, Yang Yun. The female director, sitting beside you, was astonished by your decisive money transfer, seeing your monetary indulgence as quite remarkable. Her favorable impression increased by 10%. For you, 500 million was like a fallen leaf or a shed hair from a cow. It couldn't go on like this for long. Yang Yun immediately struggled to stand up. Seeing her trying to move despite her numb legs, you stepped forward to offer help. Your dress is torn. Seeing your concern, Yang Yun signaled that it was unnecessary to speak. It's okay, I have a dressing room where I can change into another outfit. Both of you then entered Yang Yun's luxurious dressing room. As you stepped in, your amazement couldn't be contained. Oh my, there's even a luxurious dressing room in the office. Being poor really limits my imagination. You toured inside, suddenly spotting a beautiful dress and couldn't help but exclaim, This dress is gorgeous. Seeing your admiration for the dress, Yang Yun immediately chose it to drape over her exquisite figure. I'll change quickly. Please wait a moment. You waiting outside immediately agreed, sure. You felt quite pleased seeing the increased favorable impression. Suddenly, it increases so much. Indeed, trying to spend money is the key to romantic words. Shortly after, Yang Yun emerged, wearing the splendid outfit you had praised earlier. Yang Yun stepped out like a goddess with a radiant aura. I'm done changing. Kim Tae-young, would you like to join me for dinner? You gasped in astonishment at what you were witnessing, your two eyes widening in surprise. Oh, it's this dress, you remarked. The beautiful Yang Yun smiled mysteriously, her face adorned with porcelain white skin, blood-red lips, and amber-colored eyes that enhanced her beauty. Truly, she lived up to the reputation of a high-class beauty. Walking alongside Yang Yun, you both strode down the corridor with gracefully elongated legs. Yang Yun, commanding as a chairwoman, gave orders to her secretary with an imposing tone. To the Tu Long Sun restaurant, the secretary promptly bowed, responding, Certainly, chairwoman. The company's employees were even more bewildered, especially the male staff. Everyone gasped, finding it hard to believe what they were seeing. Oh my, did you see that? The chairwoman and Kim Taehyung stayed in the office for a while and changed into different outfits. This old man really has crazy ideas. His mind is too dark. This is the first time seeing the chairwoman dressed so alluringly. Have you satisfied your curiosity now? A male employee appeared incredulous. Couldn't it be? 
No, I don't believe it. Yet, it was exactly as they were seeing. There was no room for doubt when witnessing the stunning transformation of the beautiful Yang Yun. The male employees now seemed as if the whole world were collapsing. They all slumped to the ground, facing the undeniable truth. Kim Taehyung has finished his meal. I'll take him to see my proud achievement. What kind of achievement could be so boastworthy like that? You and Yang Yun, both smiling, exchanged words, and left. You didn't forget to respond. Sure, I feel like I should delve deeper next time. Two individuals, one male and one female, sat facing each other in an upscale restaurant under the vibrant city lights. The scene was incredibly romantic. One might expect sweet conversations, but these two were discussing work matters. It sounded quite somber. I've reviewed that plan. It's fantastic. I can't believe this is the first time you've done such work. You responded with your irresistibly handsome face, breaking into a genuinely bright smile. Oh my goodness, that handsome and deadly smile. Who could resist that? It's okay, this task is relatively simple. Indeed, it was straightforward for someone with a third-tier intellect like yours. Others might find it challenging. Yang Yun happily cut a piece of steak, preparing to put it in her mouth, but her lips still formed a gentle smile, and her face blushed slightly. Her favorability increased by an additional 15%, now standing at 77%. It seemed that she was becoming more satisfied with you day by day. Raindrops were gradually falling in the quiet space, and finally the night had set in. Jai Wan was taking a shower and simultaneously video calling Yang Yun. Yang Yun truly appreciated him. I never expected his work capabilities to be this good. Moreover, always maintaining composure and elegance. It's enchanting, isn't it? Leaning on the bathtub, Jai Wan remarked, So, in the end, our arrogant CEO has been moved. After returning home, Yang Yun sat on the bed, peeling off the layers of stockings clinging to her milky white legs. She continuously gazed at her phone. I also don't know about Kim Ji Won's situation. Yang Yun winked, smiling brightly, and signaled, Isn't tomorrow the day you fly to Japan? Why not go to bed early? Or are you too excited to sleep, perhaps accompanying your high school friend? Hearing that, Jai Won blushed to the point where her face turned deep red, hastily refuting, What are you talking about? He and I are just normal classmates. Yang Yun teased, Normal classmates who help you out in such a big way. Don't forget, you can consider it as selling yourself to him. These two girls were like mischievous cats, poking and prodding at each other. One might wonder if their relationship would become as contrived as Jisoo's with Shin Hai, only realizing it was a trap once they fell into the web of emotions with him. Would their relationship turn out to be as fake? Jai Wan submerged herself in the water, her cheeks continuously blushing. Avoiding the conversation, I won't talk to you anymore. I need to go to sleep. On the other end, Yang Yun chuckled happily. Ha ha, sweet dreams. Jo Wan's slender, milky white legs stepped out of the bathtub, water droplets falling. She sat on the bathtub recalling the image of him, feeling an undeniable joy. Traveling abroad with Kim Taehyung always feels like a date. Oh my, indeed, love is never ordinary. But J1's wans thoughts seemed very much like those of an innocent teenage girl. So cute. The next morning, in a tall building, an old man with a cunning face was sitting arrogantly on a chair. Accompanying him was a beautiful young girl, massaging his legs. Why did the old man's face seem so familiar? A person walked in respectfully and announced, Chairman Kamade, the capital is ready. Upon hearing this, the old man asked, How much? The man bowed his head but his eyes remained lifted to observe the old man's reaction, enough for you to buy anything you want at the auction next week. He confidently stated, smart move, getting humiliated by him now would be embarrassing. Better straighten up. The old man, satisfied with the response, remarked, hmm, that arrogant foreigner. Jung he added, he has already booked a flight quite daring. He dared to offend the Kamade financial conglomerate, humiliated him at the previous auction. And then, who humiliated whom at that auction? Well, we'll find out soon enough. The old man looked at his bull-headed horse-faced bodyguards and stated firmly, let him stay here permanently. Ten days later, as the plane soared through the sky, a news alert popped up a minute ago. Two days after the largest auction, held once every four years in Japan, officially opens. This auction also attracts the attention of collectors worldwide. 
He glanced at Ji Won, saying, Buying the ticket was too late. Almost didn't make it. Luckily, there were still seats in economy class. Noticing him in this handsome blue shirt was quite captivating. Detecting something off in Ji Won's expression, he immediately inquired with concern. What's wrong, Kim Ji Won? Jai Won looked up at him with a deeply concerned expression, excited but also tense. Excited because I can see extremely valuable artifacts, and tense because I heard Jung. He works for the Kamade Financial Conglomerate, which is very famous in Japan. When he challenged you back then, it surely wasn't with good intentions. If you lose in the auction, I'm afraid he'll. Before J1 could finish her sentence, he reassured her, It's okay. Whether there's a bet with him or not, I will still buy the cultural relics of Hoogu. Hearing his words, Jai Won gradually felt more at ease and responded with an affirmative sound. While the two were happily comforting each other, a little boy appeared, shouting, Ultraman attack! The little guy even had a missing front tooth, which added a touch of humor. Just as they were enjoying the moment, the boy accidentally bumped into Ji Won, who was sitting and using her phone. Did this kid unintentionally collide with the love goddess? The man sitting in front looked at the boy with a stern expression. The boy quickly jumped behind Ji Won and pushed her forward. He seemed to be overly excited. This shove startled Ji Won, making her jump in surprise. Could this be the way kids express affection, teasing and playing pranks on the person they like? Jai Won turned around and gently said, Little friend, kicking the back of the chair is not appropriate. Nevertheless, the boy continued kicking persistently. Apparently, this kid wasn't one to heave others' words. The blushing boy exclaimed, Hey, you're so beautiful. Let me see that thing of yours. Hearing this, Jai Won couldn't believe her ears. Are you, are you saying inappropriate things? This little boy, so young yet uttering such vulgar words, reached a level of perversion. It seemed there was no point in trying to reason with him. A direct confrontation might be the best way to put an end to this behavior. The boy even went as far as running up and knocking the phone out of G One's hand, causing it to fall to the ground. Otherwise, that's it. This unexpected action left both him and G One astonished. Such audacity. He was about to stand up to teach the boy a lesson. You little rascal. But Ja Won restrained him. Let it go. Kids don't understand these things. It's baffling how a kid this big could still lack understanding. He sat down in silence for a moment, then expressed his thoughts. You're overly kind. When mischievous children go undisciplined, they become even more frightening as they grow up. Ji Won, upon hearing this, fell into a silent contemplation with a solemn expression. The troublesome kid, undeterred, continued running around causing chaos, shouting, Ultraman attack! This prompted the man sitting nearby to hurriedly cover his ears. Ignoring everyone, the mischievous kid deliberately reached for Ji Won's dress and pulled on it, causing her to startle and drop her phone. Hindered by the dress, she stumbled, and the dress tore along with a loud rip. The little troublemaker indeed lived up to his name. Jai Won exclaimed, My dress! Unable to tolerate it any longer, she stood up and shouted, You little rascal! The mischievous kid, who had been quite bold moments ago, now sat on the ground pretending to cry and scream, Ouch, it hurts! His mother rushed over, witnessing the scene, she shouted, what happened to my child? Who bullied my child? Like mother, like child. This case perfectly fit the proverb. A naughty child is the mother's fault. A mischievous grandchild is the grandmother's fault. The boy's mother approached, embracing him, and spoke with a sharp tongue. Miss, why are you bullying my child? He stood up to protest. This lady is her own child. Before he could finish his sentence, Jia Wan intervened, her expression turning serious. You misunderstood. It was her old child who ran and jumped on the airplane aisle, and his toy got caught in my dress. Upon hearing the blame being shifted to him, the boy burst into tears. Hoo hoo. The woman, completely unaware of reason, insisted on defending her innocent child, raising her voice. Children running and jumping won't cause any harm. When she was little, didn't you run around causing trouble? Her exaggerated words were quite unreasonable, and the boy, Seeing his mother support him, smirked disdainfully, truly annoying. Ji Won, feeling helpless, still tried to explain for the woman to understand, children running and jumping is fine, but this is on an airplane. You should teach your child not to jump on the plane. Despite her adamant reasoning, the woman remained oblivious, 
resorting to insults directed at you. One, what if it's an airplane? Is it your home, huh? You claim I don't know how to raise my child. Do you know how to teach after having a child yourself? She went even further, cursing G1 to her face. You slut, dressing so revealingly. The little boy, mimicking his mother's face, even joined in with the same curse, pointing straight at G1 and parroting the insult, you slut. G1, shocked and sweating from the insults, stammered, Mom. She stood up, pointing at herself and refuting the woman's words. What I wear is my business, and I have the freedom to choose. How you teach your child is your responsibility. The woman stepped forward, pointing directly at G1, her words becoming even more unreasonable. I don't know how to teach. My son understands things much better than you, the so-called slut. The boy continued without restraint, mocking further. My son understands much better than the slut. Mom, I saw the slut wearing those pants. Upon hearing this, the woman hastily covered the boy's eyes. Don't look. Nowadays, these sluts, they won't wear pants properly. They like to rip holes in them, and skirts end up riding up high. It's a shame that such words come from a mother. Speaking ill of others, it's truly disgraceful. Ji Won felt embarrassed and quickly covered her skirt with her hand. The woman even smirked. My son, affected by shameless women like you, is being negatively influenced. Ji Won was infuriated and didn't know how to respond. Tears welled up in her eyes, and she bit her lip. Sister. At this point, the young man stepped forward to intervene, his brows furrowed. I was wondering why this bratty kid is so unruly. Turns out, the mother is equally unruly. The child runs amok on the plane. The mother loudly argues on an international flight and the fragrance of her perfume is scattered all over the plane. He was quite outspoken. The insulted woman, now furious, retaliated with harsh words. What kind of couple are you? Are you trying to bully us? I'll ask the flight attendant to throw you off the plane. Feigning confidence, he retorted, throw me off. That's perfect. I was just about to report the misbehavior of this mischievous kid to the flight attendant, deliberately using toys to damage this girl's dress, causing her to stumble and feign injury, not to mention the offensive language towards women. I believe the police will come to give you a lesson soon. His words instilled fear in the mischievous boy, and his face turned pale. The mother at this point had nothing more to say and could only glare silently. The mischievous boy, seeing his mother in such a state, grabbed her hand. Mom. Scold that guy. He turned to G1 and inquired, Are you okay? G1, now feeling relieved, replied, Yeah, thanks to you for handling it well. Her favorability towards him increased by another 5%. He explained to G1, People like her enjoy bullying the weak, but fear the strong. You need to stand firm, and she won't be able to do anything to you. The woman, unable to argue, resorted to mocking. Poor couple, you can only sit in economy class. What's there to be proud of? You'll never have the money to sit in first class in your entire life. Mom, who is she talking about? It sounds a bit insulting. Her words touched a nerve with the crowd, and everyone around started scolding her. Hey, sister, sitting in economy class is already an offense to you. Being good at sitting in first class with just a few dollars, and you're acting all high and mighty. The woman then turned to argue with the man from before. What's it got to do with you people? The poor always support each other. Seeing my son and me as easy targets, huh? Feeling disdain for such people, he turned away and called the flight attendant. Miss, could you please ask this lady to return to her noble first-class cabin? It's too noisy here. At this moment, a girl sitting and sipping coffee with an air of elegance remarked, The hazelnut latte from Starbucks here is always delicious. The woman tapping on her phone looked at the screen and smiled. Indeed, it's unbearable encountering only stupid things. Let me complain about it on my story. Another woman walked in, revealing herself to be a flight attendant. The girl holding a plate of pastries commented, Hi son, your makeup is a bit too much. Hi son ignored her, continuing to apply makeup until she felt satisfied with her appearance. When the girl tried to leave, Hi son stood up, blocking her way with an annoyed expression. Wait a minute, Ben. Where are you taking those light snacks? Don't get in the way. You already served the drink to him earlier. This time, I'll rely on my charm alone. Who said you make the rules for me? Another flight attendant, pulling the curtain aside, reminded them, Don't make a scene. Everyone in the first-class cabin can hear you. Hai-sum was startled. Chong-wook, 
Why are you here in the business class section? Chown Wook, displeased, replied, Um, your goals, aren't they all about Director Sai anyway? The group of flight attendants looked at the man, Director Sai, the renowned tycoon in Yongsan City. Moreover, he was an aircraft dealer and a close friend of our airline's lead, a director, who wouldn't want to make acquaintance. The man was currently texting, his username simply reading, aircraft dealer. Heard that Director Jion is heading to VIP China. Perfect timing. I'm also going to VIP China for business discussions. Wonder if there's a chance to meet Director Jun. Outside, the captain approached the man. The flight attendants pulled back the curtain, gossiping. Look, the captain has left the co-pilot alone in the cockpit and come out to socialize with Director Sai. A voice chimed in. Miss flight attendant, would you mind stepping in to resolve the issue with the prestigious lady in the first-class cabin? The three flight attendants pushed each other. Hi, son. Go and deal with it. It has nothing to do with us in the economy class. But it's a first-class passenger. Go quickly. Hi, son. Upon hearing that, clicked her tongue and walked away with an irritated look. As soon as she stepped out, she immediately changed her demeanor. A perfect display of professionalism. Hello, value passenger. May I assist you with anything? Hearing this, Jai Won pointed directly at the woman's face. This lady couldn't stay calm in the first-class cabin and came here causing trouble, disturbing my rest. Upon hearing that, the man raised his thumb in approval towards G1. Well done, quick learner. Truly an excellent student. His praise made G1 blush with embarrassment. The woman then sternly confronted the flight attendant. I am the chairwoman of Lucky Yongsen C Corporation. Do you believe me or this poor person? Upon hearing that, the flight attendant was astonished. She quickly stepped forward to defend the woman. There seems to be a misunderstanding here. Logically speaking, this lady went back to the first-class cabin for a quiet and comfortable environment. Saying she came to the economy class to cause trouble seems a bit unreasonable, don't you think? The defiant woman chuckled triumphantly. Ha ha. The man, however, puzzled by the situation, engaged in a verbal battle with the flight attendant. So, you mean that those in the first-class cabin are all noble and wouldn't cause trouble? Therefore, it must be the economy class passengers causing issues. The flight attendant remained silent, thinking to herself, well, sitting in the economy class doesn't make it clear either. The defiant woman laughed loudly. Ha ha ha, did you see that? This is the difference between the elite and the lower class. If you want to chase me away using your connections, putting you on Sweet Airlines blacklist won't be difficult. The mischievous boy joined in. Ha ha ha. This shameless man is truly losing face. Don't even think about flying with Sweet Airlines in the future. Hearing this, the man casually touched his nose. Really? I don't believe it. The woman turned around to curse loudly. Just wait. Let me see how long you can keep laughing. At this moment, the man who had intervened before walked in. Is it over? Why keep making noise? Where is the flight attendant? The flight attendant, hearing the call, immediately approached the man and bowed. Director Sai, I sincerely apologize. There's a passenger in the economy class causing trouble, and I'm handling the situation. It has affected your flying experience, and I'm truly sorry. The woman continued to taunt. Ha ha, you're in big trouble now. Whether he was in trouble or not remained to be seen. Director Sai is a well-known figure in Yongsan Sea City, from a family in the aircraft business. He has connections with the chairman of Sweet A Airlines, and often discusses business during flights. I'll ask him to put you on the blacklist now. The woman approached, wearing a smiling face, seemingly eager to shake hands. Hello, Director Sai. I am the wife of the chairman of the conglomerate, and luckily we met the party last week. She glanced at the man and gave a sly smile. Just now, these troublemaking individuals were causing a scene. I've advised them, but unfortunately, they seem unwilling to listen. The man paused when he saw you. You. Behind them. One looked disdainful, and the other seemed cheerful. Then, the man approached, expressing joy on his face as he greeted you. Your director, Jion. Finally, I get to meet you in person. Perplexed, you responded, and he introduced himself. I am just an aircraft salesman in the Prince and Princess group. You smiled. Oh, you're him. I'm impressed. The man joyfully couldn't contain himself, his eyes sparkling. Really? Director Jion remembers me. Thank you. Director Jun, the people who were in conflict with you earlier were now stunned, struck by surprise. The crowd exclaimed.
Allah! Chairman Sai has turned into a junior brother in front of that little brother. The woman and her child were gaping in astonishment. Even the flight attendant couldn't contain her surprise. Mom, why did that loser nod to the other side? Before the other child could recover, he received a resounding slap across the face. Don't understand anything. Shut up. Chairman Tsai is not someone our family can afford to offend. The decisive mother swiftly slapped her son for his loose tongue. Chairman Tsai gestured towards the flight attendant and said, Miss Flight Attendant. She acknowledged, bowing respectfully. Hello, Chairman Tsai. How may I assist you? Upgrade these gentlemen and young miss to first class and charge it to my card. He agreed. Sure, Chairman Tsai. Whatever you say. The trio covered their faces in disbelief once again. You smiled, your eyes gleaming. Thank you for Chairman Tsai's kind intention. But seeing the face of this lady might affect my mood even in first class. Sitting in economy is still better. Chairman Tsai chuckled gently, looking at you. This is an easy matter. The owner of Sweet Airlines is an acquaintance of mine. I will ask him to put this lady on the blacklist. You won't encounter her at Sweet Airlines anymore. Calming Chairman Jilin's anger. He just mentioned excluding a passenger, but his mouth continued to smile as if nothing happened. Now the other lady knew her place, turning pale and hurriedly explaining, Chairman Tsai, this is all a misunderstanding. Fear washed over her. She bent her knees, feigning weakness, and collapsed, suddenly dizzy, and my hip hurts a lot. Chairman John, don't you see how pitiful my child and I are? Je Wen and you stood there, watching her act in front of them, their faces still cold and indifferent. Ji Wan spoke without paying attention to her, having seen through all her pretense long ago. He said sternly, continue pretending. Your son treated my friend like that, and this matter won't be easily overlooked. You frowned, having already discerned all of her pretense. Indifferent, you spoke without acknowledging her, disregarding her act of kneeling on the ground, playing the weak role. The mother and son from that family couldn't stand it any longer and began to roll on the ground, making a scene. My son is still just a child, and you are calculating with a child. Both of them cried out, closing their eyes and noses while wailing, people with money bully us, the weak ones. Their words were like a headache to them. Chairman Sai couldn't hold back serious questioning. Enough, the whole plane heard the noise you caused, trying to disturb public order. Once the plane lands, you will be punished by security management. You frowned, looking at them deliberately causing trouble. Everyone on the plane applauded, praising. Well done, impressive. Clap, clap, clap. I found the photo the flight attendant posted on the social platform. She even insulted us all as fools. Someone shouted what they had just witnessed, and others joined in. What? Share it to make her famous. Let's see if she can continue to stay at the airline. If not, she can retire. The blonde flight attendant sat on the ground, her stockings torn in pieces, helpless, with two streams of tears flowing down. She sighed. The rest of my life is over. At Dubai Sea Airport, by now, they had disembarked. G1 looked at the distressed woman and her crying child, being escorted away by security. G1 smiled cheerfully. This time, Chairman Jilin came to Dubai Sea to discuss business. Chairman Tsai asked you, I will attend the auction in two days. I plan to buy all the assets of China VIP. Chairman Jian is truly outstanding, the pride of China VIP. Comparing with him, I feel ashamed. The three of them walked away happily, you casually holding a bag, exuding an air of freedom and ease. Chairman Tsai gestured sternly, cautioning you with a serious expression. Chairman Jian must be careful with Kameda Kido. He is a very famous tycoon in Dubai Sea, extremely fond of artifacts especially those from China VIP, in every auction, as long as it's an artifact he likes. No one has ever been able to win against him. He's cunning, and he seeks revenge for any grievances. First, he will use his financial resources to crush his opponents, and then he will humiliate them. In the following days, those people will suffer unexpected severe injuries. Although there is no evidence, rumors suggest that the ninjas and samurais he hires are responsible for these actions. It is highly likely that this time Chairman Jian will face off against Kameda Kido in the auction. Jai Wan expressed concern, saying, No wonder Zhang An used a tempting strategy to bring me here. It turns out his purpose is to make me clash with Tycoon Kameda. Zhang An is too ruthless. Kim Taehyung, 
Shall we return? If I leave, China VIP's artifacts will fall into Kameda's hands. I won't let this happen. He waved his hand with determination, his face showing a resolute expression. He thought to himself, Moreover, I can seize an opportunity for a counterattack in the auction, benefiting both parties. Sai's excitement burst out, exclaiming, Chairman Jian is truly impressive. Ji Wan blushed shyly, secretly feeling quite accomplished. Kim Taehyung. She looked at him with sparkling eyes, and the system indicated a 15% increase in favorability. They laughed and chatted together, walking ahead. The group of passengers behind them left one by one. Among them a girl with pink hair wearing a mask looked particularly mysterious. The girl seemed to recognize something. Furrowing her brows, target identified. She recalled the instructions given by her superiors before leaving. According to intelligence, Song Hai Kyo will appear at the airport with the wealthy China VIP man. What should we do? Kameda Kido, sitting confidently in his seat, swirled a glass of red wine in his hand and commanded, Shadow Ninja Sato Tobi, my most capable subordinate. The pink-haired girl bowed down on the floor obediently. I will make that ignorant China VIP realize what a Japanese tycoon and the Kameda family are. Don't worry, I won't kill him. I'll just give him a warning. He must survive for the auction. She asserted confidently to her master. I will personally kneel before you. She reached out to adjust the headphones on her ears and communicated with someone on the other side, saying, that's Song Haikyo, and the person next to her is the target, the Chinese VIP millionaire. I'm a bit thirsty. I'll go buy a bottle of water. Do you need anything? He suggested, I don't need anything, Kim Taehyung. Well then, I'll head to the waiting car, G1 said gently to him. The assassin girl sensed the perfect opportunity, wearing a peculiar ring on her finger and quietly thought, this is a great chance. She reached out to look at the ring a few times, and behind her, he was standing examining the mobile water vending machine. Using the poisoned ring, gently pat on the back, the specially brewed poison can make the target weak, causing nausea and diarrhea. It takes a whole day to feel better. This is the gift from the master for you. She didn't know when she had closed in behind him. He remained calm, reaching into his pocket to select a few rounds of water, seemingly very focused. She was right next to him. Suddenly, he exclaimed, startling her, and she took a few steps back, thinking she had been discovered. What is this? 80 yuan for a bottle. This costs only 2 yuan in the country. Is Japan crazy to forcefully sell water? Does it have to be so expensive? This vending machine only has this type of water. His hand gripped the glass door of the vending machine as he shouted abruptly, Public wash basin. While yelling, he suddenly looked to the side and saw a small wash basin for passersby at the airport. He ran over, extended his hand to release the water, listened to the gurgling sound, and drank away. The girl who had witnessed everything couldn't understand what he was up to, completely bewildered by his actions. Tap water is still very good, and most importantly, it's free. He proudly stroked his hair, laughing, feeling like a thrifty and clever individual. The assassin behind had darkened her face long ago. Is this the China VIP tycoon? The one who bought a $1 billion museum here? Very suspicious, need to observe more. She speculated and reassured herself. He ran towards Song Haikyo, stretching out his hand and calling her. Haikyo, I'm here. She leaned to one side, pretending to read a newspaper, eyes constantly glancing toward him. Ji Wan turned back, smiling gently, a smile as refreshing as spring. I told President Tsai's car to go ahead. This time, going out with you, I want to experience different lifestyles. She blushed, secretly entertaining different thoughts. Actually, I wanted to be alone with you for a while. Her sparkling eyes focused on him. All right then, let's call a cab. A taxi pulled up to the two of them, and he raised his phone with the address towards the driver, asking, How much to this address, sir? Hi there, the starting price is 152 hua yuan. Quite expensive, isn't it? Disregarding any sense of dignity, he exclaimed in shock, I just saw the airport bus stop. It's only a few yuan. Let's take the bus. He pointed towards the bus parked by the roadside, and she looked at him with a fascinated gaze. Sure, I'll follow your lead. Spend when we should, save when we should. Anyway, we're not in a hurry. Let's enjoy the scenery along the way. Both of them laughed and walked towards the bus. In the distance, the assassin girl felt a bit puzzled. A tycoon? 
she raised an eyebrow, trying to understand. The two of them arrived at the hotel lobby, and the girl was already seated in the waiting area, awaiting their arrival. The hotel staff, with a polite smile, said, Sir, your discount voucher does indeed provide a 10 one discount. That's good. I have another one you can use right away. As he spoke, he presented the discount voucher and handed it to the hotel staff. The staff member smiled satisfactorily. If you use this discount voucher, you'll save an additional 13 yuan. He turned to boast to Song Haikyo, as if he had saved a significant amount. However, she didn't seem to mind his frugality and even chuckled along, saying, Nemhum. But there was someone else who found him annoying. The assassin silently cursed him. Penny Pincher, always exploiting the smallest things. This guy definitely isn't a millionaire. Judging by his appearance, he looks more like Song Haikyo's assistant. She secretly affirmed what she believed to be true. So where is my target, the Chinese VIP millionaire? The pink-haired assassin removed her mask, revealing a seductive smile, her sharp eyes harboring many mysteries. I guess I'll have to ask this assistant a bit. At 10 p.m. in the hotel room, he sat cross-legged, engrossed in his phone. Sounds of triple kill and quadra kill echoed incessantly from the phone. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. He approached and peered through the peephole asking softly. Who's there? Hello, I'm a hotel staff member bringing your late night meal. Outside, the female assassin had changed into a hotel staff uniform. Her long, pink hair cascaded over her slender shoulders, and her eyes, glistening with moisture, locked onto him, inviting and enchanting. She had a courteous smile on her lips. He promptly opened the door, smiling, please come in. Ignoring the fact that he was still shirtless, the assassin gracefully entered the room, holding a tray of food. Although he appeared casual on the outside, he found it a bit puzzling in his heart. Hmm, did I order this room service? She placed a fruit plate on the table, courteously saying, Please enjoy. Unconcerned about etiquette, he opened his mouth wide and took a big bite. As he was chewing, he suddenly paused and the mechanical voice of the system resounded in his head. Confirmed the presence of poison. Passive detoxification skill initiated. The effect of the poison has truly been neutralized. He chewed a few more bites, his gaze filled with suspicion, scrutinizing every move of the woman. He raised his question, this medicine, isn't it something used in the military? He frowned, putting her under suspicion. This person, she must be sent here by Kameda, right? Is the medicine real? If so, I'll play around with her a bit. After deciding, he pretended for a moment, closing his eyes, resting his head on his hand, and exclaimed, I suddenly feel a headache. The assassin stood by, waiting to see the medicine take effect. A triumphant smile appeared on her face, feeling that it was easy to drug him. There was a hint of disdain in her eyes. Discovered that women seemed to be pretty, initiating the sabotage mission. The system's voice echoed slowly again, and at this moment she gracefully revealed her seductive curves and a faint fragrance lingered in the air. She swept her hair behind her ear with her hand, lowered her gaze, and asked, Tell me, where is the wealthy Taehyung, accompanying Song Haikyo, participating in this auction? He glanced at her, and the system displayed her basic profile. Name, Sato Tobi, age, 20, height, 1.6 meters, weight, 46 kilograms. When the target's favorability towards the host exceeds 90%, Deduct 10% of the savage fee into the host's personal assets. When the target's favorability towards the host reaches 100%, switch identity and change the host and target relationship. Current favorability towards the host is minus 30. I, I like people with innocent faces and big breasts. He pretended to be foolish, his mouth watering, arriving here and still being able to initiate a savage mission. She noticed him staring at her, then suddenly startled. Using her hand to cover her embarrassment, she exclaimed, It seems that some people have an extremely weak will. After taking the truth serum, they lose the ability to self-control and blurt out their inner thoughts, no matter how mean-spirited they may be. She turned around, returning to her sweet and innocent demeanor, fluttering her eyelashes, and spoke sweetly to him. But why do people also like you so much? Can you tell me where the rich person is? I'm really hungry, and I can't remember in the meantime. She leaned closer. Just for a moment, he smugly spread his legs, tapping his thigh with the bottle, signaling her to come over. Come here, I'll feed you and then tell you. 
He lounged comfortably, giving her orders, enjoying the situation. She approached, sitting on his lap without hesitation, whispering softly, Of course I can. The pink-haired assassin took the apple and fed him, asking in a low voice, Is it delicious, handsome? He praised the taste with satisfaction. She couldn't wait and asked, So, have you remembered? He said he would appear when the main auction begins, because that's when it's majestic. He chewed thoughtfully, blinked at her, and replied slyly. She contemplated, So that's how it is. It seems to fit the arrogant personality that Zhang An mentioned. Well, in that case, let's play something else. She pressed her face close to his at almost an intimate distance. He blushed in response to her intense gaze. Before he could think, his hand was caught by her legs in a peculiar position. He winced and exclaimed, You can play like this too. I've lost my utility. Just let me sleep peacefully. Pretending to be knocked out by her, he closed his eyes and pretended to sleep. She put on her mask, turned around, and walked away, saying, Tomorrow when you wake up, you'll forget everything about today. The door closed and she disappeared into the distance. Trained professionally indeed. That leg strength is not to be underestimated. If it weren't for my third grade arm strength, I might have fainted from the pressure. Kameda's auction hasn't even started and he couldn't wait to deal with me. He smiled, relieving his arm from her grip. I'm really looking forward to this auction more and more each day. In the main hall of the auction, people were buzzing about something. Chairman Kameda. Greetings, Chairman Kameda. The mentioned chairman walked in, followed by a middle-aged man, and the seductive female assassin trailed behind, wearing a tight-fitting outfit. She suggested, Master, if that person has just appeared today, I can disguise myself at the entrance and directly kill him. No need for. He sternly said, Perfume has a saying. A turtle shrinks its head. Not to imagine opponents who don't dare to show up like this guy. Avoidance is a sign of panic. In terms of momentum, he has already lost. He smirked with a hint of disdain, his gaze profound. If he dares to appear in today's auction, it will be his death day. The middle-aged man casually said while putting his hand in his pocket, That's right, people wearing perfume are all equally useless, all as timid as mice. She smirked. The assistant of Song Haikyo, I encountered yesterday, is a case in point. Seeing a crowd gathering in front, she asked curiously, Why is there a crowd there? Who is that next to Song Haikyo? G1 was seen smiling gently, his sharp eyes looking across, discussing something passionately. Next to her was a tall man holding a shaking glass of wine, Kim Taehyung. The middle-aged man suddenly widened his eyes in surprise. He knew he had been discovered. Glancing at them, he smiled, his eyes seemingly seen through everything. So he has arrived, right? What, is he the wealthy guy? The two of them exchanged surprised glances, mouths forming O shapes, pointing at him in disbelief. G1, and he approached them to communicate, both familiar faces. Is this big-eared, big-faced guy in the middle of famous Kameda? He nonchalantly said, their faces looking darker than a storm. Got fooled for real. Why didn't the truth serum work? Could it be that from the beginning, he saw through his own identity? She hesitated, pondering, while the name Kameda used a gaze like a lethal sword, staring at her as if wanting to cut her in half, an incredibly intense pressure. Worthless. She, too, sensed his gaze, fearfully shrinking like a kitten. That guy Taeyong, daring to come here is indeed brave. But in front of Chairman Kameda, you've been a bit arrogant. He pointed at him mockingly. I dare not be impudent in front of the distinguished sir. Here, I am just a junior inviting the distinguished sir to go ahead. He casually extended his hand, inviting them a step. Welcome, young talent from the fragrance country. Hope Mr. Taehyung won't disappoint me shortly. He chuckled, dark-faced, revealing ten parts of disdain. He remained calm and replied, Rest assured, I guarantee it can surprise you. Ladies and gentlemen, before the auction begins, please allow me to introduce myself briefly. Today's auction is the largest charity auction in the VIP Kingdom of China, also the most upscale auction in the world. The MC, dressed in a yellow kimono with intricate patterns, lightly adorned and elegantly made up, had a refined voice fitting the high-class atmosphere of the auction. 90% of all proceeds from the auction will be donated to the Global Relief Organization. First of all, let me introduce and thank the distinguished gentlemen and ladies who have come from all over the world. 
The girl emphasized the last sentence, the clear sound echoing throughout the room, applause welcoming and resounding repeatedly, creating a lively atmosphere. Chairman Kameda Kido of the Kameda VIP Kingdom of China, she introduced him. The chairman only maintained a serious expression, appearing cool and completely different from the disdainful attitude he had shown towards him earlier. Andy John of the John family in the Semi country. The MC introduced people from various aristocratic families. Louisian from the Amor country. Babak from the Middle East. Lastly, Mr. Kim Taehyung from the Fragrance country. She introduced him. He just smiled professionally, looking back with a calm face that didn't reveal any intentions. People, seeing his plain appearance, in stark contrast to the sparkling figures of the mentioned aristocrats, couldn't help but whisper in curiosity, Who is Kim Taehyung? I've never heard of him. He crossed his legs, his hand resting on his knee, indifferent to the gossip circulating around. A man leaned in and whispered to the woman next to him, Taehyung Group, the fragrance family doesn't have anyone like this. This must be a newly rich person here to expand their horizons. The woman found it amusing, saying, Haha, a few mocking remarks were directed at him. Song Haikyo noticed the taunting words, slightly turned, and cast a sidelong glance at those people. He remained composed, said nothing, and then stepped onto the stage to the surprise of everyone. He raised his hand and grabbed the microphone, leaving the MC somewhat puzzled. Sorry to bother everyone's time. I am Kim Taehyung from the Fragrance Country. He introduced himself loudly, making the MC feel awkward, not knowing how to handle the situation. He remained calm, putting his hand back in his pocket, and continued, Originally, our Fragrance Country highly values etiquette in the East. I shouldn't overshadow the host here. But for the sake of better communication later, I'd like to say a few words to express my attitude. His voice was steady without any fluctuations. A Kim Taehyung, I'm here this time for the fragrances of our country. As long as they are fragrance artifacts, I'm sure they can be auctioned, especially those fragrance artifacts that have been stolen and are wandering outside, finally listed in the auction. I will have to retrieve them. Witnessing his majestic demeanor, Song Haikyo's dove-like eyes overflowed with admiration as she gazed at him, her mouth involuntarily breaking into a sweet smile. He continued, if this is a charity auction, I'll play a little game with everyone. Regardless of how much I bid today, I will double that amount and donate it to a charity organization. The assassin, after hearing his words, cautiously glanced at her master and said, A friendly reminder to everyone to bid carefully, or it might end up quite disastrously. He pointedly addressed the somber old man sitting below the stands. Am I right, Mr. Kameda? People started buzzing with discussions about his bold declaration. This fragrance kit is really arrogant, truly ignorant of the ways of the world. The assistant next to Mr. Kamita gritted his teeth in frustration, but he said he would double the donation amount. It seems he's somewhat handsome, just flaunting his elegance, leaping around like a jester without a care. Mr. Kamita stared directly at him, a smirk on his face, a mysterious and inscrutable expression, leaving everyone unsure of his intentions. Chairman Kamita has investigated thoroughly. This time, the John family has brought 5 billion, Babakave Moore brought 4.8 billion, and Babakave Moore brought 4.5 billion. The assistant whispered to him, With 8 billion, you're ready to sweep everything clean. The old man crossed his arms and said, Yes, go on. This auction is a step towards realizing your grand literary plan for East Asia. The front page of DG newspaper is ready. After this auction, your handsome image will be immediately published coinciding with the global announcement of your magnificent literary plan. At that time, Kamita Group's stocks are sure to skyrocket. With the support of the tycoons, Mr. Matsumoto has the potential to become the president of this literary academy. Hearing this, the old man stroked his beard and chuckled triumphantly. Excellent. Conveniently swaying a stinky ant on the path towards my grand future. The old man imagined the scene, playfully laughing as if he were toying with him. The official auction begins, starting with the vintage incense with a starting bid of 8 million. The MC pointed to the dazzling golden incense set on the stand, 3 billion. The assistant next to Kameda raised the bidding board, and the MC with an expressive voice declared lot number 001 at 3 billion, asking if anyone wanted to bid higher. The old man turned slightly to look at him with a hint of doubt, but he remained indifferent to the scrutinizing gaze. Instead, 
he flipped through the small auction item list and discussed with G1 beside him. This is a statue of La Han, sold during the fragrance era of the VIP Kingdom of China. It's basically not suitable for the perfume culture. I wonder how much it can fetch. J1 fixed her gaze on him, listening intently as he expressed curiosity. Yes, in ancient times, many countries exported artifacts with somewhat divergent styles. She pointed to that peculiar ancient artifact, smiling beautifully. Suddenly, she felt a bit embarrassed, blushing, and turned her face away. I apologize. Your knowledge of artifacts is even more profound than mine. Yet here I am trying to explain to you. I admire your focused demeanor when discussing artifacts. Seriousness makes one most beautiful. He praised sincerely, but the words seemed to carry a hint of subtle teasing. Sweet words spilled into her hands, I also. Hai Kyo shyly avoided his gaze, speaking softly, her lips slightly curving, adding 5% more charm. The system's rigid voice interrupted, announcing to him that on this side, flirtatious banter had saturated the air with romantic vibes. The atmosphere carried the scent of love, leaving the old man on the other side puzzled, wondering what they were up to. He sneered, Yes, a patriot acting all lovey-dovey. Next is the auction of perfume artifacts. I'll see how you dodge my direct attacks then. A sinister glint flashed in his eyes. The second treasure, the Perfume Kingdom's crystal disc, has a starting price of 10 million. The sparkling disc radiates light from one corner, undoubtedly an exceptionally rare item. He raised his bidding number, ready to participate. The big shot tycoons all turned their attention to him, each with their own thoughts. This arrogant kid is starting to bid. Let's see how skilled he really is. Their eyes gleamed with cunning, and finally, he spoke up. 300 million. The tycoons were momentarily shocked, eyes almost popping out. What? It's his first time, and he's raising the bid this much. Someone bid this high. They opened their mouths wide in disbelief, encountering such a peculiar case in their decades of auction experience. Mr. Kamita said, This is the anxious eagerness to prove oneself of the weak. It's truly pitiful. Mr. Kamita's smile gradually turned sinister, and the atmosphere around him cooled. Any competition, Mr. Chairman? He stood firm, unshaken by the extravagance of his money. This porcelain disc, at most, is worth 180 million. If you want to buy at a loss, let him have it. The crystal disc belongs to number 008 with a price of 300 million. The MC struck the gavel, and he took Hai Kyo's hand in front of everyone, gently saying, this crystal disc is a gift for you, perfectly matching your beauty. Touched, she covered her mouth with her hand, eyes full of admiration for him. The couple next to them couldn't help but comment, casually giving a 300 million artifact to your girlfriend, are you that wealthy? The girl exclaimed, while the man beside her showed a different emotion, shaking his head disdainfully. It's just an item, no need to show off like that. Jai Wan ignored them and explained to him, Seriously, this is purchased for our museum, but thank you. I really like it. Her face blushed like a ripe jackfruit, her voice changing, and her expression radiated youthful charm. He just smiled without saying a word, pretending affection at the auction. What nonsense was this? Making everyone itch from watching this dog and pony show. Moving on to the next treasure, the MC introduced. The third treasure is the Jade Pearl Necklace from the Ming Dynasty in our country with a starting price of $8 million. Mr. Kamita raised his hand, his satisfied face speaking loudly, $2 million. He, with a calm expression, raised his bidding number, but uttered a colossal figure, $5 billion. The young man with a beard retorted, didn't he say he only buys China VIP treasures? He's intentionally trying to provoke the guild leader. The assistant, also angry, chimed in, humph, truly foolish, spending so much money just to make himself angry, such childishness. Despite being furious, he narrowed his eyes, attempting to maintain a calm facade. The MC adjusted the microphone and declared, Number 008 bids 5 billion for the Ming Dynasty Jade Pearl Necklace. Then, she struck the gavel. This jade necklace is a gift for Ms. Sato. He turned his hand, smiling confidently, his words laced with sarcasm. Thanks for your refreshing massage service. The red-faced assassin was perplexed, jerking back in confusion. Mr. Kamita reacted faster than anyone, restraining himself, his brows furrowed as he sternly scolded. You told him your real name. 
She was slightly frightened by his tone, trying to explain. I didn't reveal it voluntarily. He must have used some means to discover my identity. I assure you, I'll refuse that precious jade. He turned around, his voice chilling. Decline. Why refuse? This is a gift I'm giving you. I order you to accept it. She, with a melancholy face, lowered her gaze and replied softly, Yes, master, like a rain-soaked cat with a drooping tail. The system chimed in with an announcement, positive sentiment plus 10%. Using money as a tool to make someone lose goodwill, truly rare. Moreover, you get to enjoy the twisted expression of that guy. Haha. <laughs> Satisfied, he smiled triumphantly, his gaze fixed on the face of the other person. The assassin, Sato, clenched her fist, glaring at him with resentment. What do you want in the end? Unreasonably giving me things, causing misunderstandings with my master. She threw him a murderous look like a bullet. She pondered, but this is also the first time someone has given me a gift. Her face blushed, biting her nails, unwilling to admit it but feeling quite pleased. The system quickly appeared. Notification, plus 5% goodwill. On this side, he couldn't help but be surprised by the unexpected increase. What? Why is it rising? She reverted to her initially displeased state. Humph. Unfortunately, the giver is a detestable guy. Minus 3% goodwill. He couldn't understand what she was thinking, looking at the constant fluctuations with confusion. Ha! Huh, it's decreasing again. Song Hai Kyo on the other side looked at him, following his curiosity. Then, he felt like sinking into depression. The system kept increasing and decreasing continuously. Hearing the notifications in his ear, he was about to go crazy. He helplessly covered his face, wondering, what is she thinking? Aya, ah, yeah, I thought this auction would be intense. But unexpectedly, no one is bidding. Thanks to all for yielding. Much obliged. Much obliged. He mockingly used a carefree and indifferent tone. I'm not interested in the next artifacts, which are not from China VIP. Everyone, feel free. He leaned back, hands behind his head, legs casually crossed, looking as relaxed as if he were at home. The wealthy businessmen couldn't secure the antiques and were continuously challenged by him. They felt incredibly frustrated, bordering on madness. As for Kameda, needless to say, he didn't want to glance at him, but his mind was filled with cunning calculations. The MC extended her hand to point at the beautifully carved vase placed nearby and introduced a few sentences. This vase from the Leong dynasty, starting price 5 million. The wealthy businessmen were not to be outdone, raising their paddles. 500,000, 1 million, 3 million. The assistant next to Mr. Kamita dominated, saying, 8 million. The MC smiled professionally, number 001, bidding 8 million for the Leong dynasty vase. After saying that, she hammered the gavel in front of everyone. The flattering men quickly turned to praise his power truly worthy of Mr. Kameda. They applauded continuously. Congratulations, Mr. Kameda. Make sure not to let that nouveau reach deceive you. On the surface, they flatter you. But in reality, their eyes are always fixed on Kim Taehyung. The middle-aged man next to him clearly saw the expressions of the group and quietly pointed to Mr. Kameda. They are observing Kim Taehyung's movements. The reason you were able to auction off the treasure just now is because Kim Taehyung moved his little finger. They think Kim Tae-young wants to raise the price, so shut up for me. Mr. Kamita couldn't stand it anymore. He waved his hand by his ear like swatting a fly. Turning around, he slapped the man as if the heavens struck him. The man couldn't react in time, and his neck turned to the side from the force of the slap. He cast a fearful glance, apologetically murmuring, Apologies, chairman. My slip of the tongue. Aya, ah, yeah. so you've been observing me all along. Rest assured, Rest assured. Next up is the treasure of China VIP. If you want me to take action, then be satisfied. He lazily brushed his hand across his face, running out of things to say. Mr. Kameda didn't want to engage with him much. Fearing public disapproval, he just grunted, disregarding him. For the fifth treasure, the two auction staff simultaneously unveil a painting of a dense mountain forest. At first glance, it seemed to be a rare artifact, the map of Van Lai Sun, Ha from the late Tang Dynasty of China VIP, starting price 8 million. People were in an uproar, unable to wait, shouting, 100 million, 200 million, 300 million. Number 001, Mr. Kamita bids 800 million. He remained silent on this side, 
not bothering to pay attention, yawning and saying, just add another billion, I'm about to fall asleep. Then, he threw out a price that left everyone astonished, two billion. As predicted, everyone's eyes widened, mouths agape, almost losing their eyes. What? Two billion? They couldn't believe their eyes, 25 billion, I said 2.5 billion. Mr. Kamita's face looked like he could spit water, a hideous expression, afraid others wouldn't hear. He strained to say, Chairman, have you forgotten our strategy? This time, we have to bid vigorously for many items. If we spend money like this. The person next to him, nursing his painful face, cleverly said, fearing another slap, shut up. If we yield every time, where does Kamita's face go? The old man, seething with anger, disregarded everything. His face red as if about to explode, brimming with suppressed rage, shouted each word heavily, fine, want to play with me, right? Three billion. He smiled confidently, indifferent to the hateful gaze, as if inviting more resentment. Mr. Kamita raised his board in hand with an unwilling expression. He shouted a figure in anger, 3.5 billion. In response, he cheerfully followed suit, saying lightly, 4 billion. His face seemed to be teasing others. The onlookers behind couldn't help but be astonished, each one buzzing with surprise, their faces showing unexpected expressions. This painting is only worth 200 million, and now the price has soared 20 times. Clearly, this is throwing money out the window. That kid, and even Chairman Kameda, the female assassin stood up to dissuade him, her hand reaching for his worried face. Chairman. He was about to raise the bidding board, but was stopped by two men beside him. He smirked cruelly, then immediately dropped the board, looking like he was giving up. He turned around with a mocking smile, a dark face with a sinister grin glancing over at him. I'm not bidding anymore. This painting belongs to you now, Kim Tae-hyung. It seemed that he clearly wanted to see if he could handle this price. As the people around heard him speak, they sneered and mocked him. And in the end, it became a laughter that no one knew who was laughing at whom. So Chairman Kameda, he pretends to be excited and engages in a bidding war. It's all just to make Kim Tae-young spend more money. Kim Tae-young's finances are not unlimited just by raising the price like this. He won't last long. While it's easy to come up with ways to curb Kim Tae-young, it also requires the bidder to be patient and endure strong psychological qualities when facing risks. Indeed, Chairman Kamita is truly extraordinary. This person really doesn't know anything but keeps talking too much, truly skilled in speculating. Two competitors, one old and one young, fiercely confront each other. He turns his head to look at him, a mocking smile on his face, a hint of disdain in his eyes. Is this how you like to play? He looks at him with a wrinkled face, but also unrelenting in his victory. I can see Mr. Tae-yum. Above, the MC immediately slams the hammer down on the table, also declaring, Number 008 has bid 4 billion for the painting Van Lai Sun Ha. Hearing this, the people below continuously applaud, and he also appears quite pleased. This old man refuses to submit, immediately turning to look at the mushroom-headed guy, saying with a stern face, Borrow 10 billion from San Lino Group and Fuji Group, using my real estate as collateral. This old man is truly determined to play until the end, revealing his hand only when he is about to retire. The mushroom-headed guy, upon hearing this, breaks into a sweat, stuttering. Why, why? The old man smiles with a sly expression, his smile turning gradually sinister, his face darkening. All the remaining finances after bidding for other treasures are not enough to sustain my future plans. People like Kim Tavion, arrogant and self-righteous, are sure to ignore everything, just as he said at the beginning, snatching all ten fragrant treasures in the auction hall. So the last object, the amethyst perfume bottle, is the most important. The old man looks at him, extending his hand as if trying to grasp him within the palm of his hand, smiling with a cunning and fake expression. Just by obtaining the Guanyin statue, someone as perfectionist as him can't resist this kind of mistake. So set up the character to spend a lot of money right from the beginning. Isn't it a collapse? Therefore, you will definitely not endure this final failure. He will undoubtedly ignore everything. It may sound persuasive, but what does the old man know? He possesses an entire financial system, and there's nothing in his hands except money. The old man tightly grips his hands together, stating firmly, As long as I can obtain the Guanian Amethyst statue, 
I can hold the reins to control Kim Taehyung. It sounds too confident and aggressive. The mushroom-headed guy seems to grasp the implication and claps his hands together, saying, So, Mr. Kameda, it's like that. The more money Kim Taehyung invests up front, the less likely he is to give up the final perfume treasure. This is related to his stance and reputation. The old man looks forward with a serious expression. Behind Kim Taehyung, there's probably the patriotic fragrance conglomerate. Humph, that explains why he has so much money. This is a provocation to us. The female assassin sitting behind observes the three in the conversation ahead. This battle can only be won, not lost. The other guy agrees, so it seems. The female assassin blushes, placing her hand on her lips as she turns to look at him. It appears there's a hint of affection. So he represents the fragrance, appearing sarcastic on the surface, yet he's the representative of the fragrance. The likability score increases by 5%. Afterward, the female assassin turns her head again, adding a bunch of thoughts. Hemph, whoever he is, as long as he's an enemy of the master, he's an enemy of mine. Likeability decreases by an additional 2%. This girl is indeed a puzzle. He's on this side, dealing with a headache from her likability score. The system keeps announcing increases and decreases. No idea what's going on in her mind, so many fluctuations. Helpless, he mutters, here we go again. What is this woman really thinking? A statue of the Buddha is brought up by the MC for announcement. The sixth item is a royal escort perfume artifact, starting at 100 million. As soon as the MC makes the announcement, the two below immediately start bidding. He bids first, 500 million, and the old man, not to be outdone, promptly says, 1 billion. The surrounding crowd buzzes with discussion. Here we go again, Kamita and Kim Taehyung, starting their fierce competition in this situation. He shouts a number to the sky, 1.5 billion. The old man immediately retreats, a triumphant look on his face. I withdraw. Hearing this from the old man, the surrounding crowd can't help but marvel. Capturing the price, a perfect withdrawal timing. Mr. Kamita truly gets sharper with age. Another man concurs with that, mockingly saying, if Kim Tae-young continues like this, it will become futile. The two men, each with their own thoughts, quickly face the situation of intentional bidding inflation. Kim Tae-young has successfully bid on numerous perfume artifacts, pouring an enormous amount of money, reaching the staggering sum of 6.8 billion. Meanwhile, Kameda has bid on various other artifacts, not perfumes, and with borrowed finances, he has 12.8 billion left in hand. The time has come, nearing the end of the program. The MC solemnly announces, the final artifact, the statue of Guanyin, from the era of the perfume dynasty. A Guanyin statue is presented before everyone, exuding an air of elegance. The MC shouts the starting price, 400 million. In this old man's imagination, he is wielding a large sword, a sinister face preparing to strike down on him. At this moment, he feels like an ant waiting to be crushed. It's here, this is the final artifact of perfumes. The very thing that Kim Taehyung must regret. Are you ready, Kim Taehyung? I'm about to begin. The MC introduces a bit. The Guanyin statue from the perfume dynasty is officially up for auction. Starting price is 400 million. Please place your bids. The two individuals sitting below close their eyes, contemplating in front of the statue. Then he gently raises the bidding paddle showing signs of tiredness and neck pain. One billion. After buying this last item, I can finally go home. Hurry up. His face and words prompt the old man to loudly announce his bid. One billion five. Just after shouting the bid, the old man turns to look at him with a sarcastic remark. Youngster, nice play. It's just the beginning. Upon hearing this, he knows to respond with a smile. Oh, the surrounding crowd, witnessing the spirited interaction between the two, cheers enthusiastically. Finally, Chairman Kameda has taken action. The girl next to him gleefully comments. Gathering for so long is indeed extraordinary. At this moment, the two seem like dragons and eagles engaged in battle, truly a fierce and intense confrontation. This old man is evidently a cunning eagle, perfume kid, you've encountered a nuisance. It's unclear who is truly the one facing the nuisance. He turned to mock, tauntingly provoking. Hope, Mr. Kamita, can always maintain this serene state. The whole time just nodding, truly fitting for your name. If the final item still loses, 
Then you. He looked up arrogantly to the sky, his gaze treating the situation like looking down on a tiny ant. It will be a joke for the entire China VIP kingdom, won't it? Without hesitation, he raised his bidding paddle. Three billion. The old man laughed, and his face at this moment looked somewhat terrifying. Keep talking big, you've already spent 8.3 billion, the remaining amount can't surpass mine. Then, the old man immediately raised his paddle with the number, 4 billion. He sinisterly looked over, a sly smile forming. So that's what you think, then let's continue. His words made the old man extremely furious. He clenched his teeth and pressed his lips tightly. The two men continued their relentless bidding war. Calmly, with an indifferent expression, he casually raised the bid, 5 billion. Mr. Kamiya became more enthusiastic, 6 billion. The back and forth continued, and he looked at the old man with a disdainful expression. Seven billion. The old man, by now, was a bit strained, glancing at him with a wary look, muttering, nine billion. As the prices soared, he expressed his satisfaction cheerfully, twelve billion. At this point, the old man appeared frightened, his face pale and sweat streaming down his forehead. His eyes bulged with tension, and he grinned his teeth while uttering a figure. 16 billion. G1, realizing the amount was now beyond reasonable, hastily turned to advise him. Kim Tae-young, this amount is too much. Hearing G1's words, he just smirked. On the other side, the mushroom-headed guy was sweating profusely, raising his hand to signal to stop the old man. Our financial chairman has only 12.8 billion. It has exceeded the limit. The old man frowned, muttering with each word. This is related to my reputation just a few billion. I still had stocks and various assets. At this moment, the audience in the theater began to panic, wide-eyed and open-mouthed. Are fairies fighting? The MC on the stage also became urgent, quickly grabbing the microphone and announcing loudly, 16 billion once, going twice. The old man had run out of money, but still turned to challenge him with an angry face. Come on, kid. Are you scared? The MC held the auction hammer ready to finalize the bid, 16 billion twice. The mushroom-headed man looked terrified, and he exclaimed loudly, Chairman, those shares and pills are your last assets. Is it really worth using those things to exchange for an artifact? This has far exceeded its original value. Even if you manage to buy it, you'll go bankrupt. Hearing this, the present view of this old man was like that of a fool who, just for the sake of prestige, was willing to sweat away all the effort he had put into building up. Indeed, foolish to the extreme. The old man held the bidding paddle in his hand, sweating profusely. Only by defeating Kim Tae-hyung, with the wealthy conglomerate behind him, can they think of a way to buy back this artifact. By then, not only will I not have to spend the penny, but I can also gain a lot from the perfume industry. Several other fragrance museums in the plan can offset my debts. This is my true plan. Though it may seem so, encountering you is truly unlucky for a few lifetimes. The two followers of the old man seemed to ease up a bit, echoing in unison. So that's how it is. The female assassin behind them expressed her opinion. If on Kim Taehyung's side, they no longer need this artifact, then what? Isn't it game over? Before she could finish, the old man turned around, scolding in anger. Are you doubting me? Just wait and see. Kim Taehyung will definitely need it. He will kneel down like a dog, begging me to give this artifact to him. Ha ha. This old man was truly foolish beyond words. His words left the female assassin stunned in place. At this point, the young man didn't bother to resist anymore. He happily turned his hand toward the old man with a satisfied expression. Eh hey, yeah, I give up. I'll let Mr. Kamita have this precious one. The MC above immediately closed the bid, banging the hammer in her hand, strongly, lot 001, 16 billion, the auction of the Guanyin statue with the flowing elixir is concluded. Everyone below in the stands applauded, congratulating the old man. It was a record in the history of future auctions, something that couldn't be surpassed for the next 50 years. The troublesome guy looked over at the old man. Chairman, you, you've won. At this moment, the old man seemed like a tiny ant, lured into a massive trap, surrounded by people full of schemes. With fake smiles all around him, he couldn't retreat. The old man had become frightened. His face, looking like a stabbed rat, wanting to brush off what he had just done, I have won. After the auction ended, 
Footsteps echoed through the corridor. The old man approached, accompanied by his two lackeys and the female assassin. Arms crossed, he looked down at the young man with disdain. Ha 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 ha, Kim Tae-young. Didn't you say you would buy all the treasures of the fragrance country? Why did you bring so little money? And the most crucial Guanyin statue elixir isn't bought. You have to explain to the fragrance magnates how you failed to keep your word. The young man looked up at the old man with a cheerful face, while Jai Won didn't look pleased. She became uncomfortable with the old man's words. The old man looked down at the two and uttered a scornful remark, questioning the national pride of others. Your patriotism is basically worthless. With a flick of her finger, the female assassin reached the end of her victim, producing a Japanese sword. The old man took the sword, revealing a sharp and shiny blade. Following the spirit of the warriors of the VIP Fragrance Kingdom, failure like yours. As he finished speaking, the old man tossed the sword right in front of the young man. The only way to atone is by cutting off your hand. The young man crossed his arms, looking down at the sword. He then bent down to pick up the sword. Holding it in his hand, he shook it, contemplating. Seeing this, the old man's followers sneered. But living in fear of death is your characteristic. Surely you wouldn't dare accept such a glorious act. I can give you a chance. Pointing towards the Guanian statue, the old man had a man pushed forward. Now you can borrow 19.9 billion, and I can sell you the Guanian statue elixir. Is this old man crazy? Why is he making up such bizarre scenarios? The old man squinted at him. You completed the mission. There's no need for such humiliation. Right. Cheerfully, he pointed directly at the old man's face. Not at all. I just want to witness this glorious moment of yours. After saying that, one of the old man's henchmen pointed straight at him, angrily cursing. You lost, and yet you act so arrogantly. The old man, no longer pretending to raise the bid, said, not even a penny less. He just looked at the two henchmen performing before him, smiling without any signs of anger. Then he rose from his seat, standing in front of the old man. With an air of nonchalance, he adjusted his tie, looking down on the old man, like an overseer observing a tiny ant. Mr. Kameda, your lapdog is truly worthless. Hearing these words, the old man became frightened, confronted by the casual demeanor of his opponent. He retreated fearfully, asking, What do you mean? Did Jonan tell you that I would buy all the fragrance artifacts? And I guess it was correct. Upon hearing his words, Jonan was astonished. So now, are you scared and want to take back your words? Walking around the Buddha statue, he spoke to him. Remember what I said back then. For clarification, the artifacts being sold abroad are from the ancient times, not the fragrance artifacts. He angrily shouted. At that time, you said you would collect all the lost artifacts abroad, including the fragrance artifacts, didn't you? Kamita, hearing this, was shocked. He turned and slapped Zhang On on the ear, causing him to fall to the ground. Zhang On held his face in bewilderment, asking, Mr. Kameda. Kameda, sweating with fear, spoke to him. I just wanted to collect the artifacts that the Kingdom of China VIP had looted from the fragrance country in the past. As for the Guanyin fragrance statue, it is a product of the Kingdom of China VIP sold to the fragrance country in ancient times. It doesn't hold any value for you. He looked at him and smiled. Well, you can't say it has no value. It still has the basic value of an artifact. He stood up reaching out to the Buddha statue, scratching his chin as he continued. Like the eyebrows and beard, this style of Guanyin statue hasn't been popular since the Tang dynasty in the fragrance country. It was created in this form precisely because it had to be exported to your people. If you had accurate information, the failure wouldn't have been as disastrous as it is now. By spending 16 billion to buy an item worth at most 400 million, you've incurred a huge loss. You become famous worldwide. But unfortunately, it's for being slapped in the face. He continued to taunt him. Aya, aren't you the one who claimed to have reversed your fortunes to buy this artifact? Isn't that so? Truly, you live up to your reputation, old turtle. Hearing this, Kameda became furious, his eyes widening, and his whole body trembling with fear. Grinding his teeth, he ordered his henchmen to drag down the one who had harmed him. Get him. Bring Jung on down. The frightened individual pleaded for mercy. Save me, Mr. Kameda. Spare my life. The girl next to him, who had also been deceived by him for a moment, calmly walked over to him and said, You've scared me to death. 
I thought you would compete with Kameda for this Guanyin statue. While momentarily failing to realize that this was an export item, he awkwardly scratched his head and said, Sorry, to deceive the enemy, you must first deceive your own people. At this moment, a group of entrepreneurs gathered around him. They eagerly introduced themselves and invited him to meet. Mr. Tae Young, I am an art collector from Mexico. Mr. Tae Young, I am a curator at the neighboring country's museum. Mr. Tae Young, do you plan to stay in the VIP Kingdom of China for a few days? I can be your tour guide. Are you free tonight, Mr. Tae Young? The group of entrepreneurs kept asking him, paying no attention to the person who had spent 16 billion to bid on a seemingly unworthy statue. They turned back to glance at Kamita with disdain. It turned out that these people had long despised him, so they were cheerful and warmly welcomed Taeyeon. Many auction blocks echoed with comments like, Finally, someone has defeated Kameda. Big news! This auction will be famous. Kameda remains the most famous, right? 16 billion for that Guanyin statue. Ha ha! Hearing the sarcastic remarks of those individuals, Kameda was infuriated, trembling with anger. But there was nothing he could do to them. In the midst of the chaos, a provocateur deliberately took the opportunity to strike at him. He extended his hand and delivered a powerful blow to Kameda, causing him to lose balance and stumble forward. Struck by the unexpected punch, Kameda's heart condition flared up again. He raised his trembling hand, clutching his chest, and collapsed to the ground, gasping for breath. Suddenly, a pair of feet approached him. It was Taehyung. Passing by, he kindly inquired, Mr. Kameda, are you okay? You should take care of your health. Kamita, still trembling, looked up at him. After Taehyun walked away, he angrily gritted his teeth, glaring at Taehyun's receding figure. Kamita reached into his pocket, took out a phone, and furiously made a call to his martial artists and ninjas. All of Kamita's fighters and ninjas immediately went into action. Retrieve all of Kim Taehyun's artifacts. I want him to see the sun tomorrow. The ninjas and fighters swiftly carried out the orders. The scene shifted to another location, at the embassy of the fragrance country in the VIP kingdom of China. Taehyung and the girl had arrived to meet with the embassy officials. The three of them sat down at a table for a conversation. Surrounded by dozens of bodyguards, the fragrance country's embassy delegation arrived to meet Kim Taehyung. The ambassador said, Taehyung, I'm fully aware of the situation. You spent a considerable amount to acquire precious artifacts from foreign fragrance countries. On behalf of the embassy, I sincerely express our gratitude. We've heard about Kameda's cunning tactics, and we assure you that we'll do everything to ensure your safety. Taehyung shook hands with the ambassador, expressing his gratitude. Thank you very much. However, I have urgent matters to attend to. Could you lend me a vehicle? The ambassador, with a hint of concern, asked, Do you want to leave the embassy? The girl beside him, worried for his safety, pulled on his sleeve. Taehyung, can't you stay? It's dangerous outside. I'm afraid. Taehyung turned to her, reassuringly saying, I promise nothing will happen. Trust me. Despite her lingering fear, she reluctantly agreed. Okay. Shortly after, Taehyung descended to the parking garage to retrieve a car for his departure. Trying to escape, huh? Kameda has really gotten on our nerves, he said, turning the ignition key. If we don't take him down this time, it will be a futile trip. Unexpectedly, Two throwing stars flew towards him from behind, but he easily dodged them. Behind him, the girl, often seen with Kameda, approached with two knives, ready to attack him. He turned around with the same cheerful expression as predicted earlier. You're here so quickly. Why didn't you bring the Magatama I gave you? The female assassin, blushing and somewhat embarrassed, responded, Why should I bring it, and um, why are you mentioning it? Her blushing and awkwardness made her genuinely cute. Not bothered by her reaction, he complimented, I find it suits your eyes very well. Her demeanor turned serious at this point, recognizing that despite the banter, they were still opponents. She stated, I don't know why you gave me the Magatama. If you're trying to recruit me, it's useless. The Sato ninjas only follow the orders of their master. Through her words, her loyalty became evident. He, in response, remained unperturbed, and even appeared more cheerful, raising two fingers. So, it's a master-servant relationship. That makes things easier. I'll hire all the Sato ninjas. Whatever Kamita pays, I'll pay double. His words carried a hint of underestimation towards others. The female assassin, 
felt that his words were a slight to her, so she became defensive. You are insulting the Sato family. Do you think we would casually break our contracts and kill our own master? He looked at her with a somewhat provocative gaze. So, if the master dies, the contract disappears. Right. Unable to tolerate his somewhat contemptuous words any longer, the girl proactively rushed forward, attempting to strike him down. Shut your mouth. He, however, wasn't one to be easily caught, having the advantage of a buff physique. He deftly avoided the girl's blade with a calm and handsome face. Pretending to be lucky to have evaded, he staggered as if in fear. Close call. The girl landed lightly after gliding past him, not forgetting to glance back to see how he played it out. He looks like he knows nothing about martial arts. How could he dodge all my attacks? She observed him with a sharp, cold gaze. A certain thought seemed to cross her mind. If that's the case, she swung her arm, holding the knife and a ball resembling a thrown bomb shot towards him at lightning speed. He was startled at the sight of the bomb. Then the projectile rushed towards him and exploded, creating a white smoke screen. Quickly, he raised his hand to shield his face. Anything was fair game but he had to protect his handsome face. After the smoke dispersed, he looked around in the hazy space created by the bomb's white smoke. Suddenly, he felt something. Hurriedly looking up, to his surprise, the girl descended from above, kicking him in the neck. Holding two knives, she stared at him with cold eyes. The weight of her pressed on his shoulders, causing him pain and furrowing his brows. Hastily using his hands to resist, she gripped two Japanese swords, aiming to thrust them straight down at him. Her gaze seemed to signify the end of something, perhaps his life. He felt the two sword tips approaching his eyes, and realized the gravity of the situation. Sweat streamed down his face. Then, he no longer concealed his strength, decisively using his hands to grasp both of her wrists, preventing her from stabbing down. Her actions made her pause, visibly astonished by what he had done. Her two hands, holding the two swords, were tightly gripped by him to the point where both arms shook continuously. She seemed to be in pain, furrowing her brow. His strength is overwhelming. Normally, this defensive posture would be the most difficult to exert force against, she commended. It appeared that she had underestimated him. Unable to use her hands, the girl resorted to using her legs to tightly clamp around his neck, causing him some pain, making him gasp for breath, sweat streaming down. He wasn't one to submit easily, turning to bite and squeeze her thigh with his mouth. In pain, the girl immediately released her grip on him, safely landing on the ground. Her face still seemed confused, not fully comprehending what had just transpired. As for him, after breaking free, he continued to pant heavily. The girl touched the bite mark he left on her thigh. Her hand trembled incessantly as she cursed. I didn't expect you to resort to such despicable tactics. Perhaps this girl didn't understand that sometimes, not being despicable meant losing. You, even in the midst of being choked to the brink of death, wasted no time. Instead, you stepped forward, adjusting your tie confidently and took a deep breath. You're a professional assassin, while I'm just an ordinary person. As long as I can win, the end justifies the means. The girl listened to your words, only giving you a glance without saying anything. Without hesitation, you immediately leaned down into a running position, declaring, Now it's my turn. Let's see your skills in action. In a split second, you rushed forward like lightning. The girl had no time to react, and her face turned pale with sweat. Unable to prepare herself, she hastily raised her two swords to defend. Her face showed an indescribable shade of green. You swiftly approached and neatly grabbed both arms holding the swords. Then, with force, you pushed her strongly into the car behind her. She felt a bit of pain from the impact. Holding her arms tightly in a straightforward lock, you cheerfully declared, caught you. Your actions and words left her embarrassed and blushing. She, however, wasn't one to accept defeat and immediately used her leg to strike at your sensitive area to immobilize you. But someone as crafty as you wouldn't overlook such a possibility. You quickly moved backward, teasing. Oh, you still want to attack my little brother. After speaking, you immediately used your head to strike the girl's forehead, leaving her astonished. Only someone successful would have such a distinctive style. Indeed, successful people often have their unique ways. But one must also marvel at the hardness of your head. The girl, hit in the head, dropped the two swords she was holding, falling to the ground unconscious. You rub your forehead with your hand inside, finally dealt with, level 3 attribute. Now I can reluctantly win against a ninja. 
You were genuinely worried about your future, to the point that you were sweating. But if you had to deal with many ninjas and fighters, you would surely lose. You had to think of a way. After a while, you left the girl lying on the car and thoroughly searched through her belongings. You took the girl's sword and rubbed your chin, contemplating as you looked at her. You also found a vial in her chest, saying, This is medicine. Honestly, she hit it well. You pulled your mask down and put a pill into the girl's mouth, your face revealing a hint of cunning. Now, ninja girl, tell me the truth. After a while, the girl woke up, catching a glimpse of your figure. Wake up, don't sleep anymore. I'm in a hurry. She opened her eyes gently, still a bit dazed. Ha. Huh. Then she realized she was tightly tied up with her hands in a very embarrassing position. Furthermore, you were getting close to her, making her blush and startle. I gave you the medicine, honestly. Now it's time for interrogation. The girl raised her eyes to look at you, with an expression and a helpless gaze acknowledging defeat. I admit defeat, but the medicine, I've been professionally trained. You won't achieve anything. Her words sounded confident when spoken, not knowing what you would do next. You simply looked at her, smiling and agreeing. That's right. Immediately, you used the sword in your hand, swiftly slashing at an incredibly fast speed, cutting through the rope tying the girl's hands. She was caught off guard, her eyes widening. You played with the sword like a toy, cutting the rope without fear of injuring your hand, saying, if that's the case, tying you up has no value. I'll take your weapons. I still have to deal with Kameda. The girl, incredulous, couldn't believe what you were saying. You, you're letting me go just like that, without asking anything. Hearing her, you genuinely wanted to ask a question. I have only one question, provided it doesn't harm you. How can you abandon the pursuit of me? Though verbally expressing the desire for her not to die, deep down, you didn't want her to die, for a rather absurd reason. If she dies, I can't collect the reward. The girl, moved by your words, blushed with a mixture of embarrassment and appreciation. You, on the other hand, stood with crossed arms, continuously observing her. The girl, feeling self-conscious, turned her face away, deliberately using her hand to cover her blushing face, saying, Why is he treating me so well, even giving me a magatama? Couldn't it be? And then, another idealized image of your romantic interest was born. The girl's favorability increased by 10%. Later, you opened the driver's seat door, and when you settled in, the door slammed shut. As you prepared to drive away, the girl approached you, wanting to say something. Wait, why are you going to find Kamita alone like this? Hearing that, you were puzzled. Why not? If I can't get any information from you, I'll have to ask another assassin. Right. Clearly, you were using a soft binding technique to emotionally manipulate the girl. Hearing your words, the girl, with a horrified expression, Turn pale. Afraid that you might face danger, she spilled all the information to you. Kameda is at the seaside villa number two, in the town of Hivishi Atami. Despite sending a large number of assassins to kill you, there are still eight gunmen and six ninjas in the villa. Hearing the girl's sincere explanation and the warning about the danger, you responded appreciatively. Very detailed. Thank you. Concerned, the girl stumbled over her words anxiously. I, I just want you to know. Going alone is like delivering yourself to death. The girl closed her eyes, recalling the ruthless old man Kameda, causing her to tremble uncontrollably. Her face turned pale with fear, feeling like a mere ant in his hands, subject to his whims. Kameda is extremely ruthless, whether it's towards his targets or his subordinates. I really want to escape, but the rules of the Sato clan are very strict. Upon hearing this, you immediately placed your hand on the girl's shoulder to comfort her, don't worry, now I'll negotiate with Kamita. Trust the conditions I propose, and he'll agree. The girl, who had never been treated so gently before, felt a newfound tenderness. But upon meeting you, she discovered what true emotion was. She looked at your hand on her shoulder, and her face blushed. You, with a cold expression and a sinister gaze, warned the girl. Find a place to hide and stay low. Seeing your demeanor, it seems that old man Kamita won't be at ease with you. The car accelerated, speeding away, leaving the girl standing behind as if awaiting her tragic fate. The girl touched the spot where you had just touched moments ago, feeling the lingering warmth somewhere. This sensation was most evident in the girl's heart. Her face blushed, carrying an irresistible sweetness, 
like that of a young girl experiencing the first hints of love. Kim Taehyung. Why does everything he does go beyond my expectations? I've never met anyone like him. The girl's favorable impression increased by another 20%. Just as she was savoring the feeling of her own love for you, her attitude immediately shifted to a different state. She became startled, her face turning pale. Above her head, three shadows darted swiftly. Unbeknownst to her, those three shadows were three Sato clan ninjas. Landing around the girl, one of them spoke into a communicator. The target has escaped through the east gate of the embassy. Send people after her. Saito Ashuka failed the mission, suspicion of betrayal from within. The communicator echoed, bring her back here. The girl was now excessively terrified. She couldn't believe her eyes, mouth agape, face turning pale, accompanied by sweat pouring down like rain. The scene shifted to another location at night, an island in the middle of the sea. Atop the island was an opulent mansion, with several boats constantly shining lights to see if there were any targets approaching to assassinate the old man, Kamita. Old man Kamita stood in front of a large glass door, holding a walkie-talkie in his hand. He's disappeared. The response on the other side came. We thought he would come here. So we ambushed along the route. But he switched to another road. We found his car. But he's no longer in it. Enraged old Kamita cursed into the walkie-talkie. Useless. If it's useless, do it yourself, old man. Capturing someone now and cursing useless, despicable. Dispatch all the ninjas from the embassy to search thoroughly for me. The girl was now tied to a chair, both hands tightly bound with ropes, and her body covered in electrical wires. After making the call, old Kamita looked over. This old man was also truly malevolent. Old Kamita approached, grabbed the girl's hair, and by looking at her expression, one could sense his extreme malevolence. Old Kamita interrogated, speak, where has Kim Taehyung gone? The exhausted girl replied, I don't know, I really don't know. His master took away all my weapons and didn't share any plans with me. Old Kamita pressed a remote control, increasing the intensity. Do you think I'll believe that? He will release you unharmed like this. The girl was shocked by the high-intensity electric shock and her entire body convulsed as she let out a loud cry. Ah, ah, after the electric current subsided, the girl trembled and slumped down. Her face reflected the pain and suffering she endured, covered in sweat accompanied by helpless gasps. Old Kamita twisted the girl's face, threateningly saying, I have many effective interrogation methods, but I won't use them on you. Do you know why? Because I have to ensure that your flawless body has no injuries so that I can sell it at a good price. This old man was truly sinister. The girl, with her face twisted in discomfort, begged, please, don't. Suddenly, there was a warning from outside. Old Kamita heard it and quickly turned around to see what was happening. Outside, a voice shouted, We're under attack, only one person. Don't know where he infiltrated from. Old Kamita looked down from the door. Inside the walkie-talkie, there was a report on the current battle situation. He killed several of our people, using ninja weapons. Old Kamita affirmed, It must be Kim Taehyung. Immediately he ordered, Turn on all headlights. Ninja team, move out. Footsteps rushed away rapidly. He soared up, using the two swords from the girl, to slash across the neck of a bodyguard preparing to use a gun. A headlight was turned on right where he was standing. Looking at him, it seemed as if he was receiving an award. Target identified. He can't escape. These people were overly confident. Six Sato clan ninjas saw him and flew up into the sky. All six approached him. Each of them used shurikens straight at him. They targeted him but hitting him was just wishful thinking. He quickly dodged all the shurikens from the ninja group. Then, he jumped high above the mountain peak. Without hesitation, he leaped into the sea. The ninja group also did not hesitate. Each of them jumped after him. On this side, an announcement came through the walkie-talkie. The target has jumped into the sea. Our ninjas are following him down. Old Kameda, upon hearing this, revealed a pleased expression, exuding immense confidence. Hemph, thinking that jumping into the sea can escape. These six ninjas are elite members of the Sato clan, and their underwater assassination skills are formidable. Kim Taehyung, you're probably dead. On the other side, he was sinking into the sea, and the six ninjas were swiftly closing in on him with the fastest speed possible. A ninja, holding a shuriken in hand, swiftly approached him, even underwater. The ninja intended to stab him, just a little more and he could have been killed beneath the water. However, 
The ninja couldn't anticipate that he would disappear in an instant. Right after, he reappeared behind the ninja, mysteriously holding a sword to the ninja's throat with a cold expression and sharp eyes. This left the ninja in disbelief. The ninja's face was now filled with utmost terror. He showed no mercy, slashing a sword across the neck, ending the ninja's life right beneath the water. At this point, he regained his momentum, swiftly swimming like a fish accelerating in water. A smile appeared on his face, along with a determined look in his eyes. The five ninjas above signaled each other skillfully with their hands. He swims too fast, don't disperse, gather in one place. The five ninjas regrouped in the middle of the vast ocean. He continued to dart back and forth with incredible speed, like a predator preparing to strike its prey. The five ninjas, witnessing his swimming speed, couldn't help but marvel. Too fast, this is the speed that a human can achieve. He swiftly moved underwater, his eyes looking at the five ninjas, as if he was eyeing his delicious and fat prey. On the surface, I truly can't compete with you all, but underwater, you can't use your techniques, and your speed is not as fast as mine. It seems that these are all things you predicted beforehand, relying on your quick-witted mind. I have about ten more minutes. I need to kill you before time runs out. Suddenly, while swimming, you notice that the water here is quite polluted. The sea of the China VIP kingdom is not clean at all. I wonder how long it takes for the sea to become toxic. I have to win this battle quickly. He swiftly darted past the five ninja. They cautiously held their swords in front of them to minimize potential damage from him. One of the ninjas couldn't endure it anymore. His face turned pale due to the lack of oxygen underwater. Unable to bear it, he quickly swam to the surface to find some air. Seeing him leaving the formation, he couldn't miss this opportunity, immediately chasing after him. The remaining ninjas, witnessing their formation breaking, became astonished. He rapidly approached the escaping ninja, without hesitation, struck a blow, ending the ninja's life. The other four ninjas couldn't contain themselves any longer. Each one lacked oxygen to the point of turning pale. They hurriedly rushed to the surface to replenish their oxygen. We can't endure it any longer. We have to surface and breathe. Looking down, he realized he still showed no signs of lacking oxygen underwater. Moreover, his speed increased even more, making these ninja think. He's not human anymore. He must have been possessed by a sea spirit. He's definitely not human. He's been swimming for three minutes. So why doesn't he need oxygen? These ninja, struggling with both the lack of oxygen and being pursued by him, were truly in misery. Meanwhile, at the old man Kameda, he held the communicator, facing the large door. In his mind, a question arose. The gunfire has stopped. Kameda thought the end of gunfire meant he had been killed, and he couldn't help but feel joyous, bursting into laughter like a madman. Ha ha ha, truly foolish, to confront me alone. It's a pity I can't witness the desperate expression on his face as he approaches death. This old man was quite a character, laughing today and tomorrow being laughed at. On the other side, the girl didn't hear any more sounds, and seeing Kameda laugh, she thought he was dead. Her face became filled with pain, not just for his fate, but also for the uncertain and drifting life she was leading. In the quiet night, she called out his name, Kim Taekyung. Kameda held a red vial in his hand, saying, The nuisance has been taken care of, so now it's time for. He looked at the girl, while his other hand incessantly stroked his beard displaying a creepy expression on his ugly face. Terrified, the girl exclaimed, No. Kameda squeezed the girl's face to open her mouth, dropping a red liquid into it. At this point, she had no strength to resist, and her fate was sealed by Kameda. With a creepy expression resembling that of an old perverted goat, he muttered, Wait until I get bored. I'll sell you to another country. As for the Sato family, all I have to do is say you failed the mission, got killed by Kim Taeyong and the Sato family won't care about a discarded commodity like you. The helpless girl faced her unjust fate. She raised her head, closed her eyes in resignation, and two streams of tears rolled down her beautiful face. When Kim Taeyong said those words, I truly believed he could change my destiny. Her tears fell to the ground. With no one left to salvage her life, she could only implore the divine, hoping for a miraculous intervention. Oh, divine being, if there's a miracle, Please let it happen now. The girl had just finished pleading when Kamita, with his creepy expression, leaned in close. One of his hands touched her face, and the other seemed to play mischievously. This world has no divine beings, but I can take you to paradise. 
His words extinguished the girl's last flicker of hope. As he was about to proceed with his actions, a voice interrupted, But I can send you straight to hell. This statement startled Kamita in fear. Emerging from the shadows, right at the window, was the tall figure of Kim Taehyung. His face exuded unwavering determination. The girl, seeing that he was not dead and had come to rescue her, felt immense joy. Her eyes welled up with tears, and her blushing face called out, Kim Taehyung. In the direst moment, the sight of her potential savior caused her favorable impression to skyrocket by 50%. Taehyung looked at the girl, who was now smiling warmly, and repeatedly apologized. Sorry for being late. Those ninjas were quite persistent. Hearing what Taehyung said, Kamita couldn't believe his eyes, quickly grabbing the walkie-talkie to check. How is that possible? Before Kamita could press the button on the walkie-talkie, Taehyung swiftly threw a shuriken right at the lower forearm of Kamita, causing him pain and making him throw the walkie-talkie away while shouting loudly, Ah! Taehyung, agile and decisive, quickly lunged forward, forcefully driving his knee into Kamita's abdomen, causing him to spew blood. Taehyung enlightened Kamita about the current situation. Apologies to your fighters. They are still clueless on the surface, guarding against the ninja underwater. Kamita, writhing in pain, couldn't endure it and collapsed onto the floor, assuming a kneeling position, drooling and moaning in agony. Aha! Taehyung cautioned him. You better stay quiet. Don't disturb others. Moving behind the girl, Taehyung used his sword to cut the ropes binding her. Kamita, trembling, crawled under the floor, slowly getting up, then turned to question Taehyung. Why? How is it even possible that you're still alive? Taehyung, nonchalant, responded with the truth, probably because of my excellent swimming skills. He embraced the girl, helping her stand, using his body as support. The girl's face turned blush, breathing heavily, possibly due to the red liquid the old man had given her earlier. Taehyung gently handed the sword to the girl, inquiring, Do you want to handle him yourself? Hearing Taehyung's question to the girl, the old Kamita, now aware of fear, quickly kneeled on the ground, begging the girl. If she didn't want something terrible to happen, it was best not to act at the moment. He repeatedly apologized, pleading for forgiveness. Please, I was wrong. I apologize, I'm sorry, please spare me. But given the old man's actions, forgiveness seemed unlikely. The girl used her hand to open the lid of the vial containing the red liquid from earlier approaching and pouring the entire content into the old Kamita's mouth without any mercy. After forcing him to drink the entire vial, she disgustingly dropped the vial to the ground. As they left, they couldn't help but look at the old man with contempt. Killing him with a sword might be too easy. This vial was enough to make him die a gruesome death. After having the vial poured into his mouth, the old Kamita relentlessly clawed at his throat, vomiting red fluid rapidly onto the surface, the canoe speeding away. The two sat on the canoe, returning to the mainland, leaving the island of death behind. On the canoe, Taehyung couldn't help shivering at the sight of that vial. Chap, chap, chap. This medicine is truly terrifying. The girl sitting on the boat continuously gasped, holding on to Taehyung's hand, her face turning red as if affected by the drug. Sensing the girl's unusual behavior, Taehyung turned his head to ask, What's wrong? Kamita just forced me to drink that thing. The girl rushed forward, using her two hands to grip his neck, pressing herself against him. I'm sorry. I can't resist it anymore. Perplexed, Taehyung asked. What? Next, whatever happens will happen. Feel free to speculate, my friends. The boat sways aimlessly on the boundless sea, and the sky is gradually brightening. The sun is rising to welcome a new day. You sit back on the boat in a relaxed state. In your arms is the girl who, after a tiresome night, has fallen asleep until morning. Holding the girl and admiring the beautiful sunrise, it's truly a moment of enjoyment. At this moment, the girl wakes up, suddenly recalling many things that make her feel sad. Kameda is dead. The mission for my master has failed, and I have to return to the Sato house to face punishment. You gently console her, as if advising her. Don't be a ninja anymore. Live and die peacefully. It's not good for a young girl like you to live in constant danger. Hearing your words, her eyes become teary, but I don't know what else I can do. We are ninjas, all orphans adopted by the Sato family from a young age, rigorously trained from childhood. Being a ninja is our only destiny. You pay no attention to what she says, 
immediately pulling out the VIP black card, illuminating the sky like a beacon. You handed the card to the girl, scratching your head while looking at her with a playful expression. You wanted to give her an opportunity. If you don't know what you want to do, then go explore. Here, there's a billion dollars, and you could slowly find what you want to do, become the person you want to be. From now on, live for yourself. Upon hearing these words from you, the girl's face turned bright red, tears streaming down her beautiful and delicate face. Thank you, Kim Taehyung. Her favorability increased by an additional 45%, and Sato Asuka reached 90%. Having completed the first stage of the beautiful sea scene, the girl couldn't contain her emotions and rushed into a tight embrace. The system rewarded, spent 1 billion years of rehearsal for Sato Asuka, refunding 10% of 150 million yuan, already transferred to your personal account. Attribute Reward, currently at level 4. Choose one of the three skills within the allowed time. Mastering Piano Skill, Grade A. Mastering Hand Dance Skill, Grade D. Mastering Somersault Skill, Grade D. In the city, the announcement echoed throughout. President Kameda Kento of the Kameda Corporation passed away last night in his mansion. According to witnesses, the crime scene is extremely horrifying, to the point that the descriptions are blurred. His security guards also suffered casualties, with preliminary speculation pointing to a ninja assassination, suspected to be the work of a rival tycoon. Large containers holding floral products were carefully packed and loaded onto the ship. Human High Kyo departed and the embassy of the Floral Nation saw you off. The ambassador grasped your hands with a cheerful face, saying, Fortunately, Kameda Kadio is no more, and both of you can return home safely. Once again, thank you for the dedication you shown to the Floral Nation. You politely responded, Thank you to the embassy for protecting us. Kameda's actions have consequences. After the farewell, everyone familiar to you and Haikyo in Japan slowly boarded the plane. The matter has been satisfactorily resolved. Unfortunately, there aren't many opportunities to visit the China VIP kingdom for leisure, like soaking in hot water. Upon hearing this, Haikyo added, Next time, come again in the form of a literary exchange. You felt that was acceptable, saying, Sure. The two of you boarded the plane and flew back to the Floral Nation. The airplane soared high in the sky. Below, the girl watched the plane you were on. At this moment, she looked incredibly beautiful, with a charming smile that captivated everyone. She reached up and swept away her hair, revealing that beautiful face. Kim Tae Young, wait for me to finish some personal matters. Then, I'll come to the Floral Nation to find you because it seems I've found the purpose of my life. By now, you and Haikyo had safely returned to your home country. Upon arriving at the gate, Haikyo instructed everyone to move the literary products down and arrange them safely. Be careful. These are precious literary products. Suddenly, you were startled, realizing something was happening. The system appeared. Countdown to choose one of three skills. 16 minutes and 23 seconds. Master the piano skill at level A. Master the hand dance skill at level D. Master the six senses skill at level D. You scratched your head, almost forgetting this important matter. Almost forgot such an important thing. I was so focused on comforting Sato Ahsoka. You stood with crossed arms, examining the skills. What are the other two skills? Let's choose the piano skill. It seems useful. After making your choice, the system displayed. Selected mastery of the piano skill at level A. Now musical notes related to the piano continuously flowed into your mind. Although you had experienced this three times, you were still amazed. Amazing! a large amount of piano-related knowledge flowing into my mind. You were deeply focused when you heard someone calling your name, Kim Taehyung. Turning around to see who it was, you found Shin Hai, looking beautiful in an alluring dress and holding the bag you had given her. I've come to pick you up. Any surprises, she said, smiling. You looked at Shin Hai and replied, No wonder you asked me when I would return to the country. You're truly considerate. Shin Hai hurried over touching you with both hands, her face blushing. I missed you. Taking advantage of your lack of defense, Shin Hai planted a sweet kiss on your cheek, welcoming you back to the country and surprising you. After the kiss, her face was even redder than before. Shin Hai swept her hair aside, looking at you affectionately. I'll take you to eat first, and then we can go check out the house. 
I've selected a 90 square meter one for about 1.5 million. Hearing Shin Hai's words, you suddenly remembered, right, buying a house. You excitedly displayed a playful attitude, gripping her hand tightly. Only 1.5 million? That's not enough. We need to get something more expensive. Your words surprised Shin Hai a bit. Now, both of you left together. Buying the house can cost a lot of money. Is Park Shin Hai's favorability now 95%? I wonder what it will be like when it reaches 100%, you remarked. You draped your arm around Shin Hai, saying, Let's go. At that moment, Shin Hai noticed, The Sedan I ordered is here. As you and Shin Hai were leaving, Hai Kyo turned around and called out to you, Kim Tae Young, where are you going? Hearing Hai Kyo's question, you startled. You explained, Oh, that's, I'm with friends. By the time you looked back, Shin Hai was nowhere to be found. You were bewildered, asking, Ha, huh, where is she? Shin Hai was blending into the crowd ahead, calling a taxi. Hai Kyo, blushing and beautiful, looked at you and said, Is your friend here to pick you up? You two must be good friends. A significant misunderstanding. While you were standing there, Hai Kyo took the initiative to give you a peck on the cheek. You, embarrassed, tried to explain, Um, that. But Hai Kyo's actions left you astonished. After the kiss, she lowered her head and said, this trip to the VIP Kingdom of China has been tough for you, facing danger like this. Just as she finished speaking, Hai Kyo shyly ran off, saying, Now, let me take care of organizing these documents. You blushed, sweating with your thoughts. Um, does this count as an indirect kiss? Shin Hai in the taxi waved to you, Kim Taehyung, get in the car. You scratched your head and mumbled, I managed to avoid a conflict in this lifetime. You took Shin Hai to a luxurious and renowned real estate agency, standing before the opulent Haimich Pool Villa. Shin Hai couldn't help but exclaim in awe at the wealth it exuded. Here it is, Haimich Pool Villa. As they stepped inside, Shin Hai, witnessing the grandeur, was so amazed that she gasped, her mouth agape, and had to cover it with her hand. Kim Taehyung, you, you, without much surprise or awe, found it quite ordinary. Yeah, I asked the friend you introduced me to take a look here. Before coming, you had inquired about the princes and hares in the group chat. They enthusiastically provided directions. Chairman Jion wants to buy the most expensive villa. Go to my Heimish Pool Villa. Power Max Number 1 is the most suitable for Chairman Jun's status. You and Shin Hai walked through the waiting hall. Observing the surroundings, Shin Hai, based on the information she had heard, commented, but I heard even the cheapest villa here cost at least 100 million. The real estate saleswoman noticed the arrival of the two guests and greeted them with a joyful smile. Sir, miss, hello, how may I assist you both? Upon hearing the saleswoman's greeting, you straightforwardly expressed your intentions. I want to see Power Max number one. The saleswoman, upon hearing your request, had a disdainful thought. Oh, another group of people coming here to film the live stream. So annoying. Just pass them on to another colleague. The saleswoman probably didn't know that her thoughts had cost her a substantial commission. Despite thinking so, she maintained a professional demeanor to pass the clients on to someone else. Yes, sir, this is the sales representative for Power Max Dragon number one. Please wait a moment. You can preview the design board for Power Max number one. Afterward, Shin Hai and you approached to examine the model of Power Max Dragon that you wanted to purchase. Shin Hai, after inspecting, exclaimed, Kim Tae Young, this Power Max number one is priced at 300 million. Isn't that too expensive? The saleswoman turned away, calling another staff member to assist the two of you. Hearing Shin Hai's remark, she displayed a face of disdain. You, upon hearing Shin Hai's comment, put on a handsome face with your radiant skin and said to her, Shin Hai, this is your first house. I don't want to give a half hearted gift, if I'm going to gift. It has to be the most expensive. Upon hearing your words, Shin Hai was touched, tears welling up in her eyes. Kim Tae Young, her favorability increased by an additional 3%, bringing Park Shin Hai's current favorability to 98%. You noticing Shin Hai's favorability approaching its highest mark, couldn't help but feel joyous and self-satisfied. Oh ha ha ha, I'm strong, making money and increasing favorability at the same time. You were the happiest, truly the happiest. While enjoying ourselves, the sound of two pairs of footsteps, 
one belonging to a man and the other to a woman, approached. A portly man, adorned in the ostentatious style typical of the wealthy elite, with a condescending gaze, carried a bag brimming with money, gold chains around his neck, a designer belt, and expensive red leather shoes. By his side, he had a girl, somewhat attractive, with curves in all the right places, but it was uncertain whether her demeanor matched her appearance. Upon entering, the portly man flaunted his wealth, exclaiming, Today, I'm taking her to see the luxurious Power Max No. 1. The girl beside him, delighted, praised the plump man, saying, Chairman Cha, you're so impressive. Do you want to buy that condo? In response, the portly man was not committal. It's not certain. If it can please me, buying it would be a spontaneous decision. Indeed, he spoke with an unceasing flow of lies as he approached and laid his handbag on the table, glancing over to the guy. Did your brother also buy a mansion? Without waiting for an answer, Shin Hai enthusiastically showed a photo to him. Oh my, Kim Taeyong, look at this balcony and pool. It's expensive, but truly beautiful. Seeing Shin Hai so satisfied, he couldn't help but break into a cheerful smile. You were happily enjoying yourself when two annoying individuals without eyes or ears appeared. The portly man arrogantly crossed his arms his face exuding disdain. Coincidentally, the younger brother is also eyeing Power Max No. 1. The girl accompanying the portly man chimed in with a mocking laugh. Ha ha. Seeing this, you and Shin Hai felt a bit uncomfortable. You feigned foolishness and spoke. I'm also here for Power Max No. 1, so that's quite a coincidence. Shin Hai, holding a book, wore a slightly serious and annoyed expression. Apologies, but we've already decided to buy Power Max No. 1. You two could check out Power Max number two or three directly. Upon hearing this, the portly man lowered his glasses to get a better look at your face, chuckling mockingly. Is that so? The younger brother is still so young, unexpectedly already a billionaire. In that case, we naturally have to yield to the two of you. Let's confirm with Duvi. The woman hiding behind the portly man then revealed her face. Of course, although we want to buy it, let's consider it a gift of friendship. After saying that, you didn't care much feeling a bit uncomfortable, and went to ask a store employee, excuse me, which way to the restroom? The employee pointed towards the restroom, go in this direction, and turn right. Shin Hai stood there, observing the house, finding the portly man detestable, disliking him, she grunted in frustration. At this moment, in the men's restroom, you were right by the sink, washing your hands after finishing your business. You thought the portly man would stay behind to inspect the house without causing any more trouble. But to your surprise, he followed you all the way to the restroom. This portly man seemed like a sky-high level of weird. He cheerfully opened the restroom door. You noticed someone entering and glanced to see who it was. Unexpectedly, the portly man approached the sink, turned around, leaned against the sink's edge, and took a cigarette from his pocket, saying, When your brother charges forward, you have to follow suit. Right. While you were washing your hands, you heard the suggestive words from the portly man, leaving you puzzled. He lit the cigarette, and smoke billowed up, filling the restroom. He turned to look at you mockingly. Your girlfriend is quite feisty. I can see you can't control her. Ah, so he had his eye on Shin Hai. Indeed, an old bull likes to chew on young grass. Confused, you asked with an uncomfortable expression. What do you mean that I don't quite understand? At this point, he exhaled smoke through his nostrils pointed to himself with one hand while the other hand held the cigarette, pointing it at you as he winked. You're pretending to be a wealthy person so convincingly. I just have to worry about what your fate will be shortly. Look at me. The newly rich must play their part flawlessly. Sylvie was a fake and enjoyed putting on airs. Having just heard that, you feigned astonishment, breaking into a sweat, and muttered, Oh, truly, I've grown up, and I've never encountered a situation like this before. The portly man draped his arm around you and revealed his scheme. I find you quite appealing, so I'll generously share some free tips with you. Come, take a look at the keys to my Porsche and Lamborghini. He spoke while pulling out a few keys to show you. Observing this, you looked at the portly man. These are keys to expensive cars. After you said that, he burst into laughter. Then he raised his hand, revealing it was just a key-shaped lighter. Ha 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 ha. These are all props I use. Do he, the girl outside, happened to spot my Lamborghini key, so I easily lured her into holding it. Afterward, the portly man stood swaying and placed his hand on her shoulder, 
Your appearance, you can't intimidate anyone with that. A wealthy person must dress like one. Just by looking, one can tell you're a newcomer. He continued to boast with a proud expression, leaving you feeling helpless. I also deceived Doohee, saying I was going to buy a mansion. Seeing you expressing interest, I immediately borrowed this story to appear on the stage, portraying an emerging wealthy individual without financial constraints, happily expanding established relationships. Isn't that quite skillful? That's adapting to the situation. There's much for you to learn, my friend. By the way, I have a 30-day crash course on sale for 998 yuan, whether it's a beautiful woman or a mistress. Both can be easily lured. Soon, coordinate with me so that you have a reason not to buy this mansion anymore. Indeed, an honest and foolish portly man. Outside, Shin Hai was still attentively examining the house with an extremely joyful expression. Seeing Du He looking bored, she also glanced over. Du He's gaze immediately fell onto Shin Hai's bag, and she sarcastically crossed her arms, looking down on it. Your handmade bag looks quite authentic. Hearing this, Shin Hai's face became irritated. This is genuine, purchased from the Herman store. The other girl stubbornly refused to believe, even flipping her hair with her hand. Little sister, don't misunderstand, I'm not your enemy. Our goals are the same. It's just that you're too inferior to recognize people. Perplexed by Du He's words, Shin Hai asked, What goal do I have? Du He replied with a proud expression, feigning elegance to catch a wealthy man. Shin Hai, in disbelief, exclaimed, You. Ignoring her disbelief, Du He continued to emphasize the core of her story. Can't you see it? Du He proudly displayed her sparkling bag. My level is very high. I was able to hook Chairman Cha. The newly rich spend lavishly. This genuine channel bag was also bought by him. Each costs 120,000. Oh, unfortunately to tell you, your wealthy boyfriend is fake. Talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk. Claims to have a certain demeanor but lacks it. Truly don't know why you fell for him. These two were indeed quite foolish and naive. The girl patted Shin Hai on the shoulder but said, It's okay. In a little while, I'll expose his true face for you and you can easily discard him. Hearing this, Shin Hai felt helpless. Thank you for your concern. I think Kim Taehyung is really nice. After Shin Hai spoke, the girl held Shin Hai's hands and comforted her. Little sister, you're being too stubborn. Wait a bit, and I'll introduce you to the high society group in Seoul. Buying designer bags, joining afternoon tea meetings, you'll find it all there. I guarantee you can step into the upper class within a week. While she was speaking, you and the portly man also came out from the restroom. Shin Hai saw this and looked over. The more I look, the more I like Power Max number one. Without hesitation, you turn to the staff with a confident air. Hello, I want to buy Power Max number one. Please proceed with the paperwork for me now. Upon hearing you, both the staff and the portly man were astonished. The staff asked again. Oh, don't you want to take a look inside first? You declined, and the staff immediately got to work. All right, I'll get everything ready right away. Both scammers had a common goal, to deceive the other person. Now, one wanted to help you break free, and the other wanted to expose the truth. Come here, look here, little brother, I'll help you break free. Come here, look, little sister, I'll reveal the true face of this fake wealthy man for you. You swipe the black VIP card through the cash register. Announcing. Transaction successful. 300 million. Extremely generous, you pointed at Shin Hai, expressing your intention to gift her a 300 million worth house. The official name of this house. Let it be under the name of this young lady. Upon hearing this, Shin Hai felt elated, her heart filled with joy, immersed in a rosy dream with you. She clasped her hands to her face, continuously fantasizing. A 300 million mansion is mine with Kim Tag Young. On the other side, the two scammers fell apart. Even the female staff member wore a shocked expression. All three exclaimed in unison, What? The orange-haired staff member bent down, ushering the two to Power Max Number 1. Please follow me this way. I'll take you to Power Max Number 1. The two individuals who had earlier deceived others now found themselves shattered. The tables had turned, and even the female staff member wore a shocked expression. All three echoed in disbelief. What? The orange-haired staff member, who had played along with the deception, bound and escorted the two to Power Max number one. The mansion area was incredibly luxurious and splendid. 
and no words could truly capture its vastness and opulence. The staff member handed the key to Power Max Dragon, number one to you, saying, Mr. Taehyung, here is your key. From now on, you were the owner of Power Max number one. You reached out to take it, saying, thank you. At this moment, the gatekeeper was extremely drowsy, sinking into sleep in a perfectly upright position. It was unclear how many years of training it took to master this skill. As he slept, the sound of approaching footsteps woke him abruptly. The gatekeeper quickly stood up, ready and alert. Using his staff to block your way, he said, whoever doesn't have business with Power Max number one is not allowed to enter. Before he could finish his sentence, a foot landed squarely on the gatekeeper's face, and a voice declared, I have business here. It turned out to be Chairman Ah. He stood as if he had just finished a martial arts move, kicked the gatekeeper, and then casually dusted off his hands, saying, Ha, luckily I arrived just in time. I knew the situation would turn out like this. This old man understood the plot twists calmly written by the author. You and Shin Hai, looking at Chairman Ah, were sweating profusely, not knowing what to say. After all, the two of you walked shoulder to shoulder into the luxurious Power Max No. 1. Chairman Ah didn't forget to wave from behind, saying, I won't disturb Chairman Jian. Enjoy your new home and beautiful lady. Best wishes for both of you. Outside is already glamorous, but unexpectedly, the inside is even more magnificent. It looks like a grand and majestic palace, with male and female servants standing, waiting for the owner. Oh my God, there's even a row of expensive wines. Outside, there's also a luxurious and spacious swimming pool crystal clear blue water, and a private gym. Shin Hai couldn't help but exclaim, Oh my God, it's so luxurious. Yet the two of them even strolled into the bathroom. You looked around, saying, The bathroom is so spacious, enough for ten people. Moreover, next to the bathroom is a sauna room. Since entering the bathroom, Shin Hai's face suddenly turned bright red. At this moment, the water suddenly turned on. Hearing the sound of water, you quickly turned back to see what had happened. Unexpectedly, the water from the shower had wet all of Shin Hai's clothes. Shin Hai explained, carelessly bumped into the switch. Suddenly, your eyes stumbled upon an inappropriate place. Then let's take a hot bath, don't leave it cold. You turned away, saying, I'll go buy new clothes. But unexpectedly, Shin Hai pulled you back, blushing. She said, don't go, this villa is too big and I'm a bit scared being alone. Having said that, what comes will come. After a while, the system echoed with the sound of notifications. Congratulations, host, you have successfully completed an exercise, obtaining the first 100% effort achievement, and the submissive relationship of Park Shin Hai, and the master has changed. From now on, she will be wholehearted and never betray. Spending 300 million for the exercise, Refunding 30 million, rewarding an additional level of full attributes. You can choose any level B skill now. Do you want to make a choice now? You looked up, your eyes sparkling. Successful exercise. You happily clenched your fist. Wholehearted and never betray. It means that even if she knows about the other women, she won't be jealous or reduce her goodwill. So there's no more competition. Embracing from the left and hoving from the right is no longer just a dream. Fantastic. Oh my God, I said it shamelessly. The next day, Jisoo also woke up, yawning short and long. Shin Hai at this time, still dreamy, staggered back to the dorm from outside. Seeing this, Jisoo was surprised and asked, Shin Hai, where did you go last night? Shin Hai crawled onto the bed. I'm exhausted. You open my post yourself. Hearing that, Jisoo picked up her phone and opened it with a worried expression. Unexpectedly, Shin Hai posted a picture on her friend's circle about the new house on the new bed with you, and they were holding hands, not forgetting to add the caption. There are words of love by the mouth, light on the face, love in the head, the side there is. You know what it means. Seeing the post, Jisoo couldn't help but tremble with anger. You, he's Kim Taehyung. Shin Hai lay on the bed, yawning. Within her, there seemed to be exhaustion after a long day of activity. In this world, apart from Kim Taehyung, I don't see anyone else. Conveniently, let me clarify. He bought that villa for me. It's our home. Hearing this, Jisoo immediately put on a disdainful expression, mocking Shin Hai. Shin Hai, don't complicate things. You guys don't have any emotional foundation. 
Kim Taehyung could just be playing around. Don't dive too deep. But Shin Hai didn't bother with Jisoo's words. She turned towards the wall, her gaze gradually becoming distant, but still responded to Jisoo. Thank you for the reminder, but my love for Kim Taehyung has reached a point you can't comprehend. Even if other women throw themselves at him, I won't be jealous because Kim Taehyung knows that I will be with him forever. Hearing this, Jisoo couldn't believe it. She never expected Shin Hai to be so obsessed. You are crazy. But Jisoo's words were like the wind blowing through the clouds to Shin Hai. No more words. Last night, Kim Taehyung was so considerate, I could hardly move my limbs. I support you to continue clinging to Kim Taehyung, if you can. Hearing that, Jisoo on the other side of the bed became astonished. Jisoo was extremely angry, continuously biting her nails, displaying an anxious look, as if fearing something. In her heart, she couldn't help but blame. This woman acts so arrogantly. My previous plan wasn't perfect enough. This time, Kim Taehyung will definitely sense that I and these despicable people are completely different. In the following days, a series of messages were sent to him, but he remained indifferent to the point of not caring, sleeping soundly. Moreover, even when sleeping, he had the bad habit of drooling. He heard the continuous buzzing of text messages, and at this point, he woke up. However, his eyes remained unfocused. It turned out many people had messaged him early in the morning. What's going on so early? Unexpectedly, it was a barrage of messages from various people. First was Park Shin Hai. My love, today is your birthday. Let's go out for a meal and watch a movie. Next was Kim Hin Jisoo. Happy birthday. I really want to personally say these words to you. Can we meet on the bridge by the sparkling lake at school? The Seoul Prince and Princess Group. Each of them also sent birthday wishes. Chairman Jun, have a happy birthday. Lastly, Yang Pyong Yoon, Kim Taehyung, happy birthday. Luckily, Park Young Woo mentioned it in the group, or else I wouldn't have known. You are my major shareholder, not inviting you to a meal would be unacceptable. When he read dozens of birthday wishes, he couldn't help but be moved. Tears welled up and he joyfully looked at his phone, saying, Oh, I even forgot my own birthday. I've never had any girl wish me a happy birthday before. After being touched, he quickly composed a reply. Thank you. I'm really touched. But I already made plans with my roommates to go out for a meal today. So next time, okay. After sending the message, his attitude did a 180 degree turn. He threw the phone in his hand and continued to sniffle, his eyes like those of a dead fish. What a joke. Dealing with so many girls in one day, it's annoying to death. I'm not some time management guru. As he looked down, he saw his three roommates all dressed neatly. Hey guys! The guy with glasses holding a phone looked up, smiled at him, and said, Kim Tae Young, today is your birthday, and we invite you to have a meal tonight. Hearing that, he agreed. Then I won't be a stranger anymore. After that, his two roommates looked at each other and laughed sinisterly. Then, he stood in front of a large building looking extremely awkward. Seeing this, he could only scratch his head in confusion. Those three guys invited me to eat in such a luxurious hotel. He awkwardly held his phone while entering the luxurious restaurant. I've been here once before with Yang Yun and Jin Gu, and the other two were sitting on the third floor. On the third floor, he was happily taking a selfie to send to his three roommates. He, taking a picture to inform them. At this moment, a girl walked over, and he messaged the room group. I'm at the entrance of the third floor restaurant. Have you guys arrived? While texting joyfully, the girl immediately turned to accuse him. Why did you secretly take a picture of me? Delete immediately. Apologize to me. He was confused when he heard that. Ha, huh, I didn't secretly take a picture of you. The girl with an ugly face smirked. Every guy who takes a secret picture says the same thing. Afterward, the ugly girl pointed straight at his face. Do you think I'm stupid? I'll count to three. If you don't delete it, I'll call the police. The girl's words made the server on the other side evaluate him. The ugly girl even stood in the crowd and spoke loudly, indeed troublesome. I may just look a bit extraordinary, but wherever I go, there's always a creepy guy taking secret photos. This ugly girl indeed had some delusions about her own beauty. Her words caught everyone's attention. He angrily handed his phone to the ugly girl to show. Ha, huh, I didn't secretly take a picture of you. In the chat log was a selfie he took capturing only the legs of a couple of girls, accompanied by a message. I'm at the entrance of the third floor store. Have you guys arrived? 
The ugly girl was embarrassed by him at this moment, and he straightforwardly spoke to her face. Open your eyes and look carefully at this. People around couldn't help but laugh. Everyone had to cover their mouths and laugh until their bodies trembled. Unexpectedly, Shin Hai appeared at this moment, beautiful and cheerful, coming out to greet him. Kim Taevyung, you're here. Hearing this, he turned to look, puzzled about what was happening. Shin Hai. Then, Shin Hai took his hand. Kim Taeyong, let's go inside. Hearing that, he can only follow along, scratching his head while walking. Oh, well. The girl on this side was left embarrassed, standing there with her mouth wide open, unable to utter a word. People around kept gossiping. This guy's girlfriend is so beautiful. Indeed, with such a beautiful girlfriend. How could he take secret photos of someone with cosmetic surgery like this? Ugly people like to show off. The ugly girl was furious, her face contorted with anger, fists clenched tightly, a bunch of blind people, where can't compare with that cunning sunho, I'm so beautiful, and yet he dared to take pictures of me. This man is really... He followed Shin Hai to a prearranged table, puzzled he asked, Why are you here? Where are Jin Gu and the others? Hearing that, Shin Hai explained his confusion. Today is your birthday, and they wanted to celebrate it with you so they asked for some help. Seated at the table with Shin Hai, he quietly realized, no wonder those three could come to such a high-end restaurant. Shin Hai looked at him. When I told them, they agreed very quickly, they truly are your close friends. Now he could imagine the faces of his three roommates. Guides, our dads can only help us get here. No need to go home tonight. You understand that, right? He can only curse silently. Shin Hai took out a birthday gift for him, Kim Tae Young. Have a happy birthday. See, it was a birthday gift for him. He reached out to accept it, saying, Thank you. It turned out to be a luxury watch. At that moment, he couldn't help but feel. This is a good thing. But the competition is not a good thing after all. Suddenly, a familiar voice called out. Kim Tae Young and Jisoo appeared before him in an alluring dress. She quickly presented her gift and wished him a happy birthday, leaving him surprised and bewildered not understanding what was happening. He exclaimed, Kim Hin Jisoo, while Shin Hai hurriedly stood beside him, asking, Why are you here? Jisoo approached him without hesitation, saying, Kim Tae Young, this is a versus leather belt. I think this belt suits your style. As she spoke, Jisoo pushed her gift in front of him. At this moment, Shin Hai, unwilling to be outdone, pushed her gift forward and said, Is this belt only 50,000? This gift is too cheap, Kim Taehyung, and the latest Omega watch cost 200000 Jisoo also refused to back down, pointing to Shin Hai's watch and saying, No, not really, Park Shin Hai. Kim Taehyung has given you many gifts, and you only bought a $20,000 watch. Although my leather belt is only 50000 that's all the money I have. He sat between two arguing women, feeling tired and unable to bear it. Finally, he dismissed all the arguments and expressed a disgusted look. Take it back. I don't need your gifts. Shin Hai tried to hold back her laughter, surprised by his words. Meanwhile, Jisoo felt as if he loved her, her face blushing as she said, he tells me to return the belt, yet he spent all his money to buy me a gift. Indeed, he still loves me. Unexpectedly, Jisoo's favorability increased by another 3% bringing Kim Hin Jisoo's current favorability to 94%. He was amazed and thought to himself, Oh, what's wrong with this woman? I rejected her gift, yet her favorability towards me increased. Jisoo unexpectedly drew closer and hugged him tightly, saying, Kim Tae Young, I genuinely like you more and more every day. Shin Hai, alarmed, shouted, What are you doing? Let him go. Nearby guests, hearing the commotion between the two women, gathered around to eavesdrop. Jisoo opened her gift box and handed it to him, saying, Kim Tae Young, you don't need to say anything. I understand everything, just like how I understand you. I remember the bunny girl outfit you mentioned before. Kim Tae Young looked at Jisoo's gift in surprise, while Shin Hai, upon seeing it, immediately scolded, Kim Hin Jisoo, why is your face so thick? Hein Jisoo shamelessly replied, So what? When you truly love someone, isn't it supposed to be like this? Nearby, a woman witnessed the tug of war between the two women for the man. She looked at them and thought to herself, Oh my, an unbelievable scene is unfolding. Two beautiful women are competing for him, 
and this man is caught in the middle, unable to escape. Shin Hai suddenly stood up. Han Jisoo, let's go to the restroom, shall we? The opportunistic woman who had been observing them thought to herself, a perfect chance. Entering the restroom, the two women immediately began to argue. Han Jisoo, Kim tae attitude is crystal clear. Yet you still linger around him. It's so boring. Can't you see that Kim tae is not interested? You should be the one to leave. The woman who had followed them in earlier suddenly intervened with a loud shout, Ladies, stop arguing. You're both beautiful and intelligent. Wake up. That man is clearly a scammer, both poor and ugly. He is not worthy of either of you. I'm truly speechless. Upon Shin Hai's inquiry, who are you? The woman didn't answer directly but continued passionately. All of you are high-quality ladies. Men would line up endlessly to pursue any of you. Why argue over a poor and wretched man like him? I'm truly speechless. We should help each other. Hein Jisoo and Shin Hai looked at her, bewildered by her words. Then, they resumed their argument for the second round. Hein Jisoo said, I remember someone saying that even if Kim tae Young has another girl, you wouldn't be jealous. Why the sudden change? If he likes someone else, that's fine by me. But if that person is detestable. The woman who had been talking endlessly earlier was finally ignored by the two. Kim tae Young saw the two women heading into the restroom to argue, ruining the mood for a meal. He discreetly slipped away alone, thinking, they're next to each other just to argue. No point in staying. I'll sneak out. As he was leaving, a voice called out, Kim tae Young. He turned around, and it was Kim ji Won. He asked, Kim ji Won, why are you here? Kim tae Young scratched his head and came up with an excuse, saying, I had plans with my roommate. Unexpectedly, those guys pulled me into their mess. Kim ji Won responded cheerfully, My family dines here too. Maybe it's fate. She approached, took Kim tae Young's hand, and said, Right, Kim tae Young, I've sorted out all the documents. The exhibition will open in two days, and the promotion is all set. It's going great. The girl who had advised the two not to argue was now slinking out. As she reached the elevator, she caught sight of Kim tae Young holding hands with another girl entering. Her expression seemed about to explode, thinking, It's unbelievable. This woman is even more beautiful than the previous two. Why does every beauty surround him? I'll expose that scumbag for sure. Heading down to the first floor, Kim tae Young asked, You said you were going to have a family dinner. Why did you suddenly come down here? I came down to pick you up. Your friend isn't a guy or a girl. Kim ji Won smiled and replied, Hi, hey, it's a girl. We've known each other for many years. When Kim ji Won saw them, she exclaimed, Oh, they're here. Of course, her friend and family greeted her warmly. Hi, hi, Kyo. Hi, Kyo greeted her uncle. Uncle Yang, it's been a long time. Still coming down here to pick up your family, this Kim ji Won is quite something. Kim ji Won extended her hand to introduce Kim tae Yeon to her friend. But he had already left without them noticing. The girl from earlier also hurriedly descended to the lower floor, took out her phone, and snapped pictures as evidence, saying, The scumbag is smart, but I've captured it all. He's done for sure. Kim tae Young sweated, thinking, The world is too small. I didn't expect Kim ji Won and Yang pai on yu to be friends. Although they haven't defined any relationship with me, there's nothing to panic about. But the thought of them meeting and potentially arguing, like Kim Hin Jisoo and Park Shin Hai, gives me a headache. It's better to find a place to hide. Isn't this too coincidental? As he was walking, Kim tae Young spotted a street musician. He approached, slung his arm over the musician's shoulders, and said, Hey buddy, it's time for a shift change. The manager told me to take over. The musician looked at him in confusion. Ha, huh, shift change. Kim tae Young swiftly removed the man's clothes and put them on, saying, I forgot to bring my own clothes. I'll borrow yours for a bit. I'll return them to you shortly. Seated, Kim tae Young spoke to the musician. That's right. The manager said if you work even for a day, you get paid for a day. The man happily left upon hearing this. Really? Thanks for covering for me. I'll be on my way. After the man left, Kim tae Young smugly thought to himself, This way, no one will pay attention to me. I can play a song casually, and I've successfully slipped away this time. I'm quite clever. Kim tae Young placed his hands on the keys, and a strange sensation rushed into his head. Like that, 
He played a captivating song that drew everyone's attention in the room, and all eyes were focused on him, listening intently. The girl raised her phone to record, pleasantly surprised by the melody of the song. Hai Kyo and Yang Yang looked up and Hai Kyo recognized. This music is Golden Hour. Kim Taehyung, at that moment, was immersed in his own musical world, closing his eyes to feel each note. Those present were also captivated by this irresistibly melodic tune. It reminds me of the most beautiful memories with my boyfriend. What a wonderful piece of music. Jisoo and Shin Hai, stuck in the crowd, realized, it's Kim Taehyung. I'm moved, but not by a sad tune. It's magical, like being in a flower garden, the bright light seems to carry a touch of melancholy. Both Jisoo and Shin Hai were drawn further into his music. This music is so beautiful. I didn't expect Kim Taehyung to play the guitar. At this moment, Kim Taehyung seemed to radiate as the music brought back nostalgic cues. The melody reached Hai Kyo and Yang Yang, immersing them in its enchantment. Jisoo and Shin Hai were also captivated. In their imagination, Hai Kyo was gently lifted high by him, their eyes locked with deep affection. Kim Taehyung. Yang Yang transformed into a bride, walking up an elegant aisle hand in hand with him. I want to marry you. Shin Hai and he were joyfully exploring Hawaii, playfully splashing in the cool, clear waters. I can't imagine days without you. Jisoo in a highly seductive pose, the two riding a horse through the streets. I can't forget you behind me. Behind him, the four girls all looked at each other's faces, each blushing. I must be so lucky to become his. He's truly captivating, like a treasure chest, always surprising me. I really want him, just want to have him. I only want him. Wealthy, handsome, humble, responsible. A man of excellence like him, I feel completely unworthy of him. The admiration from the four girls continuously increased. Kim Ji Won gained an additional 20% admiration, making her current admiration level 74%. Yang Pion Yoon gained an additional 10% admiration, reaching a current admiration level of 87%. Kim Hin Jisoo gained an additional 5% admiration, bringing her current admiration level to 99%. Feeling the increasing admiration from the girls, he couldn't help but be surprised. Oh my, what's happening? Did I just charm them unintentionally? After finishing the piece, everyone applauded, praising him. People approached, expressing their admiration and some even jokingly suggesting marriage. You're handsome, and you're really talented. I could cry listening to you. What's your name? I'm a grade 9 pianist, but I'd only be like fetching your shoes. How do you practice, huh? I want to marry you. I've never heard music so beautiful. He felt awkward, muttering to himself. Oh no, now I want to be humble and not attract the attention of others. How do I gracefully retreat from this? Behind him, Hai Kyo and Yang Yang looked on in admiration. Indeed, they have noticed, and it's all because of my piano piece, that the admiration level increased. Even Kim Hin Jisoo is only 1% away from a successful maneuver. Is this situation good or bad? Two men immediately rushed in to manage the chaos. Make way a little, please. A man with blonde hair, seemingly a foreigner, stepped forward. This was Jung Koo Won, the most famous pianist in Seoul. He took off his glasses, smiling. The person who played the golden hour just now is a talent that can be trained. If you join my team, I guarantee that within a year, before the man could finish speaking, he had already run away. Everyone looked puzzled, and the man was astonished. Where did he go? At this point, he had already escaped from the restaurant, thinking to himself. Phew, luckily there was a sudden appearance of a pianist, diverting everyone's attention. Sneak away, sneak away. Thank you, unknown pianist. The girl who was about to turn around was now holding her phone and crying. My piano prince, I love him. When will I get to see him again? Hoo hoo. He glanced back at the restaurant while running, thinking they probably won't chase me all the way out here. As he ran, a voice echoed, be careful. Perplexed, he turned around just as a girl on a large motorcycle zoomed past him, causing him to scream in fear. Ah, ah, ah. Both he and the girl fell onto the road, and he worried, Oh no, I hit someone. Frantically, he ran toward the girl, asking, Are you okay? The girl lying on the motorcycle noticed him and exclaimed, Ah! Recognizing each other, they said simultaneously, It's you! He approached with concern, 
Are you able to get up? The girl, in pain, replied, My leg got trapped. Can you lift the bike for me? But this bike is quite heavy. As he lifted it, he had to turn the bike to the other side before raising the tail. Before the girl could finish speaking, he effortlessly lifted the bike, saying, Lifted it. The girl was astonished. She approached him and asked, How could you lift this 170 kilograms bike? He scratched his head and smiled. Perhaps it's because of my strength, haha. <laughs> Looking down at the girl's injured leg, he remarked, You're injured. Leading on the bike, the girl replied, It's okay, these small wounds are common. Last time, I even broke a bone. Anyway, my profession. Hearing the girl speak like that, he couldn't help but be surprised. Oh my, you're so daring, working in such challenging conditions as a modern woman. The girl crossed her arms and conversed with him. Thanks for the ride on the yacht that time. After that, I couldn't contact you anymore. By the way, the yacht you gave me, I won't return it to you. Actually, I am. Before the girl could finish her sentence, he quickly made his escape. Use that money to contribute to children in difficult mountainous areas or those in challenging circumstances. No need for thanks, I'm a man of few possessions. Seeing this, the girl called after him. Hey. He hurriedly ran away, thinking while running, his dead fish eyes continuously sweating. This girl worked until she broke her bones. A seemingly frail and miserable girl turned out to be so strong. I need to get out of here quickly. He raised his arm, touching the muscles full of strength on his arm. He recalled the image of the girl with a horrified face when she saw him lifting a 170 kilograms heavy bike. How did you do that? That thing is heavy, around 170 kilograms. Looking at his own hand, he smiled. I don't know the current strength level of my fifth tier. I'm a bit curious. I definitely have to go to the gym tomorrow to check it out. The next day at the gym, he was outside, stepping in step by step, observing everything around. People were diligently training to lose weight. Everyone was sweating. He walked past, looking at everyone, seeing them all trying their best to lift weights at the gym. In his heart, he couldn't help but exclaim, It's early in the morning, and so many people are already exercising. It's really lively. Suddenly, he looked at a girl lifting a small dumbbell. Ah, that thing. Suddenly, a man approached, asking him, Isn't it beautiful? Hearing the loud question from an unfamiliar person, he turned his head in confusion. A muscular uncle appeared in front of him, appearing to be the gym instructor for this room. The man spoke, I can help you get her info. However, before he could respond, the man laughed loudly, as if understanding the intentions of others. Ha 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 ha, we're all men. Why pretend? Don't worry, I'll help you get her info right now. The uncle looked at the muscles on his body, patted his shoulder reassuringly, and then flexed his own powerful muscles, seemingly teasing or comforting. With this body of yours, you can't get her now. Girls who work out regularly don't like weak guys. You have to be like me. Hearing this, he laughed awkwardly. The uncle introduced himself to him. Let me introduce myself. I'm you, the coach who won the gold medal at the Olympic gym. I can customize a course for you and help you get firm muscles in three months. All it costs is 8,000 yuan. Hearing this, he quickly smiled and declined. I don't need to thank you. However, the man persisted. He raised two fingers towards him, saying, Don't refuse so quickly. I can let you try two sessions first, and you can decide later after you finish the trial. How about that? Despite the offer, he promptly declined once again, stating, I feel it's not effective. I'll stick to training with equipment. Seeing his repeated refusals, the man lost interest and turned away with an unpleasant attitude, saying, Fine, I won't talk to you anymore because I still have classes to teach. If you've thought it through, you can come find me anytime. In the man's mind, he sighed. Poor thing. Too impoverished to afford private lessons and gym fees. If you won't pay to train, you'll remain weak. A while later, he approached a fitness apparatus, looking at it with confusion, scratching his head, unsure of how to use it. How do I use this thing? He wondered. In his state of confusion, a passing girl caught his attention. He turned to her and asked, Excuse me, do you know how to use this equipment? The girl, with her platinum blonde hair and well-proportioned figure, looked exceptionally beautiful. The kind-hearted girl stepped forward to adjust the equipment for him, making it easier to use. She further explained, This is a reverse bike. You have to sit here, pedal this lever, 
and both handles on the sides could be controlled. He, scratching his head, thanked her. Oh, I see. Thank you. At this moment, the incredibly beautiful girl looked up, although wearing a mask, her beauty was still evident. The system announced, commencing training mission. This girl is named Lee Sang Yi, 24 years old, 167 centimeters tall, weighing 49 kilograms. Favorability towards the host is 0%. Suddenly, he encountered a girl for training at the gym, surprising him. This system is amazing. It can detect the target even when wearing a mask. Does your system have X-ray vision? Hearing this, the system responded. As long as it's at close range, it can detect whether the other person has undergone plastic surgery or not. After finishing with the system, he continued to approach the machine, adjusting the weight for strength measurement, saying to himself, Well, let's try the highest weight first. As he spoke and adjusted his actions, Sang Yi was extremely amazed. After finishing the adjustments, he immediately climbed onto the machine to test his strength. The speed at which he performed was incredibly fast, leaving everyone around passing by in awe. Sang Yi, still trying to process what she saw, quickly turned away without forgetting to sigh. As predicted, he is a newcomer and knows nothing about these devices. Sang Yi entered the training room and greeted the trainer, the same man who had earlier invited him to enroll in the course. Glancing at Sang Yi, the trainer said, All right, let's warm up first. Sang Yi removed her hat and mask, hanging them on a hook. The trainer looked at Sang Yi's physique and thought, She looks gorgeous even with a hat and a mask. Could this girl be an artist? While Sang Yi adjusted her clothes, unaware of the scrutinizing gaze upon her, she began her workout, starting with exercises for the buttocks. The trainer, impressed, couldn't help but exclaim, not bad, squat a bit more, shift to the left a bit. Meanwhile, as Sang Yi focused on her routine, the trainer approached, a perverse thought crossing his mind. He quickly moved closer to Sang Yi, saying, push your buttocks a bit further back. Do you feel the muscles working here? While speaking, he touched Sang Yi's buttocks. This action startled Sang Yi, leaving her in shock. Moving on to the next exercise, it was the squat with legs open. The trainer was getting uncomfortably close to Sang Yi, saying, relax a bit more. I'll support your legs. Sang Yi couldn't tolerate it any longer. She stood up, pushing the trainer away, angrily scolding, trainer, do you find your actions a bit too much? However, the trainer remained oblivious to his wrongdoing, persisting and denying. What do you mean? I'm just focusing on helping you with warm-up exercises. Are you suspecting that I'm taking advantage of you? Sang Yi's face became tense. If the next session is like this, please provide me with a different workout. I'm not comfortable sharing personal space with everyone. The trainer, hearing this, calmly agreed. Fine. I'll give you a different exercise. In his mind, the trainer harbored an intention. It seems I can't achieve that unless I make her endure a bit of pain. After deciding, he adjusted the exercises towards a different direction, mainly aiming to exhaust Sang Yi. The trainer clapped his hands, and Sang Yi had to perform exercises rapidly to the beat of his command. The trainer continuously shouted, jumping jacks for a minute, burpees for a minute, then alternate for a minute. Come on, let's add another round. Sang Yi was pushed to exhaustion, breathing heavily as she looked at the trainer with confusion. Trainer, is this intensity too high? Shouldn't training be done gradually? The trainer crossed his arms, shouting loudly, If you've paid for my class, I'll take responsibility for you. If it's not effective, your money will be wasted, and even my gold medal winning reputation will be damaged. He continued, Do you understand that attending a fitness class requires diligent training? You can't do this and you can't do that. So, what can I do for you now? Sang Yi gritted her teeth in anger. Stop the lecture and just continue. She proceeded with the following exercises at a high intensity, stating, It's just a bit tired. I've endured the coldness of the company for two years and still persevered. Finally, I got a job at the Internet University, so I need to showcase my best physique. The trainer checked his watch, smirked, and looked at Sang Yi. These exercises make me tremble uncontrollably. Even female trainers would be exhausted doing them. It would be great if you quickly admit your mistakes and accept my first course. Sang Yi, now sweating profusely, caught the trainer's eyes on her well-toned body. Enough, it's been a year. I haven't met a high-quality female student with such a figure. Well, the lamb is about to reach my plate. Haha. <laughs> Suddenly, 
Sang Yi collapsed on the ground. Seeing this, the trainer was extremely alarmed. Oh, has this girl exhausted herself?